The Life of Natsu Dragneel Fairy Tale Natsu Dragneel is a mage of the Fairy Tale Guild, wherein he's a member of Team Natsu. He's the younger brother of Zeref Dragneel, having originally died 400 years ago, being subsequently revived as his brother's most powerful Aetherius. Natsu is also among the five dragon slayers sent to the future from 400 years past, having an additional purpose in the assistance of the defeat of Acnologia. Welcome to the Amagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Natsu Dragneel. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. We are coming up on 2 million subscribers, and we'd love to hit that before the end of the season, so if you enjoy the video, please check if you're subscribed. YouTube sometimes unsubscribes users from channels, so even if you think you are subscribed, you might not be. The Amagi's reach stretches out beyond this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media. With that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background 400 years ago, Natsu was born as the younger brother of Zeref, and they lived peacefully in a small village with their parents. However, Natsu died at a young age alongside his parents, courtesy of a dragon attack. This caused Zeref to research magic and its relation to life and death, and much later, with Zeref using his dead body, he was revived as the strongest demon, En, whose purpose was to kill Zeref. During this time, he also met Igniel. However, the dragon chose not to kill him because he loved him extremely so. With Igniel as his guardian, Natsu became acquainted with Gajil, whom he frequently fought, Wendy, Sting, and Rogue. All five of them met several times a year, where their dragon parents got together for meetings. He also had his signature scarf knitted from Igniel's molted scales by Anna. Igniel went out of his way to teach Natsu how to talk, write, and perform his own signature form of lost magic, Fire Dragon Slayer Magic. Igniel ultimately chose, like four other dragons of that time period, to seal his damaged soul inside Natsu's body and leap 400 years into the future, recover his strength with the future's high ether nano concentrations, and kill Acnologia. While initially thought to have been abandoned by Igniel on July 7th, X777, it was actually the day and year Natsu awoke in the future, like the other four dragon slayers. However, when Natsu awoke, he believed that Igniel had abandoned him, not knowing that he had instead opted to reside inside Natsu's body for many years to come. The departure of End from the past also gave rise to many legends about the strongest demon from Zeref's works, including his creation and leading of Tartaros, when in fact Mard Gear happened upon End's tome and used it to unify the other Aetherius under a single cause and was the one who created Tartaros, and the fact that he was the most vile creation in Zeref's library of works. After waking up, Natsu left on a quest to find Igniel and was eventually found by the guildmaster of Fairy Tale, Marakov Dreyer. Natsu ended up joining Fairy Tale, in which he formed a close sibling like rivalry with Grey Fullbuster and Urza Scarlet. He was also shown to be on good terms with Lisana Strauss and Elfman Strauss not long after they arrived at the guild. One day, Natsu found an egg in the forest east of Magnolia. Thinking it to be a dragon egg, Natsu took it to the guild and asked Marakov to make it hatch. But Marakov and Urza told him that he was the only one who could make the egg hatch through love and care. Lisana offered to help Natsu care for the egg until it hatched to which Natsu happily accepted. The two built a shabby straw house in the park to keep the egg warm, becoming very close in the process. The next morning, Natsu discovered the egg was missing and began to blame several of his guildmates. After arguing with almost everyone in the guild and nearly starting a fight with Mira Jane, Elfman appeared, carrying the egg and explained that he only wanted to help but was too embarrassed to ask. Suddenly, the egg hatched and a blue cat with wings came out. Lisana remarked upon the sudden change in the guild's atmosphere after the cat's birth, prompting Natsu to name the cat Happy. A few years passed and Lisana partook upon an S-class job with her siblings, in which she was supposed to hunt a creature called the Beast. Natsu wished to go with her, but Elfman opposed, as he felt that he should be the one to take care of his family. Lisana was accidentally killed, supposedly by Elfman during his attempt at taking over the monster. Though Natsu forgave him, he was greatly saddened by the event. Macau Arc Natsu received a tip from Krov that Salamander had been spotted in Harjin Town. Convinced that the Salamander is Igniel, Natsu and Happy travel to Harjin by train. After getting off, the two stumble across a crowd of young, love-struck women eagerly shouting the name Salamander. Excited, Natsu breaks into the crowd, but rather than seeing a dragon, he meets a fire mage claiming to be named Salamander. 
downtrodden that the salamander wasn't igneal, Natsu rejects an autograph from the imposter and walks away, causing the mage's crowd of female fans to attack him. Through his antics, Natsu saves a traveling mage, Lucy Hartfilia, from the influence of salamander's illegal charm magic, which he used to infatuate the crowd of girls. Out of appreciation, Lucy buys a meal for him and happy, and the duo listen to Lucy talk about her dream, to be able to join a guild. After the meal, they part ways. Later that night, when Natsu overhears a conversation that Salamander is supposedly a member of Fairy Tail, he instantly becomes suspicious and crashes the party on the mage's ship. While on the ship, Natsu discovers that Lucy is on board, as Salamander had tricked her into thinking that he could help get her into Fairy Tail. The ship, being a mode of transport, causes Natsu to become violently ill, leaving him defenseless against his enemies. After being rescued by Happy, Lucy summons the celestial spirit Aquarius, who uses her water magic to wash the boat and everyone on it ashore. With the ship on on dry land and its rocking motion gone, Natsu regains his vitality and confronts Salamander, declaring himself to be an actual member of Fairy Tail, thereby exposing the mage as an imposter. One of the imposter's crew members reveals his name to be Bora. However, Natsu shows no interest in his identity and is only concerned with his attempt at tarnishing Fairy Tail's name. Natsu and Bora engage in a brief skirmish, ending with Natsu's complete and quite easy decimation of Bora and his crew. However, in the process, Natsu ended up destroying a major part of Harjin's port. The large amount of damage attracts the attention of the Rune Knights, prompting Natsu and Happy to flee with Lucy in tow. Lucy is initially uneasy, but Natsu, knowing that Lucy wants to join Fairy Tail, invites her to join, which she happily accepts. Upon returning to the guild in Magnolia with Lucy, Natsu angrily attacks Krav for giving him false information on the Salamander, starting a fight which through various circumstances swiftly evolves into a full-scale brawl. The unruly mages are stopped by Makarov Dreyar, their guildmaster. Not much later, Natsu examines the request board, looking for an available job, hoping to garner enough money for food. While picking out a job, Natsu overhears Romeo Konbolt, the son of Fairy Tales Macau Konbolt, interrogating Makarov as to the reason why his father hasn't returned from his mission, which was stationed at Mount Hakobe to slay Vulcans. Empathizing with Romeo's troubles, Natsu leaves together with Happy to find Makao. The two are accompanied by Lucy, who is now an official member of the guild. After the three reach the snowstorm-ravaged mountain, they're attacked by a Vulcan, which whisks Lucy away to its cavernous lair at the peak of the mountain. Thinking that this particular Vulcan is responsible for Makao's disappearance, Natsu chases the Vulcan to its lair and demands to know where Makao is. However, the Vulcan tricks Natsu into coming near a hole in the cavern wall and pushes him into it, sending him plummeting off the side of the mountain. Fortunately, Happy rescues him. When back inside the cave, Natsu sees Lucy fighting the Vulcan using the celestial spirit Taurus, and mistaking the bull spirit to be another monster knocks the spirit out. Natsu soon defeats the Vulcan, who is then revealed to actually be Makao, who has been taken over by the Vulcan. They find him to be seriously wounded, having fought 19 Vulcans before being taken over by the 20th. Natsu saves his life by burning the wound shut and returns to Magnolia with his friends, reuniting father and son. Daybreak Arc After Lucy accommodates herself to her new living arrangement, she finds Natsu and Happy to have shamelessly entered her apartment uninvited. To no avail, she tries to get them to leave, and instead opts to offer her two companions a cup of tea and teach them the inner workings of celestial spirit magic. Lucy summons Plu, the Canis Miner, and forms a contract with him. Plu then, with Natsu interrupting, suggests that he, Lucy, and Happy form a team, to which they all agree, and do. Their first mission, infiltrate a mansion and steal a book. When the team arrives in Shirotsume Town, they make their way to their clients, in this case, KB Melon's house, where he informs them of the mission details and that the award amount for completing said job has greatly increased. Impassioned, Lucy disguises herself as a maid, hoping to infiltrate the mansion. However, she's rejected by the mansion's owner, Everlu, for being too ugly. And as such, Natsu, Lucy, and Happy instead resolve to sneak into the mansion and take the book by force. The trio moves quietly about Everlu's mansion until they're found by the miser's maids, whom Natsu easily defeats. Shortly thereafter, Team Natsu finds themselves in the library, and Natsu rather quickly finds the book they're looking for, Daybreak. As Natsu is about to burn the book, thereby completing their job, Lucy sees that the book was written by Kemo Zeleon, her favorite author, and tells Natsu that he can't destroy it. Just then, Everlu himself surfaces from below the ground, having taken no action solely to see what their objectives were, and he calls upon the Vanish Brothers to eliminate them. Lucy, however, declares that the book is harboring a secret and asks Natsu to buy her some time. Everlu goes after her, interested about the secret, and Natsu tells Happy to follow them while he dealt with the brothers. After defeating the Vanish Brothers, Natsu grabs onto Head Maid when she begins to move. Consequently, when Everlu summons his Head Maid, who is actually the Celestial Spirit Virgo, Natsu is brought to Everlu's location. Lucy shouts for him to deal with Virgo while she defeats Everlu. He complies, delivering her a powerful blow. 
After defeating Everlu, Natsupa grudgingly returns the book to KB, where they find out that Kemu Zaleon, who was actually KB's father, Zekua Melon, cast a spell on the book, and that its real meaning lay hidden within. The group decides not to take any payment for the job, much to Lucy's dismay, since they didn't destroy the book as their job had stated for them to do. Eisenwald Ark Upon the technical failure of their mission, Team Natsu returns to the guild where Natsu once again gets into a fight with Grey. Loki then rushes into the guild in a panic and warns the two that Urza has finished her job as well and that she's on her way back to the guild. Almost immediately, Natsu and Grey cease their bickering and begin acting like best friends. Upon her arrival, Urza, much to their horror, asks Natsu and Grey to accompany her on a mission. When they arrive at the train station, Natsu compromises with Urza, saying that he will only go if she agrees to fight with him when they return, to which Urza agrees. On the train, Natsu succumbs to his motion sickness, and Urza, in an attempt to make him feel better, knocks him out. The other members start to discuss the mission, but in the process, forget to wake up Natsu and leave him behind on the train. Kagayama, a member of the Dark Guild Eisenwald, the guild that they were talking about earlier, tries to start a conversation with Natsu. However, Kagayama attacks Natsu and the two begin to fight, with Natsu quickly getting the upper hand when the train stops. During their fight, Natsu notices the lullaby flute, and before the train starts to move again, jumps out the train's window and into a magic four-wheel vehicle driven by Urza. The team then, via vehicle, returns to the train station, causing Natsu to become sick along the way, thereby warranting Lucy to carry him. Despite being denied entry onto the platform, the team enters nonetheless, and they are confronted by the members of Eisenwald. Upon hearing Kagayama's voice, Natsu snaps out of his stupor and protects Lucy from one of Kagayama's attacks. Urza then orders him and Grey to go after Aragor, and the two agree to split up and find him. To start, Natsu starts searching for Aragor by breaking down walls, even though the doors happen to be situated right next to him. Kageyama then sneaks up behind Natsu, attacking him. After the two mages exchange blows, Natsu, proving to be the stronger of the two, quickly overwhelms Kageyama and questions him on the whereabouts of Aragor. Just as Urza arrives to question him on how to dispel the barrier of wind around the station, to everyone's surprise, Kageyama is suddenly stabbed in the back by one of his allies, and Natsu, in a rage, attacks the assassin, trying to avenge Kageyama. Thanks to the aid of the celestial spirit Virgo, whose key Lucy acquired after defeating Everlu, Team Natsu is able to travel underneath the wind wall via tunnel. With the aid of Happy's max speed, Natsu quickly begins to chase after Aragor. After Natsu finds Aragor, the two begin their fight, with Natsu gaining the upper hand, forcing Aragor to use his storm mail to cope with the fire dragon slayer's power. With Natsu's flames being put out, Natsu's flame enhanced punches are reduced to nothing more than regular punches, frustrating him. With this, Natsu's flames burn hotter, courtesy of Natsu's own flame of emotion. Happy, noticing the effects of the superheated fire on Aragorn's storm mail, appeals to Natsu's rivalry with Grey. With his flames burning hotter than ever, courtesy of his rage, Natsu defeats Aragorn. When the others arrive, Kageyama steals the lullaby flute and goes to the Guildmaster's meeting. The team quickly follows and are stopped from saving Makarov by the other guildmasters, while Makarov convinces Kageyama to give it up. Since Kageyama refused to play the flute and finish off Makarov, the flute morphs into its true form, which is that of a gigantic demon. Seeing this, Natsu teams up with Grey and Urza to take it down, which unfortunately also results in the destruction of the Guildmaster's meeting house. When they see this, the Guildmasters turn around to find Fairy Tail running away, save for Natsu, who offers to help the Guildmasters by chasing after his teammates, completely unaware that he's being chased as well. Sub Zero Emperor Lion Arc as per their agreement, once they returned to the guild, Urza engaged Natsu in battle. However, before they could get serious, Urza was arrested by the Magic Council for property damage, among other things. As a means to prevent Natsu from acting recklessly, he is transformed into a salamander and trapped underneath the glass. However, to others' dismay, the salamander is actually Makao, who as a token of gratitude transformed into a salamander in Natsu's place, allowing the Fire Dragon Slayer to rescue Urza. Natsu, however, comes dressed as Urza and proclaims that of the two, he is the real Urza an act of which results in the two of them being put into jail. Urza's arrest, however, turns out to be a formality, and the two are released the next day. Once released, Natsu tries to engage Urza in battle again, but is quickly defeated. Natsu then tries to pick a fight with Laxus Dreyer, but is prevented from doing so by Makarov, who says that he isn't allowed to go to the second floor. Later that night, Natsu breaks into Lucy's apartment and tries to persuade her to go on an S-Class mission, which involves traveling to a place called the Cursed Island with him and Happy. Lucy refuses, but quickly changes her mind when she sees that one of the rewards is one of the 12 Zodiac Keys. Unable to find someone to ferry them across, Natsu contemplates resorting to 
swimming, but is stopped by Grey, who has been ordered to bring them back. Just as they begin to fight, one of the sailors who had previously refused notices their magic and agrees to sail them across. Natsu then quickly knocks Grey out and drags him onto the boat. During the ride to the island, the sailor leading them suddenly disappears, just before a tidal wave shipwrecks them on the island's shore. With Grey now agreeing to help them, they go to their client, the mayor of the island, to find out about the curse affecting the residents. Originally ordered to do the impossible task of destroying the moon, they decide to explore the island the next morning. While in the forest, they meet a gigantic mouse, which they quickly defeat and find a ruined temple. Natsu then stamps on the floor of the temple, which causes it to crumble and sends them plummeting down into a large cavern. The cavern holds the frozen demon Deliora, and the mages Yuka Suzuki, Sherry Blendy, and Toby Horhora. Grey then informs the team that they are going to stay hidden for the time being, which Natsu takes as a cue to fall asleep. Night soon arrives, and the team discovers that the purple moonlight is hitting Deliora. Natsu and the others run up to the surface to investigate, where they discover that a ritual to revive Deliora is being performed. Enraged by Lion Vas Nastia's command to destroy the village, Natsu comes out of hiding, intent on defeating Lion, but is frozen by Lion and then Grey pushed Natsu down the hill in an effort to save him from Lion's magic. Natsu eventually makes his way back up on the hill, only to find Grey defeated and badly injured, and opts to carry Grey back to the village. Grey then apologizes to Natsu, but the latter says it doesn't matter anymore. As he arrives, Natsu falls into the trap that Lucy had previously placed for Lion and his mages, breaking the ice he was trapped within in the process. Grey is also knocked unconscious in the fall. Moments later, the village is attacked by Lion's group of mages, who plan on killing everyone with poisonous jelly. Using Fire Dragon's brilliant flame, Natsu destroys a large amount of the poison, giving the villagers time to flee. Natsu and Lucy are then confronted by Sherry, Yuka, and Toby. Grey wakes up and tries to help Natsu and Lucy, but Natsu instead punches Grey and knocks him unconscious to keep Grey from only hurting himself more. After Sherry and Angelica leave to destroy the villagers, Lucy accidentally grabs onto Angelica, leaving Natsu to fight Yuka and Toby alone. When Happy decides to go check and see if Lucy's fine, Natsu replies that it's okay, and that he just finishes two opponents. Natsu makes short work of Yuka and convinces Toby to paralyze himself with his own attack, defeating him. The next day, Urza arrives on Galuna Island, just as Natsu decides to investigate the temple alone. Once inside the ruins of the temple, Natsu destroys much of his surroundings in an effort to cause the temple to tilt, thereby preventing the moonlight from hitting Deliora. Confronted by Lion, Natsu then moves to take on the Ice Mage, but midway into their battle, Grey stops Natsu, claiming that he'll fight Lion himself. Grey, in an attempt to kill both himself and Lion, prepares to use the powerful Ice Shell, but is stopped by Natsu, who punches him in the face. Enraged at being ignored by Zalti, Natsu chases after the masked man and begins their fight. Their battle leads into the cavern where Deliora lay dormant, and Natsu shockingly discovers that Deliora's frozen prison is melting. Natsu eventually finds a way around Zalti's arc of time magic and defeats him, just as the ritual for Deliora's revival is completed. When Deliora is finally freed from its seal, Grey attempts to use Ice Shell on it again, but Natsu stops him for a second time, telling Grey that he stopped him from using Ice Shell before because he doesn't want him to die. However, to everyone's shock and relief, they discover that Deliora has actually been long since dead. Thanks to Urza, Team Natsu finds out that contrary to the villagers' belief, the moon had absolutely nothing to do with their transformation into demons, as they were already such in the first place. The use of the moon drip created a barrier around the island that affected the villagers' memories, thereby causing them to forget they were ever demons in the first place. Phantom Lord Arc Upon their return from the S-Class mission, Team Natsu finds the guild in shambles, with large metal protrusions sticking out of it from every angle. They learn from Mira Jane that it was their rival guild, Phantom Lord, who caused the destruction. Natsu argues with their master that they should fight back, but Makarov decides that there is no point in getting angry with someone who attacked an empty guild. Later on, they discover the grievously injured members of Shadow Gear, Levy, Jet, and Droy nailed to a tree, with Levy in particular being branded with the Phantom Lord's mark, prompting Makarov to, with great anger, declare war on Phantom Lord. Fairy Tail rushes to Phantom Lord's guild with Natsu destroying their wall, sparking the conflict. As Makarov leaves to personally crush Jose Porla, Phantom Lord's guildmaster, Gajil Red Fox, the Iron Dragon Slayer, joins the fray. Natsu takes over Elfman's fight with Gajil, and the two Dragon Slayers briefly engage in a somewhat equal battle. The fight, however, turns sour as Makarov, seemingly defeated, falls from above, with all his magic power having been stolen. 
After witnessing their master's apparent defeat, Urza orders them to retreat, to Natsu and the entire guild's chagrin. Before they leave, however, Natsu overhears Gajil being told by Arya, one of the Element Four, that they had successfully captured Lucy. Enraged, Natsu grabs one of the Phantom Lord's members and burns him, trying to find out where they're keeping her. Out of fear for further injury, the member of Phantom Lord tells him that she was most likely at their headquarters. Natsu then sprints toward their headquarters and in the nick of time catches Lucy as she jumps out of the tower, having escaped Jose's clutches. Noting that they were already at their headquarters, Natsu opts to continue the fight against Phantom Lord, but Happy and Lucy convince him otherwise, and Natsu reluctantly returns to the guild. Back at the guild, Natsu consoles a depressed Lucy who is blaming herself for the misfortunes that have arisen, telling her that she is one of them and that fairy tale is where she belongs. Shortly thereafter, the ground begins to shake and Fairy Tail rushes outside to see Phantom Lord's headquarters walking towards the guild. Jose then reveals the powerful Jupiter Cannon and orders it to be fired. Fairy Tail panics, but Urza resolves to stop the cannon blast herself, to much protest. Hopping into her adamantine armor, Urza takes the full brunt of the blast, and despite her armor being shattered and becoming heavily injured, the guild is safe. Jose then demands that they hand over Lucy, to which the entire guild refuses, saying that she's their comrade. Jose then warns them to quake in fear for the next 15 minutes, as the Jupiter Cannon will be fully recharged. Declaring that he'll destroy the cannon's lacrima before such a thing happens, Natsu, with the aid of Happy, flies towards the cannon and crawls through the barrel. Once inside, after noting the enormous size of the lacrima, Natsu moves to destroy it, but is confronted by Totomaru, one of the Element Four. Totomaru's pyrokinesis renders Natsu's magic useless, as he's able to control any and all flames Natsu produces. However, Natsu eventually manages to overcome Totomaru's pyrokinesis and destroys the giant lacrima. Enraged, Jose orders the walking building to transform into a gigantic mage. The transformation process causes the building to temporarily turn into a vehicle, invoking Natsu's motion sickness. Totomaru, taking advantage of said occurrence, prepares to strike Natsu with his rainbow fire, but with the timely intervention of Elfman and Grey, Totomaru is quickly swept aside before such an event could happen. Happy then rushes outside to get a visual understanding of what's happening. Happy then informs the three that the building has transformed into a giant mage and is preparing an exceptionally powerful smell. Natsu, Elfman, and Grey then resolve to split up and find the source of the magic. As Natsu is searching, he encounters Arya, the strongest member of the Element Four. During their fight, Natsu is completely overpowered and nearly risks losing all of his magic power, courtesy of Arya's Void. Urza, however, despite being injured, saves Natsu and swiftly defeats Arya. Urza collapses, exhausted, just as Jose announces that they've captured Lucy. Urza then tells Natsu to use the strength he has hidden within to save Lucy. Inspired, Natsu covers his entire body in flames and tears through the headquarters in a fury before ultimately saving Lucy from being impaled by one of Gajil Red Fox's knives. In which, Gajil initially gains the upper hand by making use of the metal floor tiles that the Phantom Lord headquarters has, eating them to replenish his strength. Seeing that Natsu is being overpowered, Lucy asks her new celestial spirit, Sagittarius, to make fire, to which he initially states he cannot. However, after watching Natsu fight his one-sided battle, Sagittarius rebuts his earlier claim and makes fire for Natsu to eat by shooting several of his arrows into a machine. Natsu, with his energy restored, quickly defeats Kajil with his Crimson Lotus Fire Dragon's Fist, destroying the entire Phantom Lord headquarters in the process. Fatigued, Natsu stays behind as Happy brings Lucy back to Fairy Tail. While together, Natsu asks Kajil where he learned his Iron Dragon Slayer magic, to which he replies that he learned it from Metallicana, the Iron Dragon, whom he reveals to have disappeared on July 7th, X777, just like Igniel had. Whilst reconstructing the broken guild, Natsu carries a ridiculous amount of wooden beams and challenges Grey to carry twice as many, which he does for a very minute amount of time. Urza, in response, hits the two of them with a wooden beam of her own and orders them to stop messing around. Natsu, Grey, and Urza then opt to take a break and visit Lucy at her house, but find she's returned home. Worried, they rush to find her, only to find that she's returned to visit her mother's grave. When they return, Natsu and Grey overhear Lucy's description of the punishment she received from Aquarius for losing her keys, which were returned to her indirectly by Loki, and Natsu tries to imagine the expression Lucy would have made had her butt been hurt. Natsu, unfortunately, is unable to imagine such a thing because Urza, in a temper, strikes the Fire Dragon Slayer with a chair. Urza's fury, however, is directed at Laxus, who she yells at for not being involved in the war, whilst he derides Team Shadow Gear for their weakness. Natsu then challenges Laxus to a fight and tries to punch him, but Laxus effortlessly dodges and leaves with the affirmation that he will make the strongest guild. Urza then tells Natsu to forget about Laxus and suggests that they, Lucy, Grey, and Happy all do a job together, which involves attacking an illegal magic school. While doing said job, Team Natsu destroys half a stretch of road. 
Loki arc. As Natsu is incorrectly playing pool with Grey, Lucy takes on a special mission from Mira Jane. As Team Natsu travels to their destination, Natsu succumbs once again to motion sickness and lies motionless. There, they find that their mission is to help a theater house with their production, which they do, but consequently they destroy the theater house in the process. To everyone's surprise, the play becomes popular. After defeating some troublemakers in Balsam Village, Natsu and the others decide to stay at Nin for the night. As they're talking, they notice Loki in the distance and try to speak with him, but Loki, upon noticing Lucy's presence, runs away. During their stay at the inn, Natsu starts a pillow fight between Grey, Urza, and himself. With Grey apparently winning, Natsu, unable to accept his loss, calls on Lucy to make a judgment. Upon noticing Loki's disappearance, Natsu searches for his fellow fairy tale mage. Tower of Heaven Arc after discovering that Loki is a celestial spirit, Natsu expresses his desire to be able to summon a dragon, claiming he wants a way to test how powerful his dragon slayer magic truly is. And Lucy says that he can't just summon celestial spirits to spar with them. When Loki gives Lucy tickets to a resort, where he had previously reserved rooms for himself and his girlfriends, Natsu joins her, Urza, and Grey in a small vacation, in which they take a break from completing jobs. After a day of relaxation, Team Natsu visits a casino, where Natsu tries his luck at roulette, but is attacked by Wally Buchanan, who points his gun at Natsu and fires into his mouth. After the abduction of both Urza and Happy, Natsu, incensed by Wally's attempt to kill him, assists the others. With the newly arrived Juvia Loxer in tracking Urza, which he successfully does with his keen sense of smell, resulting in the group's arrival at the Tower of Heaven. Upon their arrival, the team uses Juvia's oxygen bubbles to sneak into the tower's basement via an underwater tunnel. Natsu's urge to fight is quelled as the guards attempt to stop them. After meeting up with Urza, Natsu separates from the group, seeking to locate Happy. After arriving in Miliana's room, Natsu tries on a large cat-shaped mask, but finds that it's stuck and won't come off. When Wally tries to ambush him again, Miliana arrives and stops Wally from shooting Natsu, who she believes to be an actual cat. Natsu's luck, however, runs out when Wally convinces Miliana that Natsu is not a cat, and the two two dark mages attack in unison. With Miliana binding Natsu with their Nekosoku tube, preventing him from using his Dragon Slayer magic. Natsu, utilizing his quick wit, takes advantage of Miliana's love for cats and pretends to be in pain, invoking her pity. Miliana then unbinds Natsu, and with his Dragon Slayer magic once again usable, Natsu defeats the two dark mages with his Fire Dragon's wing attack. After Happy finally removes the cat mask from Natsu, Wally attempts to continue their fight, but Natsu states that it's already over. Suddenly, dozens of mouths grow all over the walls. Jellal tells everyone that they are part of the heavy Heaven's game and explains the rules. Following Jellel's announcement of the Heaven's game, Natsu tries to cheat by using Happy's magic to fly directly to the top floor, but is interrupted by Fukuro. Simon tries to fight Fukuro in Natsu's stead, but is easily defeated. Natsu and Fukuro then begin their battle, but Fukuro takes advantage of Natsu's motion sickness to incapacitate and then swallow him, thus absorbing his Fire Dragon Slayer magic. The final stages of the absorption process are interrupted with the arrival of Grey, who, in a rage because of the pain Urza is going through, defeats Fukuro, albeit with some difficulty with his Ice Blade 7 Slice Dance, freeing Natsu in the process. After the fight with Fukuro, Natsu wakes up on Simon's back and listens to Simon plead for Natsu to save Urza. Although initially refusing, saying that Urza needs to defeat her enemies by herself, Natsu quickly changes his mind once Simon reveals that Urza cannot defeat Jellal. Simon goes on to say that because of their history together, Urza may still try to save Jellal, and that Jello will almost certainly take advantage of her emotions. Simon also reveals his concern that, with the firing of Ethereum, Urza might try to take Jellal down with her. Such a statement drives Natsu over the edge, and he demands that Simon tell him where Urza currently is. Natsu then arrives at the last second, just moments after the firing of Ethereum, and saves Urza from being absorbed into the R system Lacrima, telling her that they need to finish their job, otherwise Lucy won't be able to pay her rent on time. In response to Urza's comment regarding her immobility, Natsu tickles her. Urza Urza then tearfully begs Natsu not to fight Jellal, stating that he'll lose. Natsu then picks Urza up and asks her why she's acting the way she is and reassures her that he'll win, before knocking her out. Natsu then turns to face Jellal and states that the Urza he knows is strong, mean, and scary, and that it is his fault that she's crying. Natsu then says that he hopes Urza will go back to normal once she wakes up and charges at Jellal. Briefly, it seems that Natsu is stronger than his foe, but Jellal, saying that he wants to see the full capabilities of a dragon slayer, starts fighting back. 
Utilizing the power of Meteor, Jellel is able to outmaneuver and outwit Natsu, and the Dark Mage attacks the Fire Dragon Slayer with his powerful Grand Chariot. Taking note of Jello's comment regarding all the damage he'd inflicted upon the tower, Natsu destroys some of the Lacrima, stating that Fairy Tail Mages specialize in property damage and that he can still fight. Natsu then charges at Jello again, destroying more of the Lacrima, prompting Jello to prepare a spell that he claims will finish off Natsu. Urza then awakes and steps in, hoping that Jello won't attack her. Jello says that nothing matters anymore and releases his spell. Much to their shock, Simon steps in front of the blast, taking the full brunt and passes away. While Jello mocks Simon, Natsu begins eating Ethereum infused Lacrima and then punches Jello when he says that they have no hope of escape. Eating more of the Lacrima, Natsu goes wild, unable to handle the negative side effects. However, he stabilizes and enters Dragon Force, easily overpowering Jello. Jello momentarily halts Natsu's assault, saying that he's the only one who can hear Zeref's voice, claiming that he'll create a land of freedom and prepares to cast Abyss Break, intent on killing them all, but a prior wound dealt by Urza interrupts his casting. Natsu then says that there's no freedom for someone who's trapped by a ghost and punches Jello, sending him flying into the Tower of Heaven, destroying the entire structure. After the battle, Natsu faints and Urza opts to carry him, but she soon realizes that the Ethereum cannot be contained much longer, and that soon the Tower of Heaven will be engulfed in a massive explosion. Urza decides to sacrifice herself and fuse with the Ethereum to save everybody, but Natsu wakes up during the fusion process and demands to know what she's doing. Urza replies that she can't imagine a world without Fairy Tail or her friends, and that if she can save everyone, then she'll do it without hesitation. As the fusion process is completed, Urza states that she will always be with them, as a crying Natsu begs her to stop. The Tower of Heaven then turns into a vortex, disappearing into thin air. Following the disappearance of the tower, Natsu emerges, carrying Urza, and tearfully tells her to never do something like that again, to which Urza genuinely thanks Natsu and promises to never do it. Following their return, Natsu sleeps for three straight days, only to wake up when he hears Grey insult him and remind him of his defeat at the hands of Fukuro. However, Natsu then falls straight back asleep. Later that night, Natsu feasts with the others, having recovered from the side effects of ingesting Ethereum. As Urza starts her send-off for Wally, Miliana, and Sho, Natsu appears and says he hopes to see them again sometime soon and sets off fireworks using his magic, alongside Grey and Lucy as a farewell. Battle of Fairy Tail Arc after returning to the guild, Natsu discovers that it has been rebuilt and that they have two new members, Juvia and, much to Natsu's surprise, Gajil. Provoked by Gajil, Natsu begins fighting with him, which escalates once again into a brawl involving the whole guild. Natsu also states that he doesn't like the guild's new look, claiming that it's not the same that it used to be. Shortly thereafter, Natsu, still not completely recovered, begins to once again reel from the side effects of ingesting Ethereum infused Lacrima, and goes home to lay down, but instead opts to sleep in Lucy's bed. Natsu later returns to hunt down a writer for Sorcerer Magazine whom he believes to be damaging his reputation. During the Harvest Festival, Natsu remains sick and as such pays no attention to the Miss Fairy Tale, even when Evergreen arrives and turns all other contestants into stone. Laxus, along with his bodyguards, the Thunder God Tribe, announces the Battle of Fairy Tale, threatening to kill the girls unless everyone joined in, effectively making them hostages. Natsu, overhearing Laxus's plan to have the guild engage in a battle royale, leaps to his feet, suddenly rejuvenated by the prospect. He leaps forward to attack Laxus, but a quick electric shock from the Lightning Mage deals with the Fire Dragon Slayer. After watching his guildmates getting taken out, either by each other or the Thunder God tribe, Natsu runs, intent on joining the battle, but is oddly stopped from exiting the area courtesy of Freed Justine's magic, which is only supposed to keep stone statues or those over the age of 80 from leaving. Upon discovering that Gajil was in the guild building, Natsu watches as Makarov orders the Iron Dragons later to go take care of his grandson, only to see that, just like himself, Gajil is unable to leave the guild. Natsu then resolves to restore Urza, claiming that, to Makarov and Happy's horror, that he will just use his flames to break the stone. The stone covering Urza's body cracks, causing Natsu and Gajil to panic, with Natsu asking Happy to find superglue. Gajil scolds Natsu, claiming that with his iron and his fire, they could simply weld her shut. Surprisingly, they succeed. Urza is freed, but thinking that the two have done something to her body, she punches the Dragon Slayers away. The mage count on Freed's monitor goes up by two, rather than the thought one. Urza then notes that with her freedom came the arrival of another of Fairy Tales S-Class mages, Mistigan. Despite Makarov's worries, Natsu still has faith that Laxus isn't going to harm anyone. However, with Evergreen's defeat at the hands of Urza, not only are all the contestants in the Miss Fairy Tale contest free, but Makarov's fears are also proved true as Laxus activates Thunder Palace, threatening to destroy Magnolia and everyone in it if he doesn't relinquish his spot as Guildmaster. Natsu, horrified, watches as Makarov collapses from the stress. 
Levy, now released from the stone enchantment as well, says that she can rewrite Freed's runes, which she eventually manages to do, allowing Natsu and Gajil to enter the fray. Natsu, who met up with Urza, eventually finds and interrupts Laxus's battle with Mystigan at the Cardia Cathedral. The two then witness to their astonishment Laxus removing Mystigan's mask, revealing that Mystigan looks exactly like Jellal. Urza asks Mystigan if he is Jellal, to which he states that he wished Urza would never see his face, and he knows who Jellal is but denies that they're the same person. As Mystigan leaves, Urza is attacked by Laxus, but Natsu demands that she leave Laxus to him. Natsu then charges at Laxus, and though Laxus doesn't take Natsu seriously at first, as their battle progresses, Laxus begins to change his approach, taking notice of Natsu's skill. As Urza leaves to deal with Laxus' Thunder Palace, Natsu chides Laxus for not really wanting to carry out his plan, saying that he just wants his grandfather to give in, whom neither realize has fallen deathly ill. He has faced that Urza will stop the spell despite Laxus' thoughts otherwise. Natsu's face in Urza is proven to have been for the better, as Freed's report shows that Urza and all the other defeated members of Fairy Tail teamed up and destroyed all the Lacrima powering the Thunder Palace. Although Thunder Palace is destroyed, Magnolia remains unsafe, as Laxus, in a rage, states that he'll take control of everything by force. As Laxus gets serious, Natsu holds his own for a short amount of time, before he's utterly dominated by the Lightning Mage. Laxus then prepares to kill Natsu with his Raging Bolt, and the powerful spell strikes the ground with resounding force. As Laxus laughs, saying that Natsu can't do anything now that he's dust, Gajil, who is revealed to have saved Natsu, derides Laxus for his action, asking him if Natsu is his comrade. Gajil then drops Natsu, and Natsu questions why Gajil is helping him, as during their battle together, Gajil stated there isn't room in the sky for two dragons. Gajil replies that there isn't, but with all that lightning around, he can't fly as he pleases. With that, the two dragon slayers begin their assault against the deranged Laxus. Together, by combining their prowess with their respective dragon slayer magics, Natsu and Gajil appear to have bested Laxus. However, Laxus emerges from the smoke and rubble unharmed, claiming that they should be ashamed to call themselves dragon slayers. Laxus then states that Makarov would scold him if he showed it to them, but then says he doesn't care, and that he'll show them what a real dragon slayer's like. In disbelief, Natsu and Gajil watch as Loxus prepares his dragon's roar, with Natsu screaming as Loxus asking if he was a dragon slayer all this time. Loxus then fires his lightning dragon's roar, which critically injures and paralyzes Natsu and Gajil. Unable to move, Natsu watches as Laxus prepares to use Makarov's ultimate magic, Fairy Law, intent on killing everyone, not just from the guild, but from the whole of Magnolia. Levi then appears, claiming Makarov to be on his deathbed, much to Natsu and Loxus' surprise. As Natsu remains motionless in disbelief, Laxus claims that his chances of becoming master have risen and invokes fairy law. After the light subsides and the debris clears, Natsu and Gajil, as well as Levi and everyone in the guild and town, emerge unscathed. As Laxus wonders why his magic didn't work, Freed, still injured from his fight with Mira Jane, appears, claiming that magic does not lie and that it saw deep in Laxus's heart that he considered nobody, not in the guild nor in Magnolia, as his enemy. Laxus then claims everyone is his enemy, and he is nobody but himself. As Natsu tells Laxus not to get overconfident, Laxus orders Natsu to be silent, claiming that he doesn't understand a thing. Natsu then agrees that he doesn't understand, but claims that it doesn't mean that they aren't friends, as guildmates exist to help one another. Natsu then charges at Laxus once more, screaming the fact while Laxus orders Natsu to keep quiet, doing the same. As they charge at each other, Laxus demands that Natsu disappear, as Natsu tells Laxus that he won't get his hands on the guild, even if it kills him. As their punches intersect, Laxus's commands first, which is then followed by a series of other powerful melee attacks. Despite beating him at every turn, Natsu repeats that Loxus won't get his hands on the guild, which only angers the Lightning Dragon Slayer even more. Natsu stands up once again, with Levi telling him that if he continues fighting, then he could die. Loxus then fires his Lightning Dragon's Heaven Ward Halberd at Natsu, who falls to the ground, unable to move. With Freed noting that such a spell could kill Natsu, Gajil, utilizing his Iron Dragon's Club, turns his body into a Lightning Rod, absorbing the High Voltage Blast. With Gajil telling Natsu to go, the Fire Dragon Slayer reluctantly rises from the ground, angered, and attacks Laxus with a flurry of his strongest spells, before ultimately defeating him with his strongest spell, Crimson Lotus, exploding Flame Blade. Frustrated over his hollow victory, Natsu stands tall and screams at the top of his lungs. After the Battle of Fairy Tail, most of the members of the guild are completely recovered, except for Natsu and Gajil, whom are heavily bandaged, with Natsu in particular having his mouth bandaged shut, muffling his speech. When Loxus returns to see Makarov, Natsu begins yelling at him in a muffled voice, with Gajil acting as the interpreter, saying that because it was a two-on-one fight, Natsu's victory didn't count, and that they need to fight again to settle the score. However, quite contrary to his usual sarcastic self, Loxus merely waves at Natsu, earning a confused yet respectful look from the Fire Dragon Slayer. 
Despite his injuries, Natsu takes part in the Fantasia Parade, operating a fire-blowing float. At the end of the parade, Natsu, along with the rest of Fairy Tail, holds up his hand, forming the sign that Loxus made to Makarov as a child, letting him know that even if they can't see him, no matter how far away he may be, they'll always be watching him, despite his excommunicated status. Oration Se's Arc the following week, after the Harvest Festival, Natsu confronts Makarov regarding Laxus' excommunication, but is stopped by Urza. Lucy, on the other hand, frets about her lack of money, to which Natsu suggests that they go on a job together. The next day, they, along with Happy, Urza, and Grey, prepare to leave and capture the escaped convict that their mission details, Velveno. However, Lucy suddenly runs off, and a confused Natsu and the others follow. Once they find her, they discover that not only is she fine, but that she defeated an entire dark guild all by herself. As Lucy is short on money to pay her rent, Natsu and the others help her by taking jobs as waiters and waitresses in Yajima's restaurant, 8 Island. However, Natsu spends most of his time eating the food rather than serving it to customers, and after all the work is done, supports a rather bloated figure. Upon returning to the guild, Natsu and the others find a drawing detailing the core members of the Balam Alliance and all the dark guilds they control. Makarov then informs Fairy Tail that an alliance between several of the legal guilds in the area will be formed, with their primary objective being to destroy one third of the Balam Alliance, the Orashion Seis. The entirety of Team Natsu is selected to represent Fairy Tail. Upon arriving at the meeting point, Team Natsu is greeted by the Trimens and their mentor, Ichiya Vandale Kotobuki with whom Natsu finds unimpressive. After a quick brawl between Urza and Ichiya, the delegates from Lamia Scale arrive. Team Natsu is shocked to see Lion Vastia and Sherry Blendy, and remains unimpressed with the arrival of Lamia Scale's third delegate, Juranikis of the Ten Wizard Saints. However, upon the arrival of Kate Shelter's delegates, Wendy Marvel and her cat Carla, Natsu mutters Wendy's name, feeling as though he's heard it before. Upon the profiling of the Dark Guild's members being completed, Natsu runs off and declares that he will fight and defeat the entirety of the Orashianses all by himself. The Orashianses, however, find the allied forces first and destroy their airship, the magic bomber, Christina. The Dark Guild then moves to confront the allied forces personally and defeats them all. Natsu and the allied forces are nearly killed by the Orashion Seiza's leader, Brain, but the Dark Mage stops upon noticing Wendy. Brain then captures Wendy along with a reluctant Happy and then fires the spell he planned on using earlier, intent on killing them all, but is stopped by Jura, who arrives in the nick of time with Ichiya in tow. As Urza was poisoned by Cobra's pet snake, she demands that they cut her arm off, to which Lion Vastia almost complies. Upon being stopped by Grey, Carla notes that if they save Happy, with whom is Wendy, then they can save Urza, with Carla revealing that Wendy is the Sky Dragon Slayer. With this, Natsu runs off with Carla and Grey, asking Carla along the way which element Wendy controls, which she reveals to be air. Natsu then wonders if air is tasty, to which Carla states that she doesn't know, though Grey thinks that it's the same as inhaling. They continue their search only to find and defeat the Dark Guild Naked Mummy. After discovering Orashion Seiza's hideout, Natsu keeps pressing onward, leaving Grey to deal with Racer. As he arrives, Natsu is met with shock. Jellal is alive. Natsu, however, is able to safely escape with Happy and Wendy, being protected by Grey from Racer and guided by Hibiki. Natsu finally manages to reach Urza. Wendy manages to completely heal Urza, and they discuss the fact that Jellal remains alive. However, as Nirvana is awakened, Natsu rushes headstrong to stop Jellal. On his way, Natsu runs in Eraser's personal guild and easily defeats them. Natsu then finds an unconscious Grey floating in the river and tries to help him, but when he gets near, a raft floats up from underneath, causing Natsu to succumb to his motion sickness. Grey gets up, acting strangely, and prepares to kill Natsu. Lucy and Hibiki, however, appear, halting Grey as the raft comes to a stop. Despite this, Natsu remains incapacitated. It's revealed that the Grey they see is actually Angel's Celestial Spirit, Gemini. Lucy engages Angel in a battle of the Celestial Spirits, and with the aid of Hibiki, wins. Upon her victory, however, the current of the river sweeps them away, carrying them downstream and over a waterfall. Natsu later wakes up on dry land wearing new clothes, as Virgo tends to Lucy's wounds, having saved them and prepared new outfits for them both, as theirs were in tatters. Sherry, who has become evil courtesy of the personality-altering effects of Nirvana, appears, intent on killing both Natsu and Lucy, but the real Grey arrives and subdues Sherry, whom is later returned to normal after Lion appears, revealing himself to have survived Racer's explosion. Natsu, along with Grey and Lucy, are caught up in the second stage activation of Nirvana. They are later seen climbing up one of its legs. As Natsu once again becomes motion sick, this time due to Nirvana's movement, Happy arrives and carries Natsu, helping him to stop Brame. However, Cobra takes to the skies as well. 
riding atop Cubelius and engages Natsu in aerial combat. As the two begin battle, Cobra manages to maintain the upper hand by listening to Natsu's every movement and thought, although Natsu eventually manages to overcome this by relying on his instincts rather than his head. Deciding that he must now fight seriously, Cobra attacks Natsu, unveiling himself as the Poison Dragon Slayer. Natsu, however, learns that just like Loxus, he is an artificial, second-generation Dragon Slayer, meaning he was implanted with Dragon Lacrima. Cobra then attacks Natsu with his Dragon's Roar, infecting him with a multitude of deadly viruses. Natsu, however, undeterred, tricks Cobra by thinking that he'll perform his Fire Dragon's Roar. Cobra hears this and then appears behind Natsu ready to strike. Natsu then screams, taking advantage of Cobra's sensitive hearing, defeating the Dark Mage. Cobra rises again, intent on defeating Natsu once and for all, but is pierced by Brain's magic and falls to the ground. Brain then reveals that he plans on using Nirvana to turn Natsu evil, thereby forcing the Fire Dragon Slayer to serve him. But with the timely arrival of Grey, Lucy, and Jura, Natsu is saved. After Jura deals with Brain, Wendy and Carla arrive, with Wendy removing the viral toxins from Natsu's body temporarily curing him of his motion sickness. As the team is led into a trap by Brain, Natsu witnesses Jura save them from said trap, becoming enraged at such a tactic. When the seventh member of the Orashion says, Brain's staff, Clodoa, appears, Natsu and the others are unfazed by the fact that he can talk, and instead waves Clodoa around, demanding that he stop Nirvana. Clodoa, however, frees himself from Natsu's grasp and tells him of their plan to destroy Kate's shelter, so that Nirvana cannot be resealed. Clodoa then starts attacking Team Natsu, sans Urza, but then ceases his activity, acting in fear as due to Midnight's defeat at the hand of Urza, all of the members of the Orashi Onseis have been defeated, thereby releasing Brain's other personality, Zero. As Zero emerges, Natsu comments that his magic feels disgusting, and rushes to confront him. Zero then attacks the defeated Jura, who is protected by Grey with his Ice Make shield. Zero pierces through the shield, defeating Grey, and then dodges Natsu's attack, delivering a powerful one of his own, knocking Natsu down. After much encouragement, Natsu and the others rise again, with each of them promising to destroy one of Nirvana's six lacrima. Natsu immediately chooses the first one and heads off in that direction. When Natsu arrives at the site of the first lacrima, he finds Zero standing in his path, and the two engage in fierce combat. Jellil, however, appears in the midst of their conflict and attacks Natsu with golden flames, shocking both Natsu and Zero, with the latter asking if Jellil's memories had returned. Jellil, although his memories hadn't returned, says he remembers Natsu's name and that he's a ray of hope. Jello then reveals that flames were a gift, with his intent being to replenish Natsu's strength. Initially, Natsu refuses Jello's help, opting to attack him instead. Taking advantage of the situation, Zero fires another spell at Natsu. Jello, much to Natsu's surprise, defends him by taking the full force of the blast. Natsu then accepts Jello's flames and thanks him for the meal and consumes them, granting him a large boost in all of his physical abilities. Natsu enters Dragon Force once again. Natsu completely overpowers Zero, and after much difficulty in controlling his newfound power, defeats Zero, piercing through his ultimate spell, Genesis Zero, and destroying the Lacrima, which, alongside the simultaneous destruction of the other Lacrima, courtesy of the other members of the Allied Forces, Nirvana is stopped, and the Orashion Seis are defeated. However, their victory is short-lived, for the Rune Knights, led by Lahar, appear, having come to arrest Hadai and Jellil. Natsu, however, protests this action, claiming that Jellil is their comrade, while Urza, Lucy, Happy, and the others look on in sadness. Natsu tries to take Jellil back by force and attacks the Rune Knights, but is stopped by Urza. Natsu, in need of new clothes, ventures to Kate's shelter with the rest of the Allied forces, where they find out that the guild was a fabrication, and that all the members, excluding Rubal, who is the ghost of the sole surviving member of the Nervit tribe, were created by Rubal himself to satisfy Wendy's desire for companionship. As the illusions fade away, Natsu watches as Wendy begins to cry, begging Rubal not to leave, but Rubal consoles Wendy one final time, telling her that she has real friends. Natsu then watches as Urza comforts the distraught Wendy, telling her to come with them and join Fairy Tail. Natsu exudes his exuberance regarding the effectiveness of Wendy's magic as he rides in a boat uninhibited by his motion sickness. Wendy, however, states the magic to be temporary and ineffective if used repeatedly as the effects wear off and Natsu becomes sick once more. Upon his return and Wendy's induction into Fairy Tail, Natsu begins bragging to Elfman about his battle with Cobra. Daphne Arc Back at the guild, Natsu is approached by Grey, who says that in the next town over, there's a rumor that a woman named Daphne has seen a dragon. Intrigued, Natsu, Happy, Wendy, and Carla visit the inn that Grey told them about, only to find that there are no customers. The four then proceed to search all the rooms at the inn, looking for any sign that someone is currently staying there, until they happen across a door composed of stuffed animals, which they enter, finding Daphne. Daphne, to no avail, tries to sell them her dieting product. Natsu, now irritated, asks Daphne about the dragon she claimed to have seen telling her that he and Wendy are looking for their foster parents who are dragons themselves. 
Daphne then informs Natsu that her seeing a dragon was a fabrication she concocted to boost her sales. Angered, Natsu tries to leave, but upon opening the door finds the outside world to have disappeared, instead turning into a magic barrier, having been caught in Daphne's concealment magic. Grey then arrives and, to everyone's surprise, reveals to have allied himself with Daphne. Reminding Grey that she needs the Dragon Slayer, she orders him to crush Natsu. Grey says his goodbyes to Natsu and prepares to use Ice Make. Wondering aloud if the Grey he sees is a fake, Daphne states otherwise, claiming that the Grey he sees is the real one and that he joined her of his own free will. After attacking Grey, Natsu asks why he's doing this, to which he responded, a city without sound. Grey then gets up and attacks Natsu again, with their fight continuing to appear to be in neither's favor. Before long, it appears that Natsu has emerged victorious, but Grey freezes his feet. Daphne, taking advantage of the situation, uses her hidden darkness to create a pitch black hole in the ground into which Natsu falls. Remembering everything regarding the meaning of a city without sound, Natsu can do nothing as he's electrocuted, his magic power being sucked away, used as fuel for one of Daphne's inventions, the Dragonoid. As Natsu floats around inside the Dragonoid, he recalls the promise he made to the residents of the city without sound, and how he would defeat the one who controls dragons to undo their curse. Cursing himself for his forgetfulness, Natsu realizes then and there that they were referring to Daphne. In a futile effort to free himself, Natsu exudes as much magic power as he can, hoping to override the machine. Eventually, the Dragonoid arrives in Magnolia, and Natsu, hearing the voices of his guildmates, orders them to destroy the Dragonoid at all costs, even if it means that he should be destroyed with it. Still trapped, Natsu listens to Daphne recount the time that she was a child, and she saw a dragon soar overhead, but nobody she told believed her, explaining she used that event as the drive she needed to create her own. Natsu argues that dragons do indeed exist, but Daphne now says otherwise. Inside the Dragonoid, Natsu struggles and manages to gain somewhat control over the machine. Taking note of his struggle, Natsu's teammates make use of Natsu's irritation regarding his inability to escape the Dragonoid, invoking his flame of emotion. Courtesy of Gajil, who utilized his Dragon Slayer's secret art, the Dragonoid's core is destroyed, and Natsu is released. Fairy Tail then combines all their magic together, creating a large fireball and sends it towards Natsu. Natsu ingests the fireball, replenishing his strength. With the Dragonoid unable to handle all the magic power and Daphne calling for a truce, Natsu quickly defeats her, finally fulfilling the promise he made to the residents of the city without sound, freeing them of their curse. Afterwards, Natsu celebrates with the guild. Idolis Arc After finding out that Gildart's Clive is on his way back home, Natsu and the rest of Fairy Tale prepare for his arrival. Even Magnolia itself prepares for Gildart's homecoming, dividing itself into two, creating a lane of travel solely for Gildart's, lest he haphazardly destroy private property. Upon Gildart's arrival, Natsu challenges him to a fight and charges at him, only to be immediately hit into the guild's ceiling, wherein Natsu smiles, saying that Gildart's is as strong as ever. Gildart's then invites Natsu to later visit him at his home. When Natsu and Happy arrive, Gildart's jokes about Natsu's relationship with Lisana, but is shaken when Natsu tells him that she died on a mission two years ago. Natsu tries to leave, but Gildart's mentions that he ran into a dragon while on his mission. He says, however, that it wasn't Igneal because the dragon was black, not red. He recounts that he fought it and that it was the reason that he failed his quest. Natsu then resolves to go to Zonia Mountain, where Gildart's encountered the dragon, in the hopes of learning where Igneal is. Gildart stops Natsu and shows him the wounds inflicted upon him, courtesy of the dragon, the loss of his left arm, leg, and an unspecified organ. Natsu then runs out of Gildart's house, saying that dragon slayers can defeat dragons, before falling into a puddle, reminiscing about the days he and Igneal shared together. While asleep, a giant anima opens up in the sky, absorbing the entire town of Magnolia, the fairy tale guild included. However, because of their dragon slayer, magic, Natsu and Wendy weren't sucked into the anima. Neither were Happy and Carla. Carla then informs Natsu, Happy, and Wendy about the world parallel to theirs, Idolas. After listening to Carla's description of Idolas, and that she and Happy were born there, Natsu resolves to travel there and save the guild. With the help of Happy and Carla, who utilize their era, Natsu and Wendy use the remaining traces of the anima to travel to Idolas. As they break through the anima, Happy and Carla's wings disappear, causing the four to fall from the sky, crashing conveniently into a storage house filled with clothes. Natsu then looks out the window and sees the guild, although he notes that it looks quite different. As he's about to enter, Natsu is stopped by Carla, who notes that something is amiss. Natsu then sees, to his horror, that all of his guildmates are acting quite opposite to their normal selves. Before long, he's noticed by Lucy Ashley, who he believes to be his Lucy and the rest of the Idolis fairy tale, crying out in shock over how scary she's become. Lucy, confusing Natsu for his Idolis counterpart, hugs him, saying that they've been worried about him, but then quickly proceeds to punish Natsu, wrapping her legs around his neck and grinding her fists into his head. During the torture process, Lisana appears, telling Lucy
Lucy to stop bullying Natsu, and for Jet and Droid to stop picking on Elfman. Natsu turns around, dumbfounded, beginning to shed tears, and runs up to hug Lisana, but is kicked in the face by Lucy Ashley, who asks Natsu when he started to behave like that, to which he replies with a stutter that Lisana is alive. Natsu is then swept away by Grey, who tells Natsu to sit and talk with him, to which Natsu, still sad from Lucy interrupting his moment with Lisana, demands that Grey take off his many layers of clothing. Kyla then deduces, after seeing that there is another Wendy, whom is vastly different in every physical regard to their Wendy, and that Mira Jane hasn't changed, that nobody has changed, but that they are counterparts. Meaning, that just like how Idolis parallels Earthland, there are different members of Fairy Tale here that parallel their own. As Natsu resolves to go and find their friends, he's stopped by the announcement that the Fairy Hunter has arrived. Noticing that the entire atmosphere is shaking, Natsu inquires as to what the beast that arrived is. However, before the opposition can attack, Levi transports the guild to a new location. Upon noting this, Natsu wonders who it is that has attacked them, to which he's told by Mira Jane that it was Urza Nightwalker. Natsu then becomes terrified, noting that their enemy is Urza. Upon escaping the fairy hunters, Natsu reveals that they came from Earthland to save their guild, which surprises the Idolas fairy tale members. When Natsu asks them for the quickest way to reach the capital, the majority of the Adolis fairy tale tells them that they should give up, as nobody has gone to the king and lived to tell the tale, stating that his power cannot be overcome. The guild goes on to further explain that the king wanted to keep all the magic in Adolis to himself, as it is a limited resource, so he ordered all the guilds to disband, and after much opposition, destroyed them all except for fairy tale. Even upon hearing that half of their members were killed, the master included, Natsu remained undeterred, and demands that he has to save his friends, no matter the cost, shocking every Everyone in the guild, especially Lucy. After receiving directions to the capital, Natsu along the way is distracted by a small frog-like creature and desires to capture it and give it as a present to Lucy Hartfilia. The capture, however, is unsuccessful, as a substantially larger frog-like creature appears out of nowhere and tries to crush Natsu. Upon trying to attack the creature, Natsu remembers that he can't use magic, leaving them with only one option, running away. As the creature begins to catch up to them, Lucy Ashley appears and frightens the creature away with her magic whip. Lucy then opts to personally guide them to the capital, as the area they're in is quite dangerous, to which Natsu claims that she isn't too different from their Lucy as their overall actions are quite similar. Later, the group makes their way to the town of Luen, where Natsu purchases a magic sword hilt from a black market dealer. The group then stops in a cafe where Natsu tells Lucy Ashley about Lucy Hartfilia, to which she laughs in amusement about the mannerisms and backgrounds of her counterpart, though Natsu notes that both of them are quite raucous. When Lucy reiterates that the king monopolized all the magic, Natsu simply states that if they defeat the king then they can just give the magic back to the people, to which Lucy asks if Natsu Natsu is crazy, saying that defeating the royal army is an impossibility. As Lucy states that she just wanted to peacefully show them the way to royal city, to which Natsu thanks her, the royal army itself appears, quickly deducing that they are mages of fairy tale, blocking Luen's exits. Natsu then, to Lucy's chagrin, opts to try out the new magic he acquired and quickly attacks the royal army with the sealed flame blade. The army blocks it with their magic shields and Natsu tries to use the blade again, but Lucy tells him that he misused it, saying that he could have used it approximately 100 times as opposed to the one. Lucy then then, much like Natsu, misuses her magic weapon, the Air Shatter Cannon, and envelops the group in a tornado, sending them flying to the other side of town. The royal army quickly closes in, but finds Lucy Hartfilia, mistaking her for Lucy Ashley, and attempts to arrest her. As Natsu runs toward Lucy, intent on helping her, Lucy grabs her Gate of the Scorpion key, and despite Natsu telling her that their magic doesn't work in Idolas, Lucy successfully summons Scorpio, who defeats the royal army with his Sandbuster, amazing the group. As the two Lucys meet, Natsu questions as to how Lucy can use magic, to which she replies that she doesn't know. As the rest of the royal army closes in, Wendy informs Lucy that she's the only one who can use magic, to which Lucy wonders if that, by default, that makes her the strongest in the group. Natsu, annoyed, tells her to just do something about the royal army, and in response, Lucy summons Ares, who defeats the remainder of the army with Wool Bomb. With Lucy Ashley amazed by the magic in Earthland, the group runs away, and Natsu tells Lucy that she did an excellent job, to which Lucy states that she feels excellent. In a forest, Lucy explains that when the anima opened, Horologium appeared, saving her from the effects of the worm hole. Alone in the empty remains of Magnolia, Lucy said that Mystigan appeared and explained the situation to her, and promptly sent her to Idolis. Natsu questioned as to who Mystigan is, but Lucy says that she herself doesn't know, as he never revealed any personal information. When once again asked how she can use magic, Lucy responds that she doesn't know, but hopefully responds that she's legendary, although Natsu quashes these feelings. Lucy says that she feels bad because they'll be at a disadvantage since Natsu can't use his magic. Lucy Ashley once again asks if they plan on fighting the kingdom, to which Natsu and the others say yes. 
When Lucy says they can count on her to take the lead in the fight against the kingdom, Natsu states that he feels shameful that he has to rely on Lucy. Eventually, Natsu and the group made it to Sika, where they decide to spend the night. While eating, he watches as Lucy Hartfilia yells at Lucy Ashley for trying to show her body to Natsu, claiming that they are the same. Natsu jokingly points out that Lucy's bathing with herself, finding the notion ridiculous. The next day, everyone wakes up to find that Lucy Ashley has left, leaving them directions on how to correctly get to Royal City. Natsu tells Lucy to forget about it, but she replies that she can't. As they begin to make their way to the Royal City, Lucy explains that Idola's house is a race called Exceeds, although Natsu states that he isn't interested. Just after, they see an airship belonging to the Royal Army descending from the sky, arriving to pick up the soldiers currently residing in Sika. Upon hearing that in two days, the extraction process on the guild in town, who have been turned into a giant locker room of begins, Natsu notes that they could simply hijack the airship, thereby cutting the time that it would take for them to travel to the Royal City quite substantially. Happy then points out that the airship is a vehicle, to which Natsu retorts that with Wendy's Troya, motion sickness means nothing. However, Wendy reminds Natsu that she can't use Troya in Idolas, and Natsu quickly abandons his idea. Watching Lucy summon Virgo in Loki's stead, who is out on a date, Natsu and Wendy decide to battle with their weapons, which are now fully recharged. They're defeated in a matter of moments, however. As the airship flies off, Natsu and the others risk being captured, but to their surprise and delight, a magic four-wheeler arrives, and the driver motions for them to get in, telling them that he'll drive them to the Royal City. Natsu and the others get in the vehicle, where, while experiencing motion sickness, Natsu listens to the driver saying that Lucy Ashley told him about them, and that with him, they'll get to Royal City much faster than via airship. The man then removes his goggles, saying that he's the fastest man in fairy tale, Natsu the Fireball. In the vehicle, Natsu listens as his counterpart calls him shameful for being sick in vehicles, claiming that he's a mage who specializes in transportation. Arriving at the outskirts of the capital, Natsu demands that they all exit his vehicle, as he doesn't have much fuel left, and that if he takes them any further, he won't be able to return to the guild. Before Natsu Dragion can leave, Natsu pulls his counterpart out of the vehicle, asking him to tell him how he doesn't get motion sick. Upon exiting the vehicle, Natsu Dragion becomes very cowardly, surprising everyone. Upon seeing Natsu Dragion's inherent fear of Lucy, Natsu then proceeds to deride her, claiming that her counterpart should be nicer to his, with Lucy saying that she was greeting him. When Natsu Dragion asks if they truly plan on fighting the kingdom, Natsu replies that he doesn't know, but if they can't get their friends back peacefully, then they'll do it by force. Upon hearing his counterpart claim that they can't win, Natsu simply smiles, trying to encourage Natsu Dragion. Upon infiltrating the kingdom, Natsu and the others quickly find the giant Lakrima, which is heavily guarded by the royal army. Natsu angrily listens to King Faust's speech and nearly attacks him when he chips off a piece of the lacrima. However, Lucy holds him back, preventing him from making such a reckless decision. Later on, Carla devises a plan to sneak into the castle and utilize it, sneaking into an abandoned mine. However, Natsu and the others are intercepted by Urza Nightwalker and the Royal Army, and they're captured. Sans Happy and Carla. Natsu looks on, shocked at Happy, as the soldiers bow down to Happy and Carla, calling them exceeds and congratulating them on bringing the intruders to them. Natsu and Wendy are locked up in a jail cell. Natsu asks the guard what happened to Lucy. After hearing the guards say that they will execute her, he becomes furious and threatens to kill them if they touch Lucy. The guards then reveal that the Exceed's mission originally was to kill the Dragon Slayers, but at the last minute, it was changed, now involving their capture as opposed to their assassination. Natsu is next seen unconscious as Byro prepares to extract his and Wendy's magic power. Grey and Urza unexpectedly arrive, saving Lucy, Happy, and Carla from Urza Nightwalker, and in the process, Grey feeds an unconscious Natsu an X-Ball, which allows the fire Dragon Slayer too, much like Lucy, Urza, and Grey, use his unlimited magic in Idolas. Upon waking up, Natsu sees his magic restored and breathes out fire, rushing to stop the giant Lacrima from colliding with Extalia. He eventually runs into Wendy, Carla, Lucy, and Grey. At first, Natsu is confused about the situation until Lucy and Wendy explain that Gajil, Grey, and Urza showed up. With everyone filled in on the happenings, the group splits in two. Natsu travels with Lucy and Grey and asks where the king is. Grey and Lucy suspect in some important place, but Lucy starts to wonder since the courtyard and prison were in strange locations for a castle. Natsu, in short, simply says that the castle in general has a strange layout. Lucy responds, saying that she shouldn't be surprised if there was an amusement park, and coincidentally, they find one right in front of them. Sugar Boy and Hughes, division commanders of the Royal Army, arrive, stating that they desire unlimited magic, and prepare to confront Natsu and the others. Hughes begins by trying to crush them with a ship, but Grey blocks the ship with Ice Make Shield. Natsu then attacks Hughes, demanding that his comrades be returned. Hughes then refuses Natsu's demand, 
Ben then traps him on a roller coaster using his command tack, making unintended use of Natsu's motion sickness. Gray, trying to help, throws Lucy onto the coaster, telling her to help Natsu. The tracks that the coaster are on, however, run out, and Lucy and Natsu are thrown into a small lake. Hughes then talks of the power that Idolis magic possesses, saying that Idolis can't afford to run out of magic. Natsu then berates Hughes, claiming that for their selfish addiction to magic, they're killing innocent people. Natsu then says that lives are more important, and Lucy summons Aquarius and attempts to use the surrounding water to defeat Hughes. But Hughes, utilizing his control over everything in the park, turns the water against Aquarius, and instead attacks them with it instead. Natsu and Lucy are sent to wash, and eventually they find themselves in Monster Academy. Natsu finds Lucy inside a magic coffin that once inside changes the person's clothes. Natsu then plans to use the coffin to change Lucy into a skimpy bikini, hoping to distract Hughes, which ultimately fails. Hughes, utilizing his command tact, controls the monster dolls inside Monster Academy and have them chase Lucy away. As Hughes orders the monsters to turn on Natsu, beating him, Natsu's frustration turns to rage as he sets Monster Academy ablaze. Through the smoke and flames, Hughes sees the silhouette of a dragon above Natsu. Stricken with fear, Hughes and his monster dolls back away. Natsu then punches Hughes, sending him flying out of Monster Academy and directly into Byro, who is fighting Lucy. Natsu meets up with Lucy directly after, and Coco, who is ranked just under Byro in terms of the kingdom's hierarchy, tries to give them the key to the Dragon Chain Cannon, the machine that Faust plans on using to destroy Extalia, but Sugar Boy glides past them, stealing the key. After chasing and defeating Sugar Boy, Grey catches up with Natsu. When he catches up, Natsu is shocked to see that the key has been destroyed, but Grey, to everyone's surprise, reveals that he's created an exact duplicate of the key, made from his ice. Shortly thereafter, Urza Nightwalker is seen dragging the bound and unconscious Natsu and Grey to where the Dragon Chain Cannon is located. Urza then grabs Natsu, holding a sword to his throat, and orders Grey to create a duplicate of the key. Grey does so, but not knowing how to work the cannon prompts Urza to order Natsu to take out the soldiers. Urza then appears behind Faust, effectively taking him hostage. Urza then orders the soldiers to halt the firing of the Dragon Chain Cannon. As Faust questions Urza as to what she's doing, she then reveals herself to be Urza Scarlet, re-equipping her regular attire. As Urza orders the soldiers to aim the Dragon Chain Cannon at the Lacrima, Natsu states their plan to be a success, and when a soldier calls them cowardly for taking a hostage, Natsu says it doesn't bother him one bit, as they'll resort to anything if it means that their friends are safe. Just then, Urza Nightwalker appears and attempts to strike Urza, freeing Faust. With Faust now free, the soldiers, on Faust's command, fire the Dragon Chain Cannon at Extalia. As they fire, however, Coco, now riding atop a legion, arrives and carries Natsu and the others to stop Extalia and the Lacrima from colliding. Although Coco's legion manages to hold back Extalia, even with the combined strength of the mages atop the legion, Extalia still remains in danger of colliding with the Lacrima. Even so, then all the Exceed that reside in Extalia appear and, and help Natsu and the others hold back the giant island. Suddenly, the Lacrima disappears and Mistigin, who reveals himself to be Faust's son and, effectively, the Prince of Idolas appears, thanking them for giving him enough time to find an anima big enough to return the Lacrima to Earthland. As Mystigan and Panther Lily reminisce, however, Urza Nightwalker shoots the Exceed through the abdomen with her cannon spear. She's then reinforced by much of the royal army who all appear riding atop legions. When Mystigan tries to stop Urza Nightwalker, Faust appears, piloting an enormous draconian machine, the Dorma Anim, which nullifies all external magic attacks. The king orders the soldiers to capture the Exceeds and then shoots a magic beam from the Dorma Anim. Mystigan then uses mirror water to reflect the beam back at Faust, but unfortunately it does nothing. Faust fires again, hitting Mystigan, sending him plummeting from the sky. Just then, the Dorma Anim is struck thrice, revealing Natsu, Gajil, and Wendy to have appeared, opting to take on Faust together, leaving the royal army in the hands of the others. Wendy supports Natsu and Gajil with arms and Vernier, making them faster and stronger, allowing them to damage the Dorma Anim. Faust then fires missiles at Wendy who initially dodges them, but finds them to be heat-seeking, and Natsu intercepts them, kicking them all away. As Faust prepares to fire more, Gajil attacks the Dharma Enim before that can happen, prompting Faust to attack the Iron Dragon Slayer with the Dharma Enim's tail. Natsu then charges at Faust, but the two remaining missiles explode, just before he's able to reach him. Faust then watches to his horror as Natsu eats the flames from the explosion, and Gajil eats the metal tail of the Dharma Enim. Natsu then comments on the strength of the Dharma Anim, saying that it's worthy of being called a dragon. As Natsu spurs on his excitement, the Dharma Anim begins changing form, with Faust promising to crush them with the Dharma Anim Black Sky. Natsu is then lying on the ground, completely overwhelmed by this power. Faust then fires another beam at Natsu and the others, blowing them away. The Dragon Slayers rise again, with Gajil telling Natsu and Wendy to use their dragon's roar alongside his. The three Dragon Slayers do so, with their respective roars merging into an even stronger one. 
Faust, however, jumps over the combined roar, and before they can prepare another attack, barrages them with a multitude of magic blasts. With their magic power gone, Faust stands apparently triumphant over Natsu and the other Dragon Slayers. Faust notes that even with infinite magic power, there is a time limit, and offers them fair treatment should they surrender. Natsu, however, tells Wendy and Gajil not to give up, and stands up once more, demanding that Faust come at him. As Faust attempts to crush Natsu, Natsu holds the Dharma Enum's foot at bay, and Gajil says that they can't do anything with no magic power. But Natsu shouts for them to search for tomorrow's worth and pushes the Dharma Enum away, telling Faust not to underestimate Dragon Slayers. As Faust attacks Natsu with another magic blast, demanding that he learn his place, Gajil appears from above and pins the Dharma Enum's foot to the ground, making it unable to dodge. Gajil then shouts for Natsu to go, saying that he's the only one who can defeat Faust. Natsu then tells Wendy to get up and aim her Sky Dragon's roar at him. Wendy does so, and Natsu, using the propulsion granted to him by the roar, releases his flames, creating a fiery vortex. With fire dragon's sword horn, Natsu pierces through the Dharma Anim, destroying it and pulling Faust out by the scruff of his neck. Natsu and Faust hit the ground with force and the two roll forward. Natsu, still enraged, stands up, his flames running rampant. The dragon slayers take on the visage of their respective foster parents in Faust's eyes, causing the corrupt king to pass out. As he hits the ground, Natsu and the other dragon slayers smile on in victory. Natsu declares checkmate, saying that they've defeated the king, but Gajil retorts that checkmate is something you say before the king is defeated, not after. However, Natsu and the other dragon slayers feel the ground shaking and look up, only to find that the islands that were once floating are now falling toward the ground. Natsu, upon being told the situation from Nadi, acts as a villain under the alias Great Demon Lord Dragneel, with Wendy and Gajil being his underlings, claiming that he's stolen the magic from Idolas, and that he is defeated, albeit mercifully spared, Faust. Natsu then orders, much to his annoyance, Gajil to destroy the city alongside Wendy. They do so, with Natsu claiming that anybody who disobeys dies, destroying a house in front of him with his fire dragon slayer magic. As the townspeople believe Natsu to be a monster, Mystigan hears the commotion ordering them to stop. Panther Lily, however, understands completely as Natsu orders Mystigan to stop using his name and address him as the great demon lord Dragneel, revealing Mystigan to the townspeople to be the long-lost prince of Idolas. Mystigan then rushes towards Natsu, berating him for his stupidity, telling him that the situation is out of control. Mystigan then attempts to put Natsu to sleep with his magic staves, but the magic is sucked out of them by the reverse anima. Natsu, playing his part, asks Mystigan if he's scared without his magic, declaring that magic is power, and destroys the building he's standing upon. Mystigan pleads for Natsu to stop, and Wendy wonders if Natsu's going too far, to which Gajil replies that he's playing his part perfectly. The magicless hero will oppose the magic-wielding villain. Mystigan then tells Natsu to stop, as he can't be a hero and that his act won't fool the kingdom. Natsu, in response, punches Mystigan, ordering him to fight. Mystigan then calls Natsu's act a farce, declaring that they can't bring the public together utilizing this method, and punches Natsu only for his fist to be blocked. Natsu demands that Mystigan attack at his full strength, and Mystigan kicks Natsu away. With the townspeople cheering Mystigan on, Natsu declares that they're buying it, and Mystigan once again comments on Natsu's idiocy, saying that he should have fallen with that last kick. Natsu punches Mystigan, blatantly replying that'll never happen, but once up close, Natsu mutters that this is his way of giving Mystigan his send-off. Natsu, as they cross fists, then states that people leaving Fairy Tale must abide by three rules, declaring that Mystigan must never reveal any of Fairy Tale's personal information. Natsu, however, forgets the second rule, and as he is punched by Mystigan, the S-Class Mage states that he is to never extort previous clients for personal gain. Natsu then states that Mystigan, even though their paths differ, must stay strong, and live life to its fullest while he still can, and to never forget the friends that he loves. Natsu and Mystigan cross fists once again, and Natsu falls to the ground, asking if his words reached the now former S-Class Mage, declaring that with Fairy Tail's spirit inside him, there's nothing he can't accomplish. Natsu then smiles at Mystigan, saying that he hopes they can meet again, as Mystigan Mystigan sadly looks down, the townspeople cheering him on. Suddenly, Natsu's body, along with every other Earthland fairy tale mage and Exceed's body, begins to glow. Being sucked into the reverse anima, Natsu and the other dragon slayers feign their permanent defeat at the hands of Mystigan. Natsu then smiles one last time at his former guildmate before he's permanently transported back to Earthland. After returning through the reverse anima, Natsu and the others see that the guild and town are perfectly fine. Relieved, Natsu notices that the entire Exceed race has come with them. The queen personally apologizes to everyone for the the hardships she's put them through, and explains that she sent 100 Exceed eggs to Earthland via an anima because she foresaw the destruction of Extalia. 
Shagat then explains that Carla's mission was fabricated and that she has precognitive abilities like her, which because of her young age led her to believe that everything she foresaw was her memories. Bearing no ill will toward the Exceeds, Natsu and the others bid them farewell as they fly off into the distance. Wishing to head back to the guild, they're stopped by Gajil, denying Natsu's request to join in on everyone's mockery of Nadi's habit, who wonders where Panther Lily is. Panther Lily, whose body has shrunk to accommodate itself to the Earthland environment, reveals himself, wishing to join Fairy Tale as it was the guild that Mystigan was in, and that Gajil had promised that he could join, much to the Iron Dragon Slayer's delight. But he found someone suspicious hiding in the bushes. Pulling the rope he's tied her up with, Panther Lily Lily reveals to have captured Lisana, declaring that she's not suspicious, shocking everyone. Wondering how Lisana could be in Earthland, as those from Idolis have no magic in their bodies, Lisana jumps on Natsu, happy to see him again. Lisana reveals that she is the Lisana that they all grew up with, and that during her mission with Elfman and Mira Jane two years prior, upon being struck by Elfman and rendered unconscious, she was sent through an anima, switching places with her Idolis counterpart. After stumbling upon the Idolis fairy tale guild, who were happy to see her again, mistaking her for their Lisana, Lisana correctly deduced that Lisana Sana from Idolis was dead, and decided to take her place upon seeing how happy everyone, especially the Idolis counterparts to Elfman and Mira Jane were. Lisana then explains that she decided to stay, and before long, two years had passed. Then, upon noticing Natsu and Happy's arrival, realizing that they were the Natsu and Happy from Earthland, Lisana explains to Natsu that she had resolved to stay in Idolis, so as to never make Elfman and Mira Jane sad again. However, Lisana, originally from Earthland, was sucked into the reverse anima, where Elfman and Mira Jane tell her that they knew that she was never their real sister. Upon finishing her story, Natsu and the others bring Lisana to the Cardia Cathedral. Natsu and the others then smile happily as the Strauss siblings are reunited at last. Tenro Island Arc Natsu and the rest of Fairy Tale later throw a party, celebrating Lisana's return, which inevitably erupts once again into a full-scale brawl between members of the guild, courtesy of Natsu and Gajil. Days later, Natsu is seen taking jobs left and right, hoping to make an impression on the Master, as the S-Class Mage promotion trial is fast approaching. Makarov then announced the start of the trial, stating that the trial trial this year will take place on Tenru Island, Fairy Tale's holy ground, to which Natsu responds with excitement, and that the eight participating mages are Natsu, Grey, Juvia, Elfman, Kana, Freed, Levi, and Mest Grider. Makarov and the S-Class mages then explain the rules. All the participants have one week to choose a partner who they'd like to participate with. Their partner cannot be an S-Class mage, and their partner must be a mage of Fairy Tale. As Gildarts announces his participation as an obstacle to the challengers, Natsu expresses his joy at this fact, although the others around him don't share the same feeling. When Lucy asks if Natsu is chosen as partner, he says that it's Happy. When Grey chides Natsu for being next to useless in a fight, as Happy is only useful for speed, Happy says that he'll make Natsu an S-Class mage without a doubt, to which Natsu adds on that he can't go easy on them simply because they're his friends. Natsu then runs off with Happy in tow and announces that he must train. On the boat headed towards the island, Natsu, sick because of the boat's motion, vomits over the railings, complaining that Wendy won't cast Troya. However, Loki says that it's only to be expected, as Wendy is Mest's partner, not his. As the the island comes into view, Happy points out to Natsu that they've arrived. Makarov, dressed for the weather, then stands atop the boat's railings, declaring that it's rumored that fairies used to reside on Tenru Island, and that it is the resting place of the first master, Mavis Vermilion. Makarov then details the rules of the trial, saying that for the first part, each team must pick one of eight paths that diverge from the starting point, which in this case happens to be the shore, and that different paths must be taken for each team. Natsu looks on as Makarov points out that there are S-Class mages waiting for them down some of the paths, and that down others they will have to fight each other. Natsu then readies to leave with Happy, but Freed's Jutsu Shiki prevents everyone other than him and Bixlow from leaving. Levi then rewrites Freed's runes, however, only for her and Gajil, making Natsu angry. Natsu's anger continues to soar after Evergreen rewrites Freed's runes once again, however, only for her and Elfman. Five minutes later, upon the automatic dispelling of Freed's Jutsu Shiki, Natsu and Happy, utilizing max speed, quickly rush to Tenru Island. Upon arriving at the shore, Natsu, only left with four paths left to pick, opts for the E path, declaring that E must stand for Urza, and charges forward, intending to beat her. Natsu continues down the path, shouting Urza's name, declaring that he's finally going to beat her. However, when he gets to the clearing, Natsu finds, however, that it's not Urza who's waiting for him, but Gildarts. Natsu shouts the S-Class mage's name in surprise, as Happy declares the trial to be over for them. Gildarts then apologizes to Natsu, saying that he's just unlucky, and reminds him how much he hates holding back while fighting. Natsu, however, just stares at Gildarts and declares that he's all fired up. Natsu then charges at Gildarts. 
While Happy criticizes Natsu for his reckless impatience, Gildart's comments for Natsu to slow down, declaring he hasn't mentally prepared for their battle just yet. Natsu then explosively punches Gildart's, but the S-Class Mage blocks Natsu's punch with ease, and then, much to Happy's dismay, Gildart strikes Natsu with his signature crush, seemingly obliterating him. With Happy declaring that Natsu's been blown to pieces, Gildart says that he warned Natsu that he doesn't like holding back. Natsu then drops from the sky, declaring that he's far from finished, and barrages Gildart's with a flurry of his most powerful attacks. Gildarts, however, utilizing Crush as a cushion, blocks all of Natsu's attacks, hitting him back in turn for every blow dealt. Natsu then, after being thrown away by Gildarts, attacks the S-Class Mage with his Fire Dragon's Roar, but Gildarts, utilizing Crush, breaks apart Natsu's Dragon's Roar. However, Gildarts, going too far with his magic, hits Natsu as well. Gildarts curses himself for his carelessness and quells Happy's fear for Natsu's death, saying that it wasn't that kind of magic. Looking up, Happy sees many miniature Natsus falling from the sky. Just as he declares Natsu to have failed, Gildart stares in amazement as all the miniature Natsus tell him to wait. With each one declaring that they're far from given up, the many Natsus ready themselves to confront Gildarts. The miniature Natsus then charge at Gildarts in unison, with Gildarts sweeping them away with his cloak. However, this proves ineffective as the many Natsus jump onto Gildarts himself, poking and pulling at him before comically barraging the S-Class Mage with a multitude of Fire Dragon Slayer spells. Fed up with the miniature Natsus, Gildarts joins them back into the original Natsu. However, to Gildarts' surprise, Natsu materializes directly in front of Gildarts. Saying that his opportunity has arrived, Natsu strikes Gildarts with his strongest spell, Crimson Lotus, Exploding Flame Blade. After the smoke clears, Natsu looks on to see that Gildarts had completely blocked his Dragon Slayer's secret art. Natsu rebuts Happy's statement that his attack was ineffective, noting that Gildarts has moved from his original position, claiming that this is enormous progress. As Natsu becomes dizzy, Gildarts claims that as supervisor, now having a deep understanding of Natsu's power, he would normally let him pass. Natsu, however, angrily states that there's no point in becoming an S-Class mage unless he beats Gildarts. Gildarts says that he figured that Natsu would say something like that and angrily stares at Natsu, fearing him, declaring that from here on out he won't hold back. Gildarts then completely releases his magic power, saying that Natsu is missing an important something on his journey to sit atop the magic world, sternly declaring that he must learn it. In a flash of light, Natsu, now hesitant to attack Gildarts, musters up the courage to do so and briefly charges at him until he spots Gildarts' gaze, which halts Natsu. Now trembling, Natsu slowly but surely loses his resolve and falls to the ground, declaring on his hands and knees that he lost. Natsu, still in shock, listens to Gildart saying that Natsu's declaration of loss was wonderful, and that he admires his brave attempt at standing up again. However, Gildart says that those who have the courage to cease fighting are even rarer than those with the courage to go on, saying that fear isn't evil, but a tool that one uses to acknowledge their weaknesses and become gentle, Gildart declares Natsu to have passed, as he's learned what's necessary to become an S-Class mage. As Natsu begins to protest, Gildart declares that his decision was final, but reminds Natsu that ahead, an even more grueling test awaits. Walking away, Gildarts then says to Natsu that as his friend that he shouldn't give up, and that he understands his desire to win. As a man, although, Gildarts notes that being magically proficient is all there is to be in the world. Gildarts then declares that he and Natsu are the same, and states that he would like to fight him again, encouraging a crying Natsu to go forth and become an S-Class mage. With everyone finally arriving through their respective paths, Natsu sits atop a boulder, still unhappy about his loss to Gildarts. With Evergreen and Elfman arriving just in the nick of time, Makarov announces the second part of the trial, and Natsu, deep in contemplation, jumps up, snapping out of his stupor, and challenges the remaining competitors as to see who can become the next S-Class mage, sparking a raucous jubilation from everyone. Running, hoping to be the first to find Mavis Vermilion's grave, one of Tenru Island's many native animals jumps up in front of Natsu, but Natsu punches the beast away, declaring that it's in his way. Natsu then runs up to the creature and demands that it tells him where Mavis' grave is located. The creature then replies that it doesn't know, to which Natsu sadly grunts. Natsu then wonders how they're going to find Mavis' grave with no hints, before suddenly arriving at the conclusion that the Tenru tree looks quite suspicious. Taking to the skies with Happy, Natsu proceeds to investigate the mysterious tree. Later on, Natsu jumps down from the sky and protects Evergreen and Elfman from the death predation spell released by the newly stumbled upon black wizard Zeref. Zeref cries upon seeing Natsu, saying his name, prompting Natsu to angrily ask who the black wizard is. Natsu, getting up, states that he has a bad feeling about this wizard, noting that all the trees in the area have withered and died from exposure to his magic. Natsu then states that he doesn't know who Zeref is and tells the black wizard that this is their guild's island, ordering him to stay out of their way as the trial is still ongoing, to which Zeref replies that Natsu has grown. Zeref then tells Natsu that he's been wanting to see him, which angers Natsu, who punches Zeref squarely in the face, demanding to know who he is. As Natsu once again demands to know who Zeref is, the black 
Black Wizard rises, completely unfazed by Natsu's attack. Zeref tells them all to run, as he's going to release another death predation. However, after the smoke from the spell's release clears, everyone emerges surprisingly unharmed. Natsu's scarf, in the process, turned black as a result. Natsu then curses Zeref, saying that it's the scarf he received from Igniel, as Happy ponders the possibility that Igniel gave Natsu the scarf to protect him. Following Zeref's disappearance, Natsu expresses his distaste for what he did to the scarf he received from Igniel, saying that black on black is highly unfashionable, much to Elfman and Evergreen's confusion. Evergreen then points out that with the discord occurring on the island, the exam needs to be put on hold, although Natsu and Elfman wholeheartedly disagree with her, with Natsu claiming that he promised Gildards he'd pass. Natsu then shouts for them to continue, with Elfman agreeing calling for Evergreen to go along with him, to which she scolds Elfman for ordering her around. Later, when Levy informs Urza of Grimoire Heart's invasion, Natsu takes note of the signal flare Urza fires. Natsu wonders if the enemy is Zeref. Happy notes that whomever it is, they are soon ready to attack. Natsu then says that he doesn't care who the enemy is, and that if they pick a fight with Fairy Tail, then he'll just fight back harder. Natsu and Happy, still roaming through the forest, hear the sound of Azuma destroying the Magic Council's battleship. Inquisitive as to the whereabouts of the noise, Natsu, with Happy in tow, runs towards it. Natsu then, after seeing the billowing Tower of Flames produced by Azuma's Tower Burst, notes that nobody in Fairy Tale possesses magic that can create something like that and correctly deduces that it's the enemy, making haste as he runs towards the explosion. Natsu soon arrives with Azuma having disappeared and cradles the wounded Wendy, asking her if she's okay and wondering aloud as to who could have done such a thing. Natsu then sees Mest, whose memory control is worn off, and grabs him by the collar, angrily asking if he was the one who hurt Wendy and the others. Wendy reveals that Mest is a member of the Council, and Natsu Natsu promptly sets him down, nervously commenting on Mest's appearance. However, Natsu then panics, coming to the incorrect assumption that the Magic Council is Fairy Tail's attacker. Carla corrects Natsu, telling him that their enemy is one third of the Balam Alliance, the Dark Guild Grimoire Heart. Just then, Caprico flies overhead and drops Grimoire Heart's numerous soldiers upon them. As Hades overwhelms Makarov with his Amaterasu, Natsu, feeling the resounding shockwave, wonders what's happening. Natsu then engages the Grimoire Heart underlings in battle and easily defeats the majority. After seeing Seeing Natsu's strength, however, Zancro, one of the seven kin of Purgatory, arrives in the battlefield, and informs his underling that they aren't strong enough to handle Natsu, and that he'll do it in their stead. Natsu then watches in shock as Zancro sets his own guildmates ablaze with black flames, sadistically laughing as he does so, calling them weak. Natsu then yells at Zancro, screaming that those are his allies, but Zancro turns his flames on Natsu, and Natsu shouts that flames are ineffective on him. As Wendy tells Natsu that Zancro's black flames are ominous, Natsu is struck and finds himself unable to to eat them. Zonkro then calls Natsu cocky, blows him away, and tells him that a dragon cannot ingest the flame of a god, lest they be wrought with divine punishment. He then shocks Natsu by revealing that his flames exist on a higher plane than his, as he is a man who slays gods, a god slayer. Natsu then charges at Zonkro, and the two engage in very rapid hand-to-hand -hand combat, with Zonkro mocking Natsu, asking him if dragon slayers are only as strong as he is. Natsu, in return, asks Zankro if a god really taught him his magic, to which Zankro replies that Hades taught him, and as he is as close to a god that anyone can be, god himself might as well have taught him. Natsu then proceeds to deride him, saying that he only learned his magic from a human, whereas Natsu learned his from an actual dragon. Zankro and Natsu then clash flames, with Zankro overwhelming Natsu's. Zankro then proceeds to attack Wendy and the Exceeds with his black flames, angering Natsu. Natsu then unleashes his fire dragon's roar against him, but the fire god slayer, telling Natsu that gods gave humans fire, not dragons, devours Natsu's flames, and decimates Natsu with his fire god's bellow, sending him over the edge of a nearby cliff, laughing maniacally as he does so. Natsu then gets up, claiming that for the first time in a very long while, he's thought of fire as actually being hot. He then stops and smells Makarov nearby. Running towards his mortally wounded master, Natsu questions if he's okay, stating he'll take him to Wendy right away, ordering Makarov not to move. As Natsu demands that Makarov tell him who wounded him, the injured master tells Natsu that they have no hope of winning the war against Grimoire Heart. Natsu, unable to comprehend the meaning of Makarov's words, once again asks him who wounded him. As Natsu remembers his almost immediate prior defeat at the hands of Zankro, Natsu says that they shouldn't worry about losing, as he'll simply win the next time. Natsu then tells Makarov that he's Fairy Tail's master, and that he can't abandon the trial, admonishing him for his lack of faith in their power, to which Makarov replies that sometimes people must admit defeat. However, Zankro reappears, mocking Makarov for his loss against Hades. Natsu gets up, demanding to know who Hades is, but Makarov grabs the Fire Dragon Slayer's leg, telling him that he can't win. Natsu, now shaking in fear, tells Makarov that he can, as Zankro mocks Natsu for being afraid. 
Natsu then recollects Gildarts' words about fear not being something to fight against, with Zonkro over the top of Natsu's thoughts, bellowing that Natsu has every right to fear him, as he is as strong as a god. Natsu then tells Zonkro that he's correct. He is indeed fearful, but notes that it's different from the kind of fear Gildarts mentioned, much to Zonkro's confusion. Natsu then covers his body in flames and lividly explains to Zonkro that he's afraid that the person that hurt Makarov would be defeated at the hands of someone other than his. With Zonkro now the one stricken with fear, Natsu declares that he will defeat Hades, and that he will never forgive any of them for the harm they've brought onto the guild. Zonkro then mocks Natsu for his declaration, as the latter angrily stares down the former. Zonkro and Natsu then butt heads. They trade heavy blows, with Zonkro noting that Natsu's flames don't hurt, as they're from a dragon, not a god. Zonkro then mocks Natsu's abilities, telling him that the fire god slayer flames don't burn, but rather destroy everything in their path. Zonkro then slices through many of the surrounding trees, sending their trunks high into the air, but Natsu, making quick use of them, punches one of the trunks right on top of Zonkro. Zonkro, however, bursts through the trunk, punching Natsu, declaring that as a fire god, he loves devouring fire mages. He then makes use of his fire god's supper, trapping Natsu in his black flames, telling the fire dragon slayer that he will be reduced to nothing but ash. Natsu then tries, to no avail, to eat the black flames, with Zonkro being grabbed by Makarov in the process. Makarov, trying to protect Natsu, threatens Zonkro, saying that if he hurts Natsu anymore, he'll crush him to death. Natsu then screams in terror as Zonkro sets his body ablaze, causing Makarov's hand to catch fire. Natsu continues to beg Makarov to stop, but Makarov tells Zonkro to never underestimate the power of a family. Natsu then releases a large burst of flames from his body, momentarily releasing him from Zonkro's, but uses all of his magic power and is drained away in the process. With his magic power gone, however, Natsu finds himself to the other's surprise to ingest Zonkro's flames. Makarov then notes the severity of Natsu's actions, claiming that using such a way to defeat the enemy is a surefire way to die, throwing Zonkro into the air as he says so. Natsu says that he wants nobody to die, let alone himself, and states that they're all going home to Fairy Tale. Bringing his and Zonkro's flames together, Natsu's dragon god's brilliant flame defeats Zonkro. Standing victorious, Natsu looks at his defeated foe with absolute disdain. Having finally bested the fire god slayer, Natsu tells Makarov that Gildarts taught him the value of being afraid, and of learning when to admit defeat, but declares that in their present situation, giving up is not an option. Natsu says they must make Grimoire Heart pay for harming Fairy Tail, and show them the full power of their guild. Raising his fist in the air as a sign of declaration, Natsu finally collapses, exhausted. Later on, Wendy arrives and tries to heal the wounded Natsu and Makarov. However, she finds that no matter how hard she tries, the former mage is unable to be healed. Makarov then tells Wendy that to heal Natsu, she must remove the evil that plagues his scarf, to which she expresses her ability to do so. Natsu later awakens and the scent of Zalti, the man Natsu fought on Galuna Island, wafts in his direction. Remembering who it belonged to, Natsu charges headstrong to the scent source. Homing in on Altir's location, Natsu slips on a large tree leaf and finds himself carried down a large slope, arriving conveniently exactly where Zeref lays unconscious. Recognizing the Black Wizard, Happy warns Natsu about the ground surrounding him, and just in time, Natsu moves out of the way as a large tree suddenly manifests itself just under his prior footing. Altir, sitting on top of a tree branch, tells Natsu that there was a sprout underneath him, and that with her arc of time, she sped up its growth. Natsu then says that Altir and Zalti have the same scent, and declares that she's a crossdresser, but Altir denies this, telling Natsu that this is what she truly looks like, announcing that she is the leader of the Seven Kin of Purgatory. Altir then wonders aloud if Natsu is after Zeref as well, startling the Fire Dragon Slayer. Altir then declares that she won't hand him over, but Natsu states that he doesn't want Zeref. He just wants to make everyone pay, him included, for bringing pain upon fairy tale. Altir then comments on Payback, saying that she also owes Natsu Payback for involving himself in her plans on Galuna Island. Declaring that she's not holding back this time, Natsu climbs up the tree that Altir is resting upon, berating her for interrupting the S-Class Mage promotion trial, claiming that if it wasn't for them, then he would have already become an S-Class Mage. Altir questions Natsu's words, hitting him with one of her orbs, pushing the Fire Dragon Slayer off the tree. Landing on a nearby branch, Natsu finds himself surrounded by a number of Altir's orbs, which she claims to be parallel worlds, and attacks Natsu with them, saying that she can imagine many different futures for him, bringing the orbs together. Natsu is hit by Altir's flash forward. Screaming in pain, Altir tells Natsu that their fun is just beginning. 
As Kain, Hikaru chases Lucy through a Tenro Island's forest, they happen across Natsu's battle with Altir. In response to interrupting his battle, Natsu kicks Kain squarely in the face, sending the Grimoire Heart Mage rolling towards Altir. Lucy then calls out to Natsu, expressing her joy towards his timely intervention, although Natsu, upon seeing her, asks Lucy quite bluntly what she's doing in the area. Lucy then asks Natsu if he was fighting, to which he demands that Lucy leave his opponent alone, as he is fighting Altir. Happy then notes that Altir is going to be a tough opponent, even for Natsu, which he denies. Happy then points out to Natsu that there are now two opponents, to which Natsu replies that they've just added another member to their side as well. Saying that they should abandon the trial, Natsu offers Lucy to, quite nostalgically, form a team with him and Happy. With Happy and Lucy reminiscing, Natsu spits out his excitement. Lucy and Natsu then high-five one another, encouraging each other before readying themselves to face Kain and Altir. As Natsu stares Kain and Altir down, Kain tells Altir that he can handle Lucy and Natsu by himself, which irritates Natsu, saying that he's ruining the entire concept of a two-on-two -two battle, which also angers Happy, who yells at Natsu for not including him in their count. Altir prepares to leave with Zeref, and Natsu charges at Altir, trying to prevent her departure, but is punched away by Kain. Lucy then motions to help Natsu with Kain, but is stopped by Kain's Ushino Koku Mairi, which causes Natsu to wonder why she stopped, not understanding the situation. Natsu then wonders what's happening to Lucy, and as Kain Kain toys with her body using his magic, Natsu says that what Kain's doing to Lucy looks like fun. Kain then forces Lucy to attack Natsu, and although he dodges her first strike, before he can unleash his fire dragon's roar, Lucy kicks Natsu squarely in the face. As they lay on the ground, with Natsu questioning what Lucy's doing to him, Kain forces Lucy to punch Natsu in the face. Annoyed by Kain's control over Lucy, Natsu grabs Lucy's arms, and Happy manages to grab Kain's doll, Mr. Kersey, giving him control over Lucy instead. Happy, then, with control, forces Lucy to push Natsu's face into her breasts. Kain then punches Happy, who drops Mr. Kersey, but before he can take it back, Natsu swipes it away, causing Lucy to get swept up in the motions. Kain then slams Natsu into a rock pile, causing it to collapse on top of him. Natsu, trapped, can only watch in horror as Kain brutalizes Lucy. Natsu tells Lucy to run, saying that he'll find a way to beat Kain by himself, but Lucy refuses, saying that she'd rather be with everyone rather than running away. With Kain controlling Lucy, Natsu struggles to get free, but notices Mr. Kersey lying on the ground next to him. Controlling Lucy with the doll, Natsu gives her the ability to fight back. Thinking of a better way to win, Natsu sets Mr. Kersey's hand on fire with his Fire Dragon Slayer magic, causing the same thing to happen to Lucy's hand. Natsu then throws Mr. Kersey to Happy, and together they defeat Kain with Secret Attack Lucy Fire. After the battle, Natsu still struggles to get out from underneath the rock, but upon suggestion, Natsu breaks free using his Fire Dragon Slayer magic. Now free, Natsu tries to track Zeref, but is unable to, as something is interfering with his scent. Lucy then tells Natsu that Grimoire Heart is planning to use Zeref to change the world, to which Natsu replies that changing the world is a lot of work, but that Grimoire Heart won't succeed, as he'll make them pay for hurting Makarov. Lucy then theorizes that Grimoire Heart has an airship, and that they should find it, but as Happy has run out of magic power, Natsu says they should return to the campsite where Wendy is. As Natsu arrives at the campsite, Mest, not revealing himself to be Dorinbolt, arrives right alongside him and smashes the Rune Knight's communication lacrima. Natsu then questions where Dorinbolt went, but says that he's come back to help them leave the island. But Natsu, accompanied by everyone else, refuses to leave Tenru Island. When Dorinbolt warns Natsu of the impending threat of Ethereon, Natsu simply states that they'll defeat Grimoire Heart before they fire it. When Dorinbolt says that there's nothing that Fairy Tail can do, Natsu approaches him and says that he doesn't care who their enemy is. But if anyone dares to lay a hand on Fairy Tail, he'll destroy them. Natsu then asks Doran Bolt to stall the Magic Council, as Doran Bolt says that stopping the Council altogether is impossible. When Doran Bolt asks them how they can stop a guild like Grimoire Heart, Natsu simply says that they'll defeat them with all their strength. During their travel to the camp where their wounded guildmates lay, Blue Note Stinger, Grimoire Heart's second-in-command, appears and swiftly defeats Natsu and the others. Blue Note then begins interrogating Natsu as to the whereabouts of Fairy Glitter, one of the three great magics unique to the Fairy Tail Guild, but Natsu claims that he doesn't know anything about it, prompting him to crush Natsu with his gravity magic. Natsu then charges at Blue Note, but Blue Note blasts him away. Upon seeing Makarov, Blue Note motions towards the injured Fairy Tail Master, to which Natsu threatens Blue Note. Kana arrives just in time to save Natsu and the others from Blue Note, but is pushed to the ground by Blue Note's gravity magic. Kana then asks for Natsu and the others to buy her some time to build up her magic power. As Blue Note explains Grimoire Heart's true goal, he attempts to kill Kana, but Natsu sticks his head to the ground and uses his Fire Dragon's roar, burning Blue Note from below, saving Kana. Blue Note then pushes Natsu away, just as Kana prepares to cast Fairy Glitter. As Natsu supports Kana, she casts Fairy Glitter, but much to Natsu's horror, Blue Note dissipates the almighty magic, sending the entire group flying. Natsu looks on in pain as Blue Note once again prepares to kill Kana. To his amazement, however, Gilda Gildarts arrives, livid, and strikes Blue Note away, saving them all. To Natsu's confusion, Gildarts orders them all to leave, but the shockwave formed from his and Blue Note's clash sends them flying. 
Kana, however, points out that they'd only be in Gildart's way, and Natsu and the others leave, despite him wanting to watch them fight. Later, when Azuma destroys the Tenro tree, Natsu is seen collapsing along with the other members of Fairy Tail. After Urza defeats Azuma, Natsu, Lucy, and Wendy regroup with the rest of the guild at the main camp, where they're shocked to see so many of their guildmates injured. As Panther Lily talks about splitting the remaining guild members into attack and defense teams, Natsu stares on in silence. Natsu then resolves to go and defeat Hades, asking for Lucy and Happy to come with, with Wendy and the X Seeds opting to tag along. Along the way, Natsu, Lucy, and Wendy cross paths with Urza and Grey. The five fairy tale mages then arrive at Grimoire Heart's airship and stare the Grimoire Heartmaster down. As Hades tells Natsu and the others to come whenever they're ready, Natsu shouts for the Dark Mage to come to them instead, to no avail. Natsu then turns to the Exceeds and asks them to search the airship for a power source and destroy it. As a precautionary measure, Wendy casts Troya on Natsu, eliminating the threat of motion sickness. Grey then creates stairs for them to climb while Natsu and the others rush towards Hades, with Natsu making the first move, telling them to feel the power that Fairy Tail possesses. Using Natsu's initial attack as a distraction, Team Natsu attacks Hades together, with Wendy acting as support. Natsu then attacks with Fire Dragon's wing attack, but Hades counters by attaching a chain to the back of Natsu's head, but Urza severs the chain, allowing Grey to launch Natsu towards Hades. Using the propulsion from Wendy and Lucy's unison raid, Natsu delivers a devastating Fire Dragon's sword horn to Hades' chest. Hades then emerges from the rubble unscathed. With Natsu noting that his magic power has changed, Hades screams, seemingly causing Wendy to disappear, leaving only her clothes behind, warranting Natsu's full attention. Natsu, still worried, cries out for Wendy, but becomes relieved when he discovers that Horologium appeared, saving her from certain death. As Hades calls them interesting, Natsu questions Hades, wondering if he knows Makarov. Hades then reveals that he was Fairy Tail's second master, and that he was the one who chose Makarov. Natsu, enraged, runs towards Hades, calling him a liar, but is attacked by Hades and Matarasu. Hades then gleefully shoots Team Natsu with his bullet magic, telling them to dance. Lying defeated, Hades approaches Team Natsu, proclaiming that their journey is at an end, and that it was a mistake to entrust his will to Makarov. Natsu then yells at Hades, telling him that there's nothing wrong with change, and that they live in the now, unlike him. Natsu then finishes by saying that those who don't have the courage to change might as well be dead. Enraged, Hades tortures Natsu with his bullet magic, telling him that he should hate Makarov, Makarov, not him, for the way that he's going to die. Natsu then calls Hades Makarov's rival, but before Hades can deliver the final blow, lightning strikes the airship. Natsu then looks on in amazement as Laxus arrives, saving him from otherwise certain death. Upon his arrival, Laxus picks on Natsu, making fun of his worse for wear appearance, which he smiles at in enjoyment. Natsu then watches in amazement as Laxus and Hades battle, seemingly on equal terms. However, upon Laxus being struck by one of Hades and Matarasu's spells, Natsu is blown back by the force of the explosion. When Laxus buckles, caused by the damage he received from the prior explosion, Natsu cries out in worry. When Laxus says that he still has a ways to go regarding Hades, Natsu questions the meaning behind his words. Natsu then reassures Laxus that he can be angry at those who harm Fairy Tail, even though he isn't a member anymore, prompting Laxus to strike Natsu with his lightning. Having been struck by Hades' magic, Laxus tells Natsu that the lightning he's giving him is a gift, to which Natsu thanks him for the meal. Laxus then states that he's given Natsu every last bit of his magic, and Natsu asks why, pointing out that he's far weaker than Laxus, to which Laxus tells Natsu that someone with Fairy Tail's mark needs to defeat Hades. Wiping the tears from his eyes, Laxus's lightning and Natsu's flame completely fuse, and entering Lightning Fire Dragon mode, Natsu lividly states that he's about to personally deliver the Lightning Fire Dragon's 100-fold payback to Hades. With the power of Laxus's lightning surging inside him, Natsu overwhelms Hades by combining his Fire Dragon Slayer magic with Laxus's lightning magic, creating explosive high-voltage attacks. Natsu then angrily berates Hades for harming their guild, screaming that he's going to completely erase the former guildmaster. Hades then tries to bind Natsu's arms with his chain magic, but Natsu breaks them. Natsu then releases the highly destructive Lightning Fire Dragon's roar, which hits Hades and destroys half of Tenro Island. Exhausted, Natsu looks at Hades, who's lying on the ground, and nearly falls into the hole he created, saying that he finally did it, but is saved by Lucy. Natsu then thanks Lucy for saving him, stating that he's run out of magic power. Hades then stands, praising Natsu and his guildmates for their strength. He then releases his demon's eye, stating that he's going to show them something spectacular. The Abyss of Magic as Hades states that he's going to end them, Natsu curses his inability to move. Natsu, still unable to move, listens to Hades' explanation of magic, in which he states that to find the source of magic, the one magic, one needs to immerse themselves in the deepest darkness. Stating that Natsu and the others lack the drive to immerse themselves in said darkness, Hades performs the forbidden living magic spell, Nemesis, creating a multitude of demons from the surrounding rubble. With everyone shaking in fear, Natsu grabs Lucy, who's hugging him, and recounts to them the words that Gildart spoke regarding fear. 
Stating that they've learned their fear, they can now use it to grow stronger and face it head on. Natsu then shouts that they've got nothing to fear as they're not alone and they still have each other. Natsu charges at Hades, screaming the signal for counterattack. Still exhausted, Natsu collapses but is picked up and thrown forward by Lucy and Wendy. Gray and Urza, who were ahead of them, then propel Natsu even further forward. Natsu then screams at Hades, who tells them all to sink into the abyss as the airship explodes. Following the explosion, Natsu's scarf is blown about, and through the dust and debris, Natsu is shown to have struck Hades squarely in the face. Natsu then continues to repeatedly strike the Dark Guildmaster as he wonders why his dark magic had no effect, claiming that his magic power has disappeared, noting that it must be become someone destroyed the source of his magic power, the Devil's Heart. Thanks to Altir, who has restored Tenru Island to its original state, Team Natsu's magic power is replenished, and Natsu shouts that the victory goes to Fairy Tail. Hades then strikes Natsu, rebutting his claim, but Laxus rises and punches Hades back, screaming for Fairy Tail to attack. Team Natsu then attacks Hades together, battering him. Natsu then charges at Hades one final time and uses his Dragon Slayer's secret art revision Crimson Lotus exploding lightning blade. With the torrent of lightning and flames, Hades is defeated. Natsu falls to the ground and screams a cry of victory as the sun finally rises on Tenru Island. Following the battle, Lucy returns Igniel's scarf to Natsu, to which he expresses his gratitude. The Exceeds then come running, being chased by lower-ranked members of Grimoire Heart. Noting that they're all out of magic power, Team Natsu is about to be attacked, but are saved by the arrival of Makarov and the majority of the Team Tenru. The members then flee, seeing that Makarov stands in their way and that Hades has been defeated. Fairy Tail celebrates their victory. Natsu declares, with the threat of Grimoire Heart no longer looming, that they should continue the trial, and that, to make it simple, they'll just fight each other. Natsu and Gajil then begin to spit insults, but Natsu collapses from having eaten a substance other than fire. Natsu and many others are then shocked to hear that Makarov has cancelled the trial, a result of the many events that transpired throughout the day. Natsu then starts throwing a tantrum, and Makarov tells Natsu that if he can defeat him, he can become an S-Class mage. Natsu expresses his enthusiasm, but is promptly punched into a tree, courtesy of Makarov, and therefore fails. Natsu is then seen fishing with guild arts, but is interrupted by Kana and Lucy's arrival. Pulling Natsu away from the river, Lucy demands that he returned to the campsite. Natsu then watches, dumbfounded, as Kana reveals that Gildarts is her father. Natsu and the rest of Team Tenru freeze up upon hearing the roar of a dragon. Rushing back to the campsite, Natsu looks up into the sky and sees the Black Dragon of the Apocalypse, Acnologia, soaring overhead. As Natsu remarks that dragons truly do exist, Acnologia descends, destroying everything around them. Natsu then ceases his ramblings, truly afraid of the Black Dragon. The dragon then jumps and lands right in front of Team Tenru, prompting them to flee. Makarov then stops Natsu from acting irrationally and uses his giant to battle the dragon head on. Natsu then shouts that he should fight Acnologia as he is a dragon slayer. Laxus, however, grabs Natsu and begins to run. Natsu then begins to insult Laxus, but stops upon seeing his tears. Natsu looks on in tears as Makarov grapples the gargantuan dragon. Ignoring Laxus's protests, Natsu returns to help Makarov and grabs the dragon, preventing him from striking the final blow. Natsu then demands that Acnologia leave Makarov alone as the entire team Tenru returns to fight Acnologia. Acnologia then ascends and prepares its dragon's roar. Seeing this, Natsu declares that they can't let it end here. Team Tenru then joins hands as Acnologia fires his roar, completely obliterating Tenru Island. X791 Arc once Tenru Island reappears, the remaining members of Fairy Tail travel to where the island is, and upon docking their ship, find a ways into the forest, Natsu's body sticking out of the dirt. Natsu wakes up and is surprised to see Jet and Droy standing above, and comments on the way they've aged, especially Droy's new body proportions. As Natsu remembers that they were hit by Acnologia's roar, Mavis Vermilion appears, and reveals that she saved them by using the Great Fairy Sphere. Natsu and Team Tenru then return to the guild, whose base of operations is now a small tavern, and kicks Tybalt away before the twilight Ogre Mage can harm Romeo. Natsu then sees Romeo and tells him that he's all grown up. Crying, Romeo smiles for the first time in seven years and welcomes Natsu home. At the party celebrating their return, Natsu is impressed by Romeo's new fire magic abilities. Romeo reveals to Natsu that he's been taking classes from Totomaru. Natsu asks to come, but Romeo says it would be best not to, as Totomaru still holds a grudge against him. Later on, after Natsu and Happy realize they have no savings at their house, they follow Lucy to see her father, hoping he would lend them the funds they need. When they arrive at Love and Lucky, Lucy asks to see her father, but they're informed that he had died one month ago. Natsu, along with Happy, travels back to Magnolia Town with Lucy. On the way, they encounter two girls talking about how terrible their fathers are, causing Natsu to scream at them in anger. Lucy tells Natsu to stop yelling at them and apologizes for making them worry about her. When Lucy says that she thinks she hates her father, Natsu replies that simply because she can't cry, that doesn't change how she feels. Natsu and Happy are then seen by Makao and Wakaba, downtroddenly meandering throughout Magnolia. 
Later, Natsu and Happy bring Lucy a job to cheer her up. Key of the Starry Sky Arc. At the guild, Natsu is searching for a job. Happy presents him with one, which requests the capture of an escaped convict named Velveno. The client's name is Balsamico, and Makao comments that he is hosting a magic dance ball, a ball for mages only, and that Velveno has been rumored to be making an appearance. Outside, Lucy tries to teach Natsu how to dance, but he accidentally steps on her foot, so Lisana offers to teach him instead. Natsu, along with Happy and the others, all end up going to the magic dance ball, and once there, they're greeted by the client's daughter, Asido. Grey, Natsu, and Elfman station themselves inside to monitor the dancers, and Natsu and Grey are quickly grabbed by two women who want to dance. When Velveno appears at the height of the party, Natsu tries to attack him, but his magic is rendered ineffective due to Velveno's own. Natsu is shocked when Velveno reveals that he only came to the ball to ask for Asido's hand in marriage. When Natsu tells Lucy he's going to leave, she responds by asking him to stay with her for a little while longer, and they begin to dance on a floating platform. However, the moment is ruined when Natsu states that Wendy's Troya wore off, prompting Lucy to scream for her immediate removal from the platform. Natsu, Lucy, Wendy, Happy, and Carla take on a mission to deliver precious cargo to their client by train, and during the trip, Natsu gets sick. When Wendy offers to cast Troya on him, they find out that he's built up an immunity to the spell. He steps out of the carriage so that he feels better, and while vomiting, he meets three large buttocked people, who introduce themselves as the Jigglebutt Gang. Natsu becomes friends with the Jigglebutt Gang, and the three extort Natsu, using him to enter the cart, thereby taking both the freight train and Wendy hostage. A while later, Natsu recovers due to the cart having stopped, and upon hearing that Wendy's in trouble, he jumps straight up to the roof of the cart and heads towards the gang. Though Wendy tries to stop Natsu from attacking and asks the gang to surrender peacefully, Natsu angrily uses his magic and sends the gang flying from the train top. With the gang finally taken care of, the group continue their journey and eventually reach the station where their client waits. However, as they arrived past the arranged time, the client states he'll only pay them half. In her apartment, Lucy once again yells at Natsu and Happy for reading her novels. Natsu asks Lucy to go on a mission with Happy and himself, claiming that they're starving, but Lucy kicks them out of her apartment. After Lucy accidentally turns himself invisible and heads to the guild for help, she hears Natsu saying that Lucy was being mean to him, causing the others to laugh at Lucy. He's then hit with a chair from Ritas after Lucy starts a brawl. He and other guild members start to have a fight with each other and he is hit towards Lucy, slamming into her. He then hears her voice and picks up her scent, leading to her discovery. Natsu thinks of a way to try to help her and decides to burn her. Aided by Romeo, Natsu tries but fails. He then paints on Lucy's face, creating a horrible image. After several other failed attempts, Lucy's clothes, as well as everyone's memories of her, start to disappear. Luckily, however, the erasing process is stopped when Natsu and Happy remember her. Happy then slams into Lucy and sends the ointment bottle flying, covering everyone with the ointment, causing them to become invisible. At the guild, Natsu is asked by Mira Jane what they plan to do with Lisana's grave at the cathedral. Happy reminds them that they were the ones who made it, and Mira Jane suggests keeping it as a memento and changing the description to honor the archbishop. When Romeo later asks what What's wrong, Lucy states that Natsu is tired from working in the fields and that he's taking a nap. As Michelle arrives, Natsu immediately wakes up, and as she enters the guild, he asks Lucy who she is. Natsu asks Happy what's with Michelle, and Happy states that she's definitely a relative of Lucy. Natsu, alongside the other members of the guild, listen to how Michelle has been looking for Lucy. He tells Lucy to open up the case that Michelle has brought with her, as he and Lucy are wondering what's inside. When the item inside is revealed to be a strange rod-like device, he thinks it's some kind of weapon, but Lucy denies it. Natsu and Happy later ask Lucy to go on a job with them to capture some bandits. Natsu disagrees with Urza's capture plan, saying he can't ride the cart she planned to use, but later reorganizes the plans so that he follows the cart with Happy instead. Natsu then attacks the bandit's leader, leading to the bandit's defeat. Later, when Michelle drops the mysterious item, Natsu watches as it floats and begins to glow. Somewhere in the forest, Natsu and Happy are fishing, until Natsu sees lightning strike. Thinking it is Laxus, Natsu and Happy run in that direction. On his way, Natsu meets up with Gajil, who had the same idea. The two then argue about who's going to defeat Laxus until Laxus himself arrives, to which the two dragons Slayers challenge him to a fight. Laxus agrees to fight them both, and just as he and Natsu are about to fight, Wendy says that they should fight tomorrow instead, as fights should be planned. The next day, Natsu arrives in Southgate Park, only to see that a festival is taking place, and he discovers that the festival is because of his planned fight with Laxus. Natsu and Laxus then prepare to fight, with the two each releasing their magic power to its fullest. Natsu then charges at Laxus, but with one swift punch, he's defeated. Happy then pokes the defeated Natsu, asking if he's okay. Later on, Natsu wonders where Gajil ran off to. When Natsu, Wendy, and Lucy later arrive at the guild, they see a mysterious trio standing out front. Confusing the group for their idolist counterparts, Natsu asks them how they came over from the parallel world. Natsu then, however, notes that they cannot be the same, as the person who resembles Hughes is female. Natsu calls out to them, but they reply that they've never met before. He listens 
as the female Hughes demands that Fairy Tail hand over Lucy Hartfilia. Natsu and the Guild almost instantaneously ask the trio why they want Lucy, stating that they will not hand her over. Then the Sugar Boy lookalike uses his magic, covering the surrounding area in slime. As Natsu tries to counterattack, the slime consumes and immobilizes him and many of his guildmates. The group then states that they will attack again if Lucy is not handed over, but upon hearing those words, Natsu stands and attacks the group, telling Lucy to run. However, the female Hughes uses her magic to take control of Natsu, forcing him to attack his friends instead. Natsu then participates in Michelle's plan, calling every female member of the guild Lucy in order to confuse their opponents. The group then deduces that Lucy is one of the two girls who ran away and use Natsu as a distraction, allowing for their escape. Later, Natsu and Happy are about to fight Sugar Boy and until, that is, a giant octopus interrupts their fight. The man riding it tells Sugar Boy not to be distracted. Natsu thinks that the octopus is Byro, but through listening in on their conversation, Natsu discovers that it is not the octopus, but the man riding it who is Byro, who appears vastly different compared to his Idola's counterpart. Upon leaving, Byro orders Sugar Boy to defeat Natsu. Natsu and Sugar Boy begin to battle, however, Natsu's spells have no effect on Sugar Boy because of his slime magic, which continues to absorb Natsu's attacks. Unable to fight back, Natsu is repeatedly struck by the slime. When the attacks cease, Natsu has Happy fly him into the sky and drop him, sending him into the core of the slime. Once inside, Natsu releases a large amount of his magic power, more than the slime can contain, causing it to explode. Natsu then readies to attack Sugar Boy, falling down from the sky, but instead the two become stuck together. The two remain stuck together, still fighting, until Grey arrives, who uses his ice make to break the slime. Now back at the guild, everyone unanimously agrees to take vengeance upon the Legion Corps for stealing Lucy's memento. Natsu, along with everyone else, thinks about what the slew of recent events involving the Zentopia Church could mean. Later, he with the rest of Team Natsu, Wendy, and Carla arrive in the Hartfilia Concern Mansion, planning on searching it for any and all clues regarding the memento Jude left Lucy. Natsu, along with Grey, Urza, Happy, Wendy, and Carla, starts investigating the mansion's bottom floors. Natsu and Happy later walk into Jude's study and interrupts the group's concentration by sneezing, earning Natsu a beating at Urza's hand. Natsu then listens as Carla states that in the title, To My Daughter, lie the words myth, duo, and great. Natsu continues to listen as Lucy figures out that the words are connected to a book called The Two Great Myths, which leads her to a book called Life of the Clockwork, saying that she also has that book and continues to say that the other myth is located in another book, which is called The Key to the Starry Heavens. Suddenly, the door handle rapidly expands, causing the door to break, revealing an exceed. Natsu watches as it enters, demanding the book in Lucy's possession, claiming that he's Samuel, the head of the Legion Corps. Natsu, alongside Grey and Urza, tries to attack Samuel, but Samuel is protected by a man in ironclad armor, damaging the mansion. Introducing himself as Dan Strait, Natsu continues to attack the armored individual, but fails with each attempt. Natsu then watches, awestruck, as Dan sees Lucy, falling in love with her and declaring how beautiful she is. As Michelle and Lucy flee, Natsu and Grey charge at Dan, damaging the mansion even further. Natsu then turns to strike Samuel, but the XE dodges and Dan appears in his wake, pushing Natsu out the window with his spear. When Natsu gets up to continue their battle, he discovers that Dan's spear has shrunk him down to the size of a doll, and Happy steps on him. Natsu then watches, helpless, as Dan and Samuel complete their mission. When Natsu and the others return to the guild, Natsu is made fun of for his shrunken size. Lucy then explains what was in the Key of Starry Heavens, and Fairy Tail then decides to split up into groups to search for the remaining clock parts. Natsu is teamed up with Lucy, Happy, Michelle and Romeo, and they take a boat to find their piece, which is where they meet some mysterious archaeologists. The archaeologists tell them not to search for the pieces any longer, though they quickly refuse. Natsu is then blown off the boat and into the water. Because of his small size, Natsu is unable to do anything, but the archaeologists jump in and save him. As he's thrown back onto the boat, Natsu is returned to his normal size. When Romeo notices something gleaming amongst the dunes, Natsu and the others reach a strange-looking device standing stark in the wasteland. Believing it's some kind of entrance to the place they're searching for, Natsu, Lucy, and and Romeo ponder over how to activate the device, before soon seeing a small keyhole at its center. Lucy summons Cancer to open it, and once it opens, it sucks Natsu and his team beneath the sand. Natsu and his team awaken at the bottom of a large hole in the ground, only to be blocked by a door. After trying many commands and cliche phrases to force the door open, they're allowed entrance when Romeo politely asks the door to open. Upon entering, he and the others find a large room decorated with a massive statue at the center. When Lucy rotates the statue, the walls open to reveal massive columns and statues that slowly move towards the group, attempting to crush them. Narrow avoiding death by climbing into the mouths of the statues and hanging out their nostrils, Lucy once again rotates the statues, only this time in the other direction. This just causes the trap to activate again. Fortunately, Virgo is summoned and digs a hole, causing them to yet again fall. 
When Natsu's group lands, they find themselves in a long room lined with what appears to be tombs. Natsu strikes one, which has Gray's appearance, and he activates another trap, sending a large boulder rolling towards them. When Natsu and the others run down the corridor, they encounter a narrow bridge, and after running across, they realize another boulder is heading towards them from the opposite side. Before the boulders collide, they jump off the bridge and into the chasm below. Natsu tells Romeo to use their magic to grab the rocky formations, hoping to stop their fall. With no other way to go, the group decides to head down. Natsu and his group explore the underground cavern where they're confronted by Coco and Dan Strait. Inside the underground crypt, Dan spots Lucy and begins speaking about destiny, but Natsu interrupts Dan by attacking him. Dan reflects the attack with his shield, which results in Lucy being set on fire. They use the distraction to escape, but Dan stops them. Natsu attacks Dan once more, but Dan reflects the attack, and Lucy's set on fire once again. Dan tries to shrink Natsu, but misses and hits Lucy instead. Coco tells Dan to fight Natsu later, as they still need to find the clock piece. Soon after, Lucy is returned to her normal size, but Happy is greatly enlarged and he steps on Natsu once more. Natsu accuses Happy of purposefully stepping on him, but Happy assures him that he isn't. Natsu yells at Happy to stop flying as he's destroying the ruins, but Happy is worried that if he lands, he might step on Natsu again. Much to Natsu's relief, Dan turns Happy back to his original size. When the others search for the clock piece, Natsu stays behind and states that he'll finish off Dan once and for all. Natsu and Dan then both declare that they're not going to hold back as there's no time to waste regarding the finding of the clock part. Natsu makes use of his fire dragon slayer magic, hoping to harm Dan, but his shield and armor make the efforts futile. During their battle, Dan chides Natsu, saying that his time has been frozen for seven years, meaning that he's only as strong as he was seven years ago and that he can't do anything against Dan. Natsu and Dan's battle eventually takes them to the chapel hidden within the ruins, which happens to be where the other went. Dan then strikes Natsu with his spear, Habaraki, and shrinks the fire dragons there once more. While Romeo draws Dan's attention away from the others, Natsu listens to Happy and Michelle's plan to distract Dan by extorting his infatuation with Lucy. The plan proves successful and Natsu strikes himself with the Habaraki, returning to his normal size. Natsu and Romeo then use Dan's lack of attention to attack and successfully defeat him. Soon afterwards, Natsu and the others witness the clock part rising from the depths of the desert sand. Natsu and his group talk about the clock part until Dan, who is laying behind, awakes. Natsu asks if he wants to fight again, but Dan declines, admitting his defeat. All of them want an explanation as to why the Legion Corps are after the clock parts. He and the others listen as Dan recounts his past via picture book. When Dan says that his first love disappeared, Natsu asks what had happened, but Dan reveals that she was fine and that he saw her the very next day. When Dan finishes, Lucy asks him what the Legion Corps' motivation is, to which Dan replies that he cannot say. Natsu, frustrated, asks Dan why he even went through the trouble of explaining his background. Later, as Natsu complains about the ridiculous amount of time Dan can spend chasing Lucy, Byro appears, scolding Dan and Coco. Natsu demands that Byro give back Lucy's memento, otherwise he'll fight him for it. Byro agrees to the latter. At first, Natsu laughs at Byro for riding on Kanaloa, and Happy, disappointed, claims that Natsu is setting a bad example for Romeo. Excited, Natsu attacks Kanaloa, thinking that if he defeats Byro, it'll be like defeating Guildarts himself. However, Kanaloa smashes him with its tentacles and uses its ink to protect himself from Natsu's fire dragon's roar. When Kanaloa attacks Dan, Natsu rushes to save him and yells at Kanaloa for not being able to distinguish between enemy and ally, only to be told by Byro that the Legionnaires are willing to risk their lives for Zentopia. Natsu is then trapped under Kanaloa's tentacle and is about to be attacked by its poisonous ink and Lucy, in response, summons Aquarius, who uses water to protect Natsu. Afterwards, Natsu thanks Lucy and Aquarius, but says Aquarius' name wrong. Romeo then pulls Natsu out from underneath Kanaloa's tentacle using his purple flare and is ordered to keep Kanaloa's mouth open so that Natsu can damage the octopus with its flames. However, Natsu's strategy fails as Kanaloa reveals himself to be a member of the Legion as well and grabs Natsu with one of its tentacles, afflicting him with motion sickness. Byro later explains that in order to prevent something that would have been the end of the world, Fairy Tail mustn't be allowed to own the clock parts, but Natsu replies that by that logic, neither should Zentopia. Natsu is silenced once more as Kanaloa begins swinging its tentacle, but moments later, Lucy summons Taurus who frees Natsu. Together, the group defeats Kanaloa, with Natsu striking the final blow. Byro then compliments Natsu and moves to confront the Fire Dragon Slayer himself. Natsu attempts to strike Byro, but the man nullifies Natsu's Fire Dragon Slayer magic. Natsu then opts to fight Byro, utilizing hand-to-hand -hand combat, but fails in that regard as well. Happy then grabs Natsu and attempts to fly him to safety, but Byro nullifies Happy's era, causing him to fall. Later, Natsu tells Byro that lives aren't supposed to be thrown around meaninglessly, stating that they're fighting for their friend, but Byro counters Natsu's statement saying that mages only take jobs for money. Natsu eats the flames produced by the crypt's candles, replenishing his strength, and momentarily gains the upper hand against Byro. However, Byro soon continues his own dominance over Natsu. Fortunately, the other groups who were sent to search for the clock parts arrive, parts in hand, and Natsu, Juvia, Lion, Mira Jane, Levi, Gajil, Kana, Urza, and Wendy all attack Byro simultaneously. But the Legionnaire nullifies all their magic. Natsu then smells a scent he claims to be familiar, and looks up to see members of a dark guild he helped destroy standing overhead. When 
when Lucy points out that they are the Orachionses, Jackpot corrects her, saying that they are the reborn Orachionses. Natsu then asks the man standing in the center if he is Midnight, but Midnight replies that he now goes by the name Brain 2. Midnight explains their goals. Natsu, alongside Byro and Dan, charge towards them, but are attacked by Midnight's Darkness Magic, which he uses in tandem with Reflector, leaving even Dan unable to reflect the Mighty Magic. When Cobra and Racer battle the mages present, they prove to be much stronger than they were seven years ago. Angel then destroys the surrounding buildings. The Trimens then rescue Fairy Tail and send them to the Blue Pegasus building, where Natsu is abruptly awoken by Ichia. As he and his guildmates recover slowly, they find out that the reborn Arashion Sez and Legion Corps are nowhere to be found. Later, Natsu and the others hear a menacing chime as they fly aboard the Christina, seeking to confront the Dark Guild. After Natsu, along with the other fairy tale mages, returns to the guild, he's seen eating at a table while the other mages explain the situation. He says that if they search for the reborn Arashion Seiz, eventually they will find them, to which Grey disagrees, leading to an argument between the two mages. Natsu later witnesses the return of Freed, Evergreen, and Bixlow, as well as Kinana notching some ancient symbols to a wall. After Levi and Freed explain what these symbols mean, Max says that if they knew where the reborn Arashion Seiz were going to strike next, they could wait for them. Kana then awakens and using divination determines where the reborn Arashion says are going to strike. Makao announces the teams that should go stop the reborn Arashion says, which results in Natsu being teamed up with Lucy, Michelle, and Elfman. Although Natsu is excited at first, Happy reminds him that he is not going to be on his team, which disappoints Natsu as he can no longer fly. Natsu's team arrives at the place where the reborn Arashion says are supposed to strike, where they encounter Jackpot and Byro. As Natsu and Elfman move to confront Jackpot, Natsu tells Byro that he'll deal with him later. Natsu and Elfman then attack Jackpot, but the Dark Mage avoids their attacks with his slot magic. Lucy then says that they need to rely on teamwork work. Natsu, along with the recently summoned Cancer and Elfman, attacks Jackpot, only for their efforts to miserably fail. The fight goes on, with Natsu not being able to get along with Elfman or Lucy's Celestial Spirit, as he is unable to, at the very least, strike Jackpot. However, the fairy tale mages do not give up, as Lucy summons Aquarius when it starts raining. The Celestial Spirit attempts to get rid of Jackpot in a unified effort with Natsu and Elfman, only for their plan to backfire, which causes discord between the Spirit and the mages. Natsu yells at Jackpot frustrated as he has not been able to strike his opponent. Lucy thinks that somehow Kana's abilities backfired, however Natsu once again charges at his opponent, ignoring the Celestial Spirit Mage. He attacks in a combined effort with Elfman and Loki, but fails to land a hit. However, Natsu does not give up despite his numerous failed attempts, and claims that he could do this all day should he must. Lucy agrees, saying that Fairy Tail will defeat Jackpot despite their bad chemistry. While fighting Jackpot, Natsu witnesses some of Fiore's guards going to the nearby church, discussing the true intent of the reborn Arashion Seiz. Meanwhile, Laki and Gildarts find the real Michelle Lobster and try to communicate with Natsu's team using Warren's telepathy, but fail, as Elfman has been knocked out and cannot hear them. Natsu once again tries to attack Jackpot and fails. Jackpot suddenly declares that he's been having so much fun that he forgot about his important mission before dismissing his battle with Natsu and approaching the guards of the church. He then activates Bomb Drop Bonus, destroying the church, leaving Natsu and Lucy to wonder why he did such a thing. Byro, enraged, interrogates Jackpot regarding his prior action, but Jackpot states that it's none of Byro's business, and the reborn Arashion says Mage tells Byro to finish the mission. They're soon interrupted by Natsu, who attempts to hit Jackpot one more time. Jackpot, in response, activates his lightning bonus, but Byro nullifies the spell, allowing Natsu to finally hit Jackpot. After landing his first strike, Natsu follows up with a flurry of Fire Dragon Slayer magic spells, first destroying the slot machine magic, and then Jackpot himself. Soon after that, Natsu witnesses the sky turning black and a floating giant machine, which is in fact the Infinity Clock, attaching its chains to the ground. Then, much to the shock of Natsu and Lucy, Clodoa jumps out of Jackpot's costume. After Natsu and Lucy point out that the reborn Arashion says is still one member short, Clodoa asks Michelle to abandon her disguise and reveal her true self. Although Natsu and Lucy express their disbelief towards Clodoa's words, they witness, much to their shock and despair, Michelle transforming into Imitatia, the reborn Arashion Seiz's seventh member. Imitatia then explains to Lucy that she was a victim of the reborn Arashion Seiz's plot to awaken the Infinity Clock, but Lucy, refusing to accept reality, attempts to touch Imitatia's hand, only to be forced back by Natsu, who is upset with Imitatia. Soon afterwards, Natsu and Imitatia engage in combat, but Natsu, being asked by Lucy to not attack the other woman, is ambushed and knocked unconscious. Clodoa and Imitatia then command Byro, using the Archbishop's Crest to capture Lucy, and Clodoa also tells him to dispose of Natsu. However, Imitatia declares that he will be of more use alive, and is thus transferred to Zentopia's prisons. Some time later, Natsu regains consciousness, only to find himself trapped in a cell alongside the Jigglebutt gang. After remembering what happened before he fainted, Natsu demands to know where Lucy is, and tries to break out of his cell. However, the Jigglebutt gang inform him that magic is useless inside the cell. They then stop Natsu from wasting his energy, and begin 
begin to formulate a plan for escape. Natsu then proceeds to ask the gang how they ended up in prison, and they tell him about the conversation they overheard regarding the Archbishop before being captured. After that, the Jigglebutt gang think that they will probably never be let out of the cell, should LaPointe ever learn that they overheard such an important conversation. However, Natsu cheers them up, reminding them that true evil never gives up, and persuades them to help him escape. The Jigglebutt gang then agree to help Natsu and combine their skills in an effort to create fire inside the cell. Although they fail on the first attempt, thanks to Natsu's encouragement, they manage to create fire on their second try. Natsu screams for help, and once the guards arrive, he knocks them out and escapes, with the Jigglebutt gang in tow. Heading towards Lucy, Natsu sees Coco in a cell, where she asks him to set her free so that she can come with him. Natsu runs through the Zentopia church with Coco. While running, they encounter the Jigglebutt gang again, who appear to have returned to their evil ways. Shortly after their re-encounter, Gutman Kubrick arrives, and he defeats the Jigglebutt gang. Gutman then focuses his attention on Natsu and Coco. They engage in a brief skirmish with him, but are at a severe disadvantage due to the latter's rupture magic. Luckily, Natsu and Coco are saved by Mary Hughes, who plans to take on Gutman herself while the two find the Archbishop. With this in mind, Natsu heads to the Archbishop's room with Coco, where they discover Gildarts and Laki confronting Lapointe. Natsu notices that the Cardinal smells just like Zero. The nostalgic memory of the evil entity enrages Natsu, and he tries to fight the evil entity, Gildarts into intervenes and delivers the final blow in his stead. Later, the fairy tale mages who arrived on Christina reunite with Gildarts, Natsu, and Laki, only to witness a defeated Lapointe revealing his ultimate goal shortly before fading away. Byro is determined to find and dispose of Lucy along with the other Legion members. Natsu tries to stop him, but is easily overpowered by Byro's strength. Gildarts once again intervenes, declaring that he and Byro have a score to settle, despite Natsu's willingness to fight in his place, and orders the others to hurry and find Lucy. They divide themselves into three teams, with Natsu's team being the one in charge of finding Lucy. Coco leads the group, which consists of Natsu, Grey, Urza, Elfman, and Gajil, to the Infinity Castle. Along the way, Urza decides to battle Cobra, Grey fights Angel, and Gajil takes on Midnight, much to Natsu's frustration. Elfman convinces an unwilling Natsu to move on, and so the two fairy tale mages with Coco by their side continue their way to the core of the Infinity Clock. Finally, by picking up Imitatia's scent, Natsu, Coco, and Elfman find Lucy. However, Imitatia declares that she won't let anyone so much as go near Lucy, and the Reborn Oration says members move to confront the three mages, leaving Lucy to watch. Natsu then says that he and Elfman should fight Imitatia, leaving Coco to rescue Lucy. Natsu and Elfman begin their battle against her, however the Dark Mage easily maneuvers through their attacks, proving herself to be a difficult opponent. She states that pain and emotions cannot affect her, but her words are challenged by Natsu, who says that people with confidence have a bright look in their eyes, but hers is full of hesitance. Defending herself from this remark, Imitatia resumes her battle with Natsu and Elfman, who are now accompanied by Coco, as she was unsuccessful at saving Lucy. Lucy's body is then completely absorbed into the Infinity Clock. As Lucy is being consumed by the Infinity Clock and her will is lost, Natsu tells her to get a hold of herself. When Imitatia says that she will be with Lucy forever, Natsu tells her that she should also consider Lucy's feelings. However, Midnight fuels Imitatia with anger and determination, and she attacks Natsu, who is saved by Romeo. Although the young mage is able to get through to her at first, Imitatia attacks and defeats him, enraging Natsu, who swears he will defeat her and save Lucy. Despite promising to defeat her, Natsu continues to struggle against Imitatia, who binds him with vines produced from her shield. The two stop fighting for a brief moment as Samuel appears, intent on killing Lucy. But after the latter's safety is secured, they resume their fight. Imitatia overpowers Natsu, despite the latter's efforts, and he falls to the ground once more, being told by Midnight that Lucy cannot be saved. Imitatia then realizes that she's been used and rushes to save Lucy, but Natsu watches as Midnight returns her to her doll form, stepping on and laughing at her. Natsu then rises and punches Midnight, declaring that he'll make it so he'll never laugh at another's pain ever again. Natsu begins his fierce fight against Midnight, and although he is overpowered at first, he shouts for Lucy to hang in there until he's finished. As Natsu taunts Midnight during their fight, the latter reveals that after the sacrifice he made, he is now as powerful as his father, before unleashing his father's ultimate spell, Genesis Zero. Natsu is engulfed in the darkness of the spell, but refuses to give up, and tries to muster the power to break free, swearing to avenge Imitatia's loss and Lucy's tears. Lucy then momentarily gains control of the Infinity Clock and redirects Real Nightmare at midnight, allowing Natsu to break free. As he returns, Natsu claims that he heard Lucy's voice. The fierce fight between the two mages continues, as Midnight explains that the more feelings a mage throws away, the more powerful they get. When Natsu asks his enemy what he sacrificed, Midnight confesses that he sacrificed the future he would have shared with his father in order to attain ultimate power. Natsu, however, mocks his opponent, telling him he cannot sacrifice something he does not have. Soon thereafter, Natsu strikes Midnight one final time, claiming that he was fighting a losing battle, as he could never win against the power of Felix. At first, seeing that Lucy hadn't returned, even after all the engraved seals had disappeared, Natsu becomes sad, but he soon hears her voice resounding through the clock tower, thus concluding that she has fully merged with the Infinity Clock. 
When Natsu learns that Lucy can only return if she controls the clock, breaks it into its original pieces, and sends them back to Earth, he questions if it's the only choice they have left. But Lucy tells him that she will do it because she's used to taking risks. Natsu falls unconscious and next finds himself on Kanaloa, wondering about Lucy's fate. When he sees her falling from the sky, he runs to her aid and catches her at the last second, saving her from impact. After the events around the Infinity Clock end, Legion Corps comes out to the guild to apologize and say goodbye to Natsu and the others. They then head off on their lifelong mission to find the pieces of the Infinity Clock scattered around the world. Grand Magic Games Arc Back at the guild, Natsu is informed that since their disappearance, Fairytale became the weakest guild in Fiore, and that a guild called Sabretooth has risen to the top. Unlike his guildmates who are disheartened by this fact, Natsu expresses his enthusiasm at being able to fight their way back to the top. Sometime later, Natsu and Max get into a friendly battle. Max, surprisingly, maintains the upper hand against Natsu, until Natsu becomes angry at his weakness and enters Lightning Fire Dragon mode, attacking Max with Lightning Fire Dragon's roar, destroying much of the surrounding area. Max then collapses, admitting defeat, claiming that something like that could have killed him. Natsu then laughs, asking for his next opponent, but collapses from exhaustion. Natsu and Lucy, accompanied by Grey, Wendy, Happy, and Carla, ventured to Paul Rutskia's house in the forest, seeking to increase the magic power reserves, but to their dismay, she demands that they leave. When they don't, Parluskia comes out of her house once more and begins attacking them with a broom, prompting them to run away. After running away, Natsu and the others collapse from exhaustion, and Natsu listens in shock as Wendy states that Paul Rutskia has the exact same scent and voice as her foster mother, the Sky Dragon Grandini. Natsu then asks Wendy if she's sure about what she thinks, to which the Sky Dragon Slayer says that she isn't sure. Natsu then resolves to go back and see Paul Rutskia, but the woman appears behind him as Natsu and Wendy discuss the gentleness of their respective foster parents. Paul Rutskia then reveals that she is Grandini's Adolas counterpart, and that she fell through an anima when she was younger. Natsu then asks if Igneal and Metallicana are in Earthland as humans, to which Paul Ryuskia replies that she doesn't know. Natsu then watches as she gives Wendy Grandini's instructions on how to perform two secret arts distinctive to the Sky Dragon Slayer, before turning around to leave. Later, they head back to the guild, where Romeo informs Natsu that during their seven-year absence, they created a tournament to find the strongest guild in Fiore, the Grand Magic Game. Natsu, unlike his guildmates, is excited by the prospect, and Makarov declares that they'll participate upon hearing that the prize is 30 million jewel. Romeo then tells Natsu that the games are in three months, and the Fire Dragon Slayer states that three months gives them plenty of time to get stronger. Natsu, however, becomes disappointed when he hears that the games aren't solely about battle. Everyone who is a member of the Team Tenro then sets off to train, with Natsu, Lucy, Grey, Juvia, Urza, Levi, Happy, and Carla, along with Jet and Droy, decided to train at a beach. Natsu, however, on the first day, competes with Grey in many regards, before becoming tired and going to sleep. That afternoon, Natsu begins his training, in which he starts out with weighted running. Later that night, Natsu, accompanied by the other guys, attempts to peek on the women while they're bathing, but their plans are foiled when Urza pierces the wood they were peeking through with knives. Though remaining undiscovered, Natsu, with his forehead hurt, states that he could have been killed. On the second day of their training, Virgo appears, claiming that the Celestial Spirit world is in danger and that the Celestial Spirit King requires their assistance. The group, sans Jet and Droy, are then sent to the Celestial Spirit world, having been dressed in clothing originating from the realm, and find out that rather than there being danger, the Celestial Spirit King, along with Lucy's spirits, have planned a party to celebrate their return from Tenro Island, much to Natsu's delight. After a whole day of celebration, Virgo informs the group that, much to their displeasure, one day in the Celestial Spirit world is equal to nearly three months in the human world. Still Still depressed about the loss of their entire training time, the group receives a message via Carrier Pigeon, telling them to come to the suspension bridge deep in the West Woods. When the group arrives, the broken bridge is restored and they cross it. Deeper in the woods, Natsu and the others are stopped by three mysterious figures, who, much to Natsu's shock, reveal themselves to be Jellal, Ultir, and Meredith. Natsu then listens to the three explain what had happened to them during their seven-year absence, and the fact that they created a guild, Crime Sorcier, and that their goal is to destroy Zeref and every dark guild. Crime Sorcier then asks for Natsu and the others to locate a mysterious magic source that they felt every year at the Grand Magic Games. Altir then states, as compensation, she'll grant them a boost in magic power. And although everyone around him cheers, Natsu gleefully states that he doesn't understand. Natsu then hugs Altir, thanking her and calling her a real woman, to which he responds that she's always been a woman. Later, after Altir releases Natsu's second origin, Natsu writhes around on the ground, screaming in pain. After training, Natsu and the others arrive in Crocus, where they, after encountering several people who pick on their guild, discuss the rules that the Grand Magic Games contestants have to abide by, and that the games are different every year before separating. 
while looking around Natsu encounters Sting Eucliff and Rogue Chini, the twin dragons of Sabretooth who mock Natsu for being a dragon slayer that couldn't slay a dragon. They then declare that they are true dragon slayers as they killed the dragons who raised them, angering Natsu. Angry at hearing this, Natsu returns to the Honeybone Hotel and is scolded by Urza for being late, but they're interrupted when Lisana and Elfman walk in. Their meeting is cut short when it's announced that the preliminaries for the games are about to begin. They're informed that they must be one of the first eight teams to arrive at the arena, the Domus Flau, in order to be in the games. Also, all the team members must arrive at the same time. Natsu and the others are worried because Wendy is nowhere to be seen, but Elfman decides to take her place and they set off to take place in the Sky Labyrinth. By defeating other guilds and stealing their maps, Natsu and the others are able to reach the Domus Flau, thereby qualifying for the games. However, they're informed that they arrived in last place. Natsu and the others change into their team uniforms before entering to see who placed ahead of them. As the teams are introduced, they learn that Raventail has entered the games and are angry when they learn that these are the ones who injured Wendy and Carla, who were the night before knocked out, lying in the street. He is also shocked to learn that there is a second team from Fairy Tail in the running, consisting of Gajil, Mira Jane, Laxus Dreyer, Juvia, and Jellal, who is disguised as his Idola's counterpart, Mystigin. When Natsu discovers them, he yells out at them, angry that he has no intention of losing, even to his own guildmates. Everyone agrees, and after they hear the rules for the first event of the games, they choose Grey to participate on their behalf. When Grey loses the event and the crowd mocks Fairy Tail, Natsu yells at the crowd for laughing at Fairy Tail, getting booed in the process. During Lucy's battle against Flare Corona, Natsu hears Asuka Connell's name come up in the conversation, and he rushes to find the young girl. Natsu notices that Flare's hair is nearby and that she is using the girl as a hostage. Natsu destroys the hair and tells Lucy to finish her fight. However, Lucy is ultimately defeated due to Obra sabotaging the match, prompting Natsu to go console his teammate, calling her amazing and promising that they'll soon turn the tide. After making sure that Lucy was alright, Natsu returns to his team and watches the rest of the matches with interest. When Jellal is defeated, Natsu is left shocked and confused. At the end of the first day, Natsu and his guildmates celebrate their defeat, saying that before long they'll be the strongest guild in Fiore. Natsu then gets into a brawl with his guildmates, easily beating Max. After Bacchus introduces himself, Natsu is surprised to hear that the Quattro Cerberus Mage fought on equal terms with Urza seven years ago. In spite of his team's protests, Natsu decides to participate in the second day's event, despite it being named Chariot. Natsu, however, has difficulty in the event as it involves vehicular motion, warranting him to succumb to motion sickness. Natsu isn't beside himself, however, as Gajil and Sting are also affected by the motion of the chariots. The three dragon slayers are left behind as the other participants race toward the front. As the others finish, Natsu, Gajil, and Sting are ridiculed by the audience. Sting decides to give up, but Natsu and Gajil are determined to finish the race. Natsu, wanting to win for his friends who were waiting for them in the last seven years, finishes the race in sixth place, earning his team two points. After the event, Natsu rests up with Wendy, and notices that she, Carla, and Paul Ruskia are missing when he wakes up, noticing that the scent of an unfamiliar person is in the room. Natsu follows his nose and catches up to a group of masked men who have grabbed the three. Natsu immediately pursues the group, fighting his way through the few that try to halt him. He eventually defeats the mages and saves his fellow guildmates. When the questioned mages reveal that they're working for Raventail, Natsu becomes incredibly angered, for once again, Raventail has threatened his guild. After the second day of the games ends, Natsu, Lucy, Happy, and Carla walk back to their lodging. There, Natsu and the others see Yukina Agria waiting for them out front. Natsu is skeptical at first, wondering as to why a mage from a rival guild would visit them, thinking that she's arrived to make fun of them like the rest of Sabretooth had. After listening to Yukino's conversation with Lucy, Natsu runs after her when she leaves, asking her to forgive him for being rude. Upon hearing his kind words, Yukino breaks down in a flurry of tears, confiding in Natsu the fact that she was excommunicated from Sabretooth after her loss to Kagura Mikazuchi. After hearing how Yukino was humiliatingly forced to remove her clothes and guild mark in front of her guildmates, Natsu becomes enraged. He later storms into the Sabretooth lodgings, attacking everyone in sight, demanding to meet Sabretooth's guildmaster, Giemma, who boldly steps out to face him. Natsu challenges Giemma and wishes to fight him, but when Giemma claims to not understand Natsu's motives, Natsu rushes at the guildmaster. Originally thinking Natsu to be unworthy of his time, Giemma sends another one of his mages, Dobengal, to fight, but Natsu quickly takes the man down. Sting then chooses to step forward and take on the intruder, but Giemma stops him and takes Natsu's hit instead. The guildmaster easily counters Natsu's first hit, but is then hit by a barrage of attacks from a smaller opponent. Natsu then uses a powerful spell, which is diffused by the sudden appearance of Minerva, albeit destroying a large portion of the Sabretooth lodgings. Minerva asks Natsu to cease his attack so they might all save face in exchange for the unharmed return of Happy, who she had captured prior to entering the lodgings. Natsu accepts and leaves, but not before telling Sabretooth that Fairy Tail won't lose to their guild and that they should treasure their comrades. During the third day of the games, during Laxus's battle, Natsu is shocked to witness the S-Class mage being beaten by his opponent, Alexei. 
However, when the battle he witnesses is revealed to be an illusion, Natsu is left even more stunned than he was beforehand. Natsu then chides Laxus, claiming that he was simply showing off when he discovers that the S-Class Mage had fought and defeated the entirety of Team Raventail. Natsu then wishes Wendy good luck in her battle with Sharia Blendy. As Wendy and Sharia engage in battle, Natsu is seen to be surprised that Sharia is the Sky God Slayer. Later, Natsu is excited when Wendy uses her Shattering Light Sky Drill, and as the spell hits Sharia, Natsu along with his teammates celebrates Wendy's triumph. However, Natsu is utterly dumbfounded after seeing Sharia stand, uninjured and smiling after being hit by a spell of that magnitude. As the battle between Wendy and Sharia continues, Natsu is seen to be very worried for his guildmate, crying out Wendy's name. However, seeing Wendy's determination and amazing strategy, Natsu is impressed with her strength. After the fight ends in a draw, Natsu is seen to be very excited and pleased with the result of the fight. After the battles of the third day, Natsu and the rest of Fairy Tail decide to visit Ryazetsu Land, attempting to relax after the day's events. After arriving, Natsu sees a train riding over water and immediately jumps on, forgetting about his motion sickness which soon afflicts him. Afterwards, he begins to run around, accompanied by Ichiya, and is warned that what they are doing is dangerous. Ichiya then trips, taking Natsu down with him. Natsu then goes flying directly towards Grey and Lion, knocking the two backwards and down the love slide. While Grey and Lion are going down the slide, they both freeze the slide and pool. Seeing this, Natsu attempts to thaw the ice by using his Fire Dragon Slayer magic, which instead of producing the desired result, destroys Ryuzetsu Land in a large explosion. With his guildmates and many others lying around him, dazed and hurt, Natsu laughs at his apparent success. Later, he heads to a bar with his guildmates to celebrate. While there, despite being warned on how dangerous it is, Natsu begins barrel surfing with Happy and involves several other of his guildmates in the activity. On the fourth day of the Grand Magic Games, Natsu is seen cheering on Lucy as she participates in naval battle. As only Lucy and Minerva are left, Minerva starts brutalizing Lucy, prompting Natsu to scream out in worry. As Minerva starts torturing Lucy, Natsu yells out for her to stop. Natsu, along with Grey and Urza, stand appalled as Minerva holds Lucy by the throat, dangling her outside the naval battle arena. As Minerva drops Lucy, Natsu and Grey rush out of the stands and successfully catch her. Natsu looks at Minerva, infuriated, and the majority of Team Sabretooth step in front of Minerva, confronting him, Urza, and Grey. Natsu and Grey both resolve to attack Sabretooth but are stopped by Urza. After Urza threatens Sabretooth, Natsu along with the other members of Team Fairytale A and eventually Team Fairytale B visit Lucy in the infirmary. Makarov arrives and announces that the administrators have told them to join both teams together, leaving Natsu and the others shocked. Natsu says that he will avenge Lucy and won't forgive Sabretooth for laughing at her. Natsu along with Grey, Gajil, Urza, and Laxus become part of the newly reorganized Team Fairytale. Arriving in the Domus Fla with his new teammates, Natsu and Gajil glare at Sting and Rogue, and Natsu states he's all fired up. Later, a tag battle between Team Blue Pegasus and Team Quattro Puppy is announced. Ichia and the Rabbit will face Bacchus and Rocker. Natsu is utterly shocked to see that the Rabbit is in fact Nichia, who was part of Extalia. After Ichia wins his 2-on-1 match due to Nichia being knocked out at the very start, Natsu is surprised and impressed by Ichia's power. After the tag battle between Team Mermaid Heel and Team Lamia Scale results in a draw, Team Fairy Tail and Team Sabretooth's battle begins. A determined Natsu and Gajil enter the Domus Flau, prepared for their battle against Sting and Rogue. Natsu and Gajil make the first move, quickly punching away their respective opponents, surprising the audience. Sting attacks Natsu with his White Dragon's roar, and Rogue uses Shadow Dragon's slash against Gajil. He easily deflects the attack with his Iron Dragon's sword and sends Rogue flying. Running towards Sting, Natsu grabs Rogue and hits both of them with Fire Dragon's wing attack. Natsu questions if Sting and Rogue defeated dragons with their level of strength. Sting corrects Natsu, saying that they killed their dragon foster parents, as the twin dragons grant themselves a boost in power by entering White Drive and Shadow Drive, respectively. The twin dragons quickly attack, resulting in Natsu and Gajil being put on the defensive. Sting tells Natsu that he looked up to the Fire Dragon Slayer and that he's always dreamed of surpassing him. Sting then attacks Natsu with White Dragon's claw, rendering him immobile. Natsu smiles as Sting rushes in to attack and punches him in the face. The latter is confused as to how Natsu was able to move and sees that Natsu burned the immobilizing stigma away. Sting then readies his Dragon Slayer's secret art, Holy Nova, and attacks Natsu, resulting in a huge explosion. Through the dust and debris, Natsu reveals to have stopped the attack barehanded, shocking not only Sting but the entire audience. Natsu and Gajil together continue to pressure the twin dragons. When Fairy Tail's victory becomes apparent, Natsu watches in disbelief as Sting and Rogue rise, entering Dragon Force. Natsu stands and awaits the newly powered up Dragon Slayer's attacks. However, before the two can advance, Sting states that he can defeat Natsu and Gajil alone and moves to do so. 
Gajil comments that Sting is underestimating them, but Natsu is unsure about this, stating that he can sense Sting's strength, shortly before being attacked by the Sabretooth Mage. He and Gajil try to combine their attacks, but Sting is able to both dodge and respond with great speed. Eventually, with his White Dragon's holy breath, Sting destroys the Domus Flau and takes their battle underground. Despite Sting's immense strength, Natsu refuses to give up and tries to fight back, but with his mighty Holy Ray, Natsu and Gajil are left hopeless. Before Mato can declare the fight to be over, both Natsu and Gajil stand up, commenting on Sting's power, but also state that they've memorized all of Sting's particularities, getting into a fight over the position of Sting's foot when he moves to make an attack. Being unable to come to a united decision, Natsu becomes annoyed with Gajil and pushes him into a nearby mining cart, sending the teammate rolling away to an unknown location. With Gajil now out of the picture, Natsu repeats Sting's earlier statement, declaring that he alone will be enough for the two mages. When Sting and Rogue become infuriated with Natsu's audacity, Natsu merely goads the two further, egging them on to engage him. Sting angrily rushes at Natsu, though he deflects his attacks with calm precision, stating he will fight for the friends they made fun of. As Rogue also joins the fray by releasing his Shadow Dragon's roar, Natsu counters with his own Dragon's roar, completely enveloping Rogue in flames. The two repeatedly attack, although every effort is in vain. Finally, Sting and Rogue decide to perform a unison raid. Combining their white and shadow dragon slayer magic, the two twin dragons fire the destructive spell at Natsu. However, Natsu stands his ground and counters with his crimson lotus exploding flame blade, which not only destroys their unison raid, but defeats Sting and Rogue. Having won and moved his team into first place, Natsu stands with his arms raised in victory as the crowd cheers. Afterwards, he walks over to Sting and Rogue, smiling at them saying that they should fight again. Later, Natsu and a few of his other guildmates are taken underground the Domus Flau by Gajil, not knowing what to expect. When he and the others arrive at the designated location, they discover they've come across a dragon graveyard. As they wander around, he and Gajil come to the conclusion that these dragons are much too old to be the dragons they knew. Then, out of the blue, Wendy mentions the spell Milky Way. The group soon comes to the decision that this spell could possibly be used to learn information about what happened to the deceased dragons, and maybe about the Dragon Slayer's foster parents. As Wendy begins drawing the magic circle needed to invoke the spell, Natsu asks what she's doing, to which he's told by Carla that Wendy's explained it. Natsu watches as the area lights up and the spell begins to work, and a large dragon is summoned before expressing his shock at meeting it. The dragon introduces himself as Zirconis and asks if Wendy was the one who summoned him, stating his intention to eat her. Natsu jumps to her defense, at which point Zirconis states that he was joking, noting that spirits cannot touch corporeal objects. Natsu listens as Zirconis explains the history of the dragons and how they originally thought of humans as being nothing more than food, at which point he irritates Zirconis by pointing out that technically Zirconis is talking to his food. The revelation of the history of Dragon Slayer magic and how it can affect the Dragon Slayers themselves shocks Natsu. Revealing that Acnologia was once human, Zirconis disappears, much to Natsu's dismay, as he asks if he too will become a dragon because of his magic. Arcadios and Yukino then arrive in the graveyard, and Arcadios replies that Natsu becoming a dragon is impossible, as Acnologia became one with Zeref's aid. Natsu then listens as Arcadios states that if they kill Zeref, then they may have a chance at defeating Acnologia. Natsu, not understanding Arcadios' motives, interrupts him as he begins to explain his plan to stop both Zeref before he became immortal, and therefore Acnologia as well, which only results in Arcadios praising Natsu for the marvelous battle he gave the audience this afternoon, much to Natsu's displeasure. Natsu then closes in and asks him why celestial spirit mages are involved in his plan, threatening him to say what he came to say. Natsu gets even more annoyed when Arcadio simply turns away and tells him to follow him. They later arrive at Mercurius, where the king lives, and are led to a room containing an impressive machine that will be used for the Eclipse plan. Arcadios then explains that the true purpose of the Grand Magic Games is to steal magic from the mages and convert it into fuel for the gate, and that their plan will be put into motion on July 7th. However, their conversation is disrupted by Darton, who orders Lucy and Yukino, as well as Arcadios, to be put under arrest. Natsu angrily prepares to attack Darton, stating that Lucy will not be involved, but his magic power is sapped away by the Eclipse Gate, as he is too close in proximity. Natsu then falls to the floor, helpless, as Lucy and Yukino are arrested. Back at their lodgings, Natsu has been tied up so as to prevent him from acting recklessly and listens as they recount the tale of Lucy's arrest. Natsu tries to break free, saying he wants to save Lucy, angered by everyone's calm attitude. After finally breaking free, Makarov hits Natsu, telling him to be quiet and declares that they've taken away one of their family, and that they all feel the same as he does. The next day, Natsu, along with Wendy, Mira Jane, Carla, Panther Lily, and Happy, are sent using the Grand Magic game as cover to rescue Lucy. While heading to Mercurius, Natsu responds to Mira Jane's noticing of the start of the final day, stating that it's the perfect opportunity. 
In an attempt to enter the castle, the mages don disguises as per Happy's idea, with Natsu putting on a bear costume and commenting on Mira Jane's, though the idea is ultimately rejected. Soon after, Natsu and Wendy are captured by a palace guard and brought to be placed in the dungeon. However, it's revealed that the guard is a disguised Mira Jane and that the capture is a part of their plan to sneak in and rescue Lucy. Eventually, Natsu and the others find Lucy and Yukino's cell. Natsu destroys the door, freeing the two. While standing outside the cell, a pitfall activates, sending Natsu and his group below. After landing, Natsu and the others find themselves in an underground cavern known as Abyss Palace, and Natsu spends some time looking for a way out. Natsu gets agitated when he's informed by Happy and Carla that there seems to be no exit, as they, the hunters, become the hunted. Natsu then replies to Lucy's concern about the Grand Magic Games, stating that Juvia took his spot as all he wanted was to rescue her. Seconds later, Carla comes back to the area where the group is located, telling them that she found a passage. After Natsu and the others squeeze their way through and reach the other side of the passage, they see a heavily wounded Arcadios lying on the ground, advising them to run. However, before they're able to move, they're ambushed by a faint silhouette towering over them all. Natsu grabs Arcadios and saves him from the impact of the attack, but is quickly attacked again by another person with a flag. More and more people begin to appear and attack them, not allowing them a chance to counterattack. Natsu looks up to see a group of five individuals standing before him, claiming to be called the Garo Knights, the most powerful executioners in Fiore. Natsu scoffs at the appearance of the executioners, Uosuke in particular, but Arcadios warns the mages that the magic of the knights is specialized for killing. Natsu, however, is not disturbed in the least. Rather, Natsu looks forward to the prospect of a fight, stating that the Garo Knights will be their solution to finding a way out. Kamika initiates the assault with Paper Blizzard Red Dance, and Natsu tries to burn the paper only to discover that it's impervious to flames. Natsu is then saved by a quick-thinking Wendy who uses her Sky Dragon's roar to scatter the paper. As the assault continues, Cosmos uses Grow Flow, summoning a gigantic flower to consume the group, whilst Kamika paralyzes everyone with another spell. Managing to regain control of their bodies, again thanks to Wendy, Natsu, Panther Lily, and Mira Jane manage to destroy the huge plant, but consequently the destruction of the plant results in an explosion which separates the group. Waking up alone, Natsu, annoyed that he's lost Lucy, is confronted by one of the knights and becomes angry when the Garo Knight claims that all of his friends will soon be dead. Continuing his speech, the masked Garo Knight states that Natsu should repent for his sins, though Natsu comments on not remembering having made any in the first place. With the masked man obviously not in any position to let him leave, Natsu readies himself, preparing to battle the man to get through and find the others. Before he can strike, though, the armored Garo Knight draws the two humongous scythes on his back, quickly swiping them at Natsu's neck, nearly decapitating him. Not giving Natsu any openings, the knight quickly strikes again, forcing Natsu into a nearby wall as the mage struggles to evade the attacks. Jumping off the wall to avoid yet another slash from the man's weapons, Natsu notes that the man's swipes are repetitive, with the Garo Knight confirming this, stating that he only aims for the necks of his opponents, leading Natsu to comment on the troublesome nature of his opponent's fighting style. A while later, Natsu succeeds in catching one of the masked man's scythes, destroying the blade, asking if he can now send him flying. Delivering a punch to the head, Natsu knocks the Garo Knight back before following up with his fire dragon's iron fist, sending him crashing through the wall. The knight asks Natsu if he realizes that by attacking him he's made the kingdom his enemy, to which Natsu retorts that he doesn't care, claiming that he'll make anyone his enemy if they harm Fairy Tail. With one final strike, Natsu sends the knight through the final set of walls, resulting in the simultaneous collision of all five Garo Knights. Now reunited with the rest of the rescue team, Natsu tells the knight to reveal the location of the exit, lest they be executed by them. Later, the mages wander around the labyrinth looking for the exit with Natsu questioning whether they're heading the right way. As the others talk about meeting the princess as Arcadios wanted, Natsu gets angry over the fact that the princess was the one who threw them in Abyss Palace. Suddenly, the door in front opens and Natsu rolls on the floor towards it, coming close to a mysterious woman wearing a hood. Looking up, Natsu asks her who she is. The woman begins to shake and sob, wiping her tears away as she asks for Natsu to lend her his strength. As Natsu begins to recognize the voice of the woman, she pulls back her hood to reveal her face, being none other than Lucy. Seeing a person with the exact same face as his friend next to him, Natsu can only cry out in shock. As Natsu expresses his surprise, the woman reveals that she's from the future, shocking him further. As she begins to give a cryptic warning about the future of the country, she suddenly faints, resulting in Natsu and the others checking on her. Deciding that they can't leave this Lucy behind, Natsu picks her up and states that they'll take her with them. A while later, Natsu is annoyed that they got lost while looking for an exit. He thinks that if they fight the soldiers, it'll be much faster and more efficient, but Carla begs to differ, for many of them are wounded. 
Suddenly, the Lucy from the future stirs, and everyone immediately turns to her. When she asks where they are, Natsu replies that he doesn't know. She recalls being captured by the army during her time, and having their magic drained by the Eclipse Gate as they pass by the area. Natsu exclaims that it was foolish of them to do that, to which she replies that they were just unlucky. When Wendy asks future Lucy why she came back to the past, she says that it was to change the worst possible future. Hearing her, Natsu is extremely shocked to hear that 10,000 dragons will attack Fiore, causing him to grab weaponry to fight, much to everyone's surprise. As Lucy wonders if anyone will believe the story, Natsu asks if it's a lie, and upon hearing that she's referring to credibility, tells her that they wouldn't doubt her. Once Carla asks future Lucy about what happens to them when the dragons attack, Natsu is eager to hear the answer, which comes in the form of silence. Future Lucy explains that she traveled to the past after the dragons attack, and tells the group to travel underground and meet Jellal, who should be coming up with a strategy. As she apologizes for not knowing what to do, Natsu thanks her for the information and tells her he will protect the future. Running through the underground, Natsu asks future Lucy how she knows the area, to which she states that she learned it. Suddenly, the group is approached by the royal army, but Natsu states that as long as they have their magic, they can't be captured. Declaring that the matter will be settled, Natsu begins attacking. While fighting, Natsu tosses one army member into the rest, knocking them back. However, he's suddenly attacked from behind by a member of the anti-magic unit. Though surprised, Natsu is unhurt, stating his specialty in magic helps him against such attacks. As even more army members arrive, Natsu continues fighting, dispatching them with ease. However, the sudden arrival of the Gero Knights angers Natsu, who curses the complication of the mission. Alongside Loki, Natsu keeps on fighting the Gero Knights and the royal army of Fiore. As his group fights on, Natsu becomes continuously mad at the Gero Knights, threatening to execute them altogether. Before he has a chance to do so, a fast-moving shadow flies towards the royal army, sucking them down as it passes through, whilst leaving Natsu and his friends unharmed. As the shadow doubles back and begins to rise and take on a human form, Natsu stands on guard, demanding that the figure reveal their identity. He's shocked when the person does just that, stepping forward and introducing himself as Rogue Cheney. Natsu stands in shock, wondering if the figure before him could truly be Rogue. He then proceeds to comment on how much the Shadow Dragon Slayer has changed in appearance, before Carla asks why he's returned to the past. Future Rogue tells Natsu and the others that he came back in time to utilize the second feature of the Eclipse Gate, the Eclipse Cannon. Natsu and his friends are relieved to hear the good news. However, Future Rogue explains that in seven years, less than 10% of humanity remains, and dragons have conquered the world. Natsu and his friends flinch in fear as Future Rogue continues to talk about the current predicament. Natsu nervously tells him that they should just go and open the gate now, but Future Rogue then reveals that somebody closed the gate on the day that the dragons attacked, dooming them all. He tells them that he has returned to the past to kill the one responsible, and that's the only way to stop the inevitable destiny. Natsu, however, is confused and asks Future Rogue to tell them who this person is. Future Rogue then screams that it was Lucy and sends a blade of shadows towards her. Natsu is left horrified as future Lucy jumps in front of her present counterpart, taking the hit. He then watches speechless as future Lucy begins to die. As future Lucy says her last goodbyes, Natsu turns his head away from the sight as his friend's eyes overflow with tears. Natsu then watches as future Rogue and Lucy argue about her actions in the future, ending with future Rogue trying to kill her again. As future Rogue prepares to attack, Natsu strikes him, sending the Shadow Dragon Slayer sliding backwards with his lightning-clad flames, stating that he won't let Lucy's future be taken away by anyone. Natsu then remembers future Lucy's last words, and as tears roll down his face, he promises to protect the future. As Rogue recovers from Natsu's sudden assault, the Fire Dragon Slayer instructs Lucy and the others to leave immediately. As they start to leave, future Rogue declares that he won't let them escape, only for Natsu to stop him once more, punching him away. As the Shadow Dragon Slayer maliciously utters Natsu's name, he sends the man flying backwards with another blazing punch. As Natsu pauses to wipe the remaining tears from his eyes, Future Rogue tells Natsu that he knew he would get in his way, and states that he's going to die at the dragon's hands, then history won't be affected. Natsu then points out that Future Rogue was never like he is now, but the Shadow Dragon Slayer states that people change over time. Blocking Future Rogue's frontal assault, Natsu states that Future Rogue stole something precious from him, and that his way of handling things is wrong. Glaring at the man from the future, Natsu states that they'll protect their future their own way. Natsu is then seen reeling from Future Rogue's subsequent attack, and states that he smells the Shadow Dragon Slayer exuding ill intent. Asking Future Rogue if he truly came to save the future, Natsu can only watch as the man maliciously grins. Following this statement, Natsu hears a noise coming from above and questions what it is, to which Future Rogue explains that they are hearing the Eclipse Gate opening. Future Rogue declares his surprise at the gate's opening given that Lucy is still alive, but states that it is a guarantee that Lucy will close the gate. 
states. Hearing this, Natsu says that Lucy would never do something that would destroy another person's future, but future rogue demands that Natsu move and sends him soaring into the air, courtesy of a large-scale Shadow Dragon Slayer magic spell. With future rogue declaring that he will kill Lucy, Natsu angrily states that he won't let him, and charges at the Shadow Dragon Slayer, entering Lightning Fire Dragon mode as he does so, surprising future rogue. Destroying much of the surrounding area, Natsu begins to strike future rogue with his lightning-enhanced flames, but before he can deliver another punch, future rogue exudes a large amount of light, blinding Natsu. As the light subsides, Natsu looks on as Future Rogue enters White Shadow Dragon mode. Before he can react, however, Future Rogue charges at Natsu and slashes his side, leaving a large cut in his wake. Future Rogue states that he now has the power of both light and shadows, and that he can bend them to his every whim, before attacking Natsu with White Shadow Dragon's rough silk. Having been pierced with light and shadows, Natsu helplessly falls to the ground, and weakly marvels at Future Rogue's power, to which Future Rogue explains that he killed Sting to attain his power, but points out that the time until his present self does so is still quite far off. Natsu then asks Future Rogue if he was always as heartless as he is now, and Future Rogue replies that he was, and that he is going to kill Natsu. Before the final blow can be dealt, however, Altir Milkovic arrives and sends Rogue scurrying away upon attacking him with her flash forward. During this instance, however, Natsu loses consciousness and Altir shouts out for him to pull himself together. Upon reaching him, Altir calls for Medity to ready the first aid, but the woman can only watch in horror as Natsu is being slowly devoured by shadows. As the dragons emerge from the Eclipse Gate rampaging above, over the tremors, Natsu is screamed at by Altir, who continues telling the Fire Dragon Slayer to pull himself together. Natsu grabs Altir's shoulder when she asks him what to do and slowly pulls himself out of the shadows, declaring he must go. Determined, Natsu reiterates his promise to future Lucy, stating that he will protect the future. Later, despite the gate's closure, seven dragons controlled by future Rogue are released to wreak havoc on Crocus and kill the Fiore mages. However, much to Rogue's surprise, he then notices Natsu standing on top of a building, glaring at him with an angry but determined expression. Natsu then proceeds to fight future Rogue along with the dragon he is riding on. During their fight, Rogue urges Natsu to look at the destroyed town, and Natsu asks Rogue what his goal is. Rogue explains to Natsu that in the future, the world is dominated by a single being, Acnologia, and that he intends to defeat it with the power of those seven dragons and become the new Dragon King. Natsu, however, defeats Rogue's dragon with a single attack and cries out that the seven dragon slayers were born for exactly this purpose, to defeat the seven dragons. When Rogue tells him that he miscalculated since there are six dragon slayers, Natsu says that he can hear the seventh one as well. With the dust from Natsu's attack subsiding, future Rogue tells him that humans are powerless against dragons, to which Natsu replies that if being able to protect everyone requires him to lose his humanity, then he'll gladly throw it away. Hearing this, by speaking the name of the dragon they're riding atop of, Mother Glare, future Rogue orders the dragon to release a myriad of eggs from its underbelly, which rain down upon the streets of Crocus. Such an action causes Natsu to look on in curiosity. Seeing the guilds below fight against the dragons, Natsu remarks that everyone is giving it their best effort, and that together they can accomplish anything they desire. Future Rogue, however, states that Natsu is completely ignorant, and that he can't comprehend the true power that dragons possess. Continuing their clash atop Mother Glare, Future Rogue tells Natsu that no matter how many times they fight, the outcome will always be the same, as he is from the future and is therefore seven years ahead of him. Future Rogue states that he is much stronger than he was during the Grand Magic Games, something which causes Natsu to exude a sense of silent frustration. However, their battle is interrupted by Lucy, who's flying through the air, nude, screaming for Natsu to help her. Lucy then crashes into Natsu, which sends the two fairy tale mages flying off Mother Glare and into the streets below. The two soon land inside a fallen bell, with Natsu confused, questioning Lucy as to why she's naked. Squirming inside the bell, their skirmish causes the bell to roll into a nearby stack of crates, leaving the two dazed. Getting up, Natsu proclaims that the legends of flying naked people were true, prompting Lucy to cover her chest, telling Natsu not to look. Natsu then states that he has no other choice and grabs Lucy's breasts, attempting to obscure them from his own view, an action which earns him a swift punch. Not understanding the situation, Natsu yells that Lucy has turned into a pervert. However, Happy explains that a dragon was the cause of Lucy's nudity. Happy then proceeds to ask Natsu if he couldn't do anything against future Rogue, to which he replies that the Shadow Dragon Slayer is exceptionally strong, and that Mother Glare is an added annoyance. In light of this explanation, Lucy asks Natsu if all dragons are violent, stating that she was almost eaten alive. Natsu, hearing this, has an epiphany and states that he's finally figured out a way to defeat the dragons. Descending from above, Natsu lands on Atlas Flame's head, devilishly grinning at his arrival to the Fire Dragon's location. He states his name and claims that he will devour Atlas's flames. Atlas, however, feeling humiliated, begins to swing his head towards every direction in an attempt to get rid of Natsu. Much to the dragon's disappointment, Natsu refuses to lose his grip and echoes his earlier statement, expressing delight at the taste of the flames. As Atlas continues to ram his body into nearby structures, Natsu tells Laxus that he will handle the dragon, and pleads for Laxus to head to the castle where Wendy and Mira Jane are fighting another. 
Unsure at first, Laxus asks Natsu if he would be able to handle the fire dragon, to which he responds affirmatively, saying that he is powering up just by eating him. Listening to Natsu, Laxus leaves the area with the Thunder God tribe and happy and heads towards Mercurius. After Laxus and the others take their leave, Atlas continues to rampage about, destroying several buildings. With Natsu continuing his assault, and with the familiar sensation of Natsu's ability to consume flames, Atlas remembers Igneal, the Fire Dragon King. Moments later, Natsu rides on Atlas's head and reaches Future Rogue's current location, expressing disgust at Future Rogue's envision, stating that the light in their hearts is something the likes of him cannot see. Atlas clashes heads with Mother Glare, the sudden disloyalty shocking Future Rogue. Natsu, grabbing onto Atlas, calls him his uncle and tells him that he's counting on him, leaving Atlas to ponder the sudden term. With a smug look on his face, Natsu watches as Future Rogue expresses his utter disbelief at Atlas having defied his dragon manipulation magic, leading the Shadow Dragon Slayer to ask Natsu what he did to the dragon. Natsu replies that they became friends, which Atlas Flame reaffirms, leaving Future Rogue even more baffled than before. Natsu then shouts for Atlas to start. The two dragons clash once more, with Natsu cheering Atlas on, telling him to circle around Mother Glare. However, Mother Glare prevents such a thing from occurring by utilizing her dragon's roar. With Atlas claiming that Mother Glare shouldn't underestimate his Hellfire, as they truly are equivalent to those from Hell, and that Natsu, his fellow fire dragon, has eaten them, Natsu jumps from atop Atlas to attack Mother Glare with an exceedingly powerful fire dragon's iron fist. Natsu then moves to directly confront Future Rogue, who has entered White Shadow Dragon mode for a third time. The two dragons continue clashing as both dragon slayers stand on top of Mother Glare, facing each other. Natsu tells Future Rogue to go back to his time and strikes him with his foot set aflame. However, Future Rogue bluntly refuses, and when Natsu questions the present Rogue's fate, Future Rogue states that they will eventually become one, much to Natsu's discontent. Future Rogue then transforms into shadows as he nears toward Natsu. He claims that with Agnolotia around, there is no future, and strikes Natsu with White Shadow Dragon's sword horn, which almost causes Natsu to fall off Mother Glare. Natsu then mentions Frosh, but Future Rogue simply states that Frosh will die a year from now and claims that if Natsu knew true despair, he wouldn't stand in his way, and begins attacking Natsu with White Shadow Dragon's rough silk. Natsu, however, declares that everyone has a right to choose their own future. Atlas Flame then assists Natsu, boosting his strength with his own flames, allowing Natsu to charge forward and hit Future Rogue and Mother Glare, causing a huge explosion. They then fall down and crush through the Eclipse Gate, successfully destroying it. The defeated Rogue is then seen lying on the ground with Natsu on top of him. Panting heavily, Natsu removes himself from Future Rogue's person and stares at the unconscious man's smoldering body. His exhaustion soon turns to bewilderment as a bright light envelops the area, a direct result of the Eclipse Gate's destruction. When Atlas returns to his own time, much like the other dragons, Natsu closes his eyes and thanks Atlas for all the help. With Future Rogue's body also glowing, signaling the start of his return to the future, Natsu tells the Shadow Dragon Slayer that his present will not grow up to become like him, something which Future Rogue denies by uttering the word shadows. He explains that the darkness within him is permanent, and that the shadows have always been coming and trying to consume him, repeatedly, adding that on the day that Frosh died, he fell into depravity, allowing the shadows to finally take hold. Natsu then tells Future Rogue that Frosh won't die, but the man from the future refutes his claim, saying that Natsu must tell the current him to protect Frosh in one year, otherwise Frosh will be killed. Such a statement leaves Natsu extremely perturbed. With Future Rogue having finally returned to his own time, Natsu is hugged from behind by a tearful Lucy. When he asks her what's wrong, she denies that anything is out of the ordinary and instead thanks him for everything he's done. A few days later, all the Grand Magic Games participants are invited to Mercurius for a banquet. Despite everyone being present, Natsu is nowhere to be found. However, just as Arcadios appears to stop the fight for Yukino and announce the king's arrival, Natsu instead appears wearing the king's attiring crown much to the shock of everyone present. As he yells out at the others to have fun, he is followed by Darton and Toma Ifiore, with the latter asking Natsu to give him his things back. Arcadios' attempts to stop him end in vain, as even the Gero Knights state that this is not something they can handle. While Natsu is rejoicing over the fact that he became the king and everyone else are his subordinates now, Lucy smiles, saying that he always crosses the line. Following this banquet, Fairy Tail makes their way back to Magnolia via horse-drawn carriage, causing Natsu to whine as his motion sickness takes hold. His moaning also earns him a remark from Grey, who states that Natsu should have listened to their suggestion and ran alongside the carriage instead of riding in it with them. Natsu then motions himself towards Grey and begins to convulse, prompting his friend to scream at him. Soon after, Natsu and Fairy Tail arrive in Magnolia where they're met with glorious applause and raucous cheers by all for winning the Grand Magic Games. Natsu himself shouts that he's finally glad to be home. With a devious look on his face, Natsu states that he has something to show the citizens and reaches into the sack, digging around for what he's looking for. Natsu then pulls out the king's royal crown, much to the shock of his friends who are dismayed at him having stolen it. Natsu, however, puts the crown back as it was not the item he was looking for. The fire dragon slayer then pulls out the trophy that Fairy Tail was awarded, to which he is applauded even more 
more raucously. Continuing to celebrate, Natsu hands Romeo the trophy and puts the young man on his shoulders, asking him to hold the shining prize higher so that everyone can see. Natsu's actions soon cease, however, when the mayor of Magnolia reveals that he and the other citizens of Magnolia have worked together to restore Fairy Tail's guild building, leaving Natsu in a state of utter joy. Eclipse Celestial Spirits Arc Natsu tags along with Yukino and Lucy when they decide to grant a wish upon each of their celestial spirits for their help during the Grand Magic Games events. When Ares wishes for a tan, Natsu uses his fire breath on her, making her wish come true. Soon, Natsu is bored and wants to go home and eat. When Natsu sees how light Lucy's punishment towards Virgo is, he offers to have a go at her himself, although Lucy immediately refuses. He then falls asleep when Capricorn starts reading poetry to the group. Natsu is later amazed at Sagittarius's archery skills and weirded out by Gemini's request. He watches the rest of the spirits declare their wishes and have it realized until Loki is summoned, with whom he discusses about the Eclipse events as well as the fight against the dragons. Natsu then complains to Loki about not hanging out at the guild anymore, but Loki sends him flying because he interrupts his flirting with Yukino. When Natsu returns for payback, he acts accidentally trips which results in him being sent flying once more. When he returns, Natsu watches Lucy do a little skit in an attempt to realize Aquarius's wish and fix her foul mood. Despite the play being terrible, Natsu is the only one to find it hilarious. Aquarius, however, is pissed at Lucy's lame effort and just washes everyone away, including Natsu. Sometime later, Natsu goes back to the guild with Lucy and Happy, only to find it empty. Mira Jane tells him that the other members of the guild are out dealing with these strange weather conditions. With the request board empty, Kinana gives the three a request to venture out to Sibelis by train, intent on seeing through the requester's desire for a celestial spirit mage to aid in their research of these strange weather phenomena occurring around the continent. Upon arriving, they learn that Sibelis does not exist and that it's just a stretch of beach. Just then, the group is attacked by a giant sea slug, and after being tossed around by the monster and witnessing Lucy be unable to summon her gold key spirits, Natsu sends the sea slug rocketing away with his fire dragon's roar. With the slug gone, Natsu, Happy, and Lucy wonder why Lucy's gold keys didn't work, and they watch as she summons Crux, who appears to be badly wounded. Before he can tell them what happened, a transformed Virgo appears and captures Crux before turning her sights on Natsu and the others. Lucy opts to deal with Virgo in Natsu's stead, but finds herself overwhelmed, and everyone becomes surprised yet again, as before long, the other nine of Lucy's gold key spirits show up with different appearances. The spirits announce that their contracts with Lucy have ended, as well as their memories of her are gone, before launching an all-out assault aimed to kill both Natsu and her. Natsu protects her, and Happy takes her away so that she's safe. However, she's quickly dispatched by the Eclipse spirit's leader, Eclipse Leo, who was angered at Natsu's consistent calling him of Loki. Natsu is, however, saved by Happy, who now carries both him and Lucy. Natsu and Lucy think about what the spirits mean about achieving their objective, perfect freedom. Back at the guild, the mages wonder about the Twelve Spirits' true goal. Fortunately, they're informed by Crux that the celestial spirit world is in chaos. After being informed by Yukino about a ritual called Liberium, Makarov sends the entire guild to search for more information, with Natsu, Lucy, Happy, Yukino, and Levi assigned to go to the Magic Library. Unexpectedly, they find the help of both Horologium and Crux. Natsu travels to the spirit world in order to find the rebelling spirits and stop them. There, he meets the Eclipse Taurus and engages with him in battle. The Dragon Slayer is then overwhelmed by the spirit's tremendous power, with all of his attacks turning effectless. He tries to remind Taurus of his previous self and his contract with Lucy, but in vain. As he proceeds to attack the Golden Bull with his Fire Dragon Sword Horn, Taurus manages to dodge the attack and Natsu falls through the endless space. By unknown means, he's sent back to Earthland, specifically to the Magic Library where the girls are fighting Virgo. The latter makes use of Natsu's unexpected arrival and flees back to the Celestial World with the Celestial Globe, the essential item for Liberium, and then regroups with their fellow spirits. As the group starts their search for Astral Spiritus, the location for Liberium, they come across the Princess Hisui and Arcadios, who reveal that they are aware of the last events in the spirit world, with the former blaming herself for it, as the rebelling of the spirits was because of the side effects of the Eclipse Gate. As Natsu reassures the princess once more, Hisui states that Natsu's words back in the aftermath of the Grand Magic Games were the reason she became determined to solve the situation by creating the Celestial Spirit Banishment Keys, which can be used to force close the Twelve Gates. Out of the blue, Pisces arrive, stealing the Twelve Keys. As the two parties engage in battle, San Pisces leads Natsu and Happy astray and continues to overpower the mage by dispelling his flames. After pursuing Natsu midair, the sun casts Dread Spiral, sending Natsu crashing into a well. As a last attempt, Natsu throws a bucket of water at the spirit, recalling the latter's weakness to water, but in vain. San Pisces then loses his guard, gloating about their newfound power, allowing Natsu to snatch the keys and send the spirit flying. He then returns to the group and stops Mother Pisces from attacking Lucy, forcing her back. They then exchange attacks, tackling the mages and allowing the son to pilfer the keys yet again and escape the seed with his mother. Fortunately, the stolen keys were revealed to be fake copies made by Arcadios in order to protect the real ones, surprising the whole group. Natsu, along with other mages, then heads towards Astral Spiritus. 
whose location was disclosed by Hisui. Natsu manages to enter the place and interrupt Liberium from completion before engaging with Leo in combat, who is not pleased with his interference. The two start a short fight, but the results are neutral. After the celestial spirits start to attack, Natsu protects Lucy from Virgo's whip attack, but she manages to tie his hands and thus spin him around until Grace saves him. With the arrival of more fairy tale mages, celestial spirits, outnumbered, retreat to their gate so Natsu and Happy take a banishment key to track down Leo, who attacks them almost immediately upon arrival. Dodging his attack, Natsu tells him he'll have to beat his memories with Lucy out of him. Natsu starts a fight with Eclipse Leo, wondering why his flame got so dirty. As they start their confrontation, Leo punches Happy instead, forcing Natsu to stay on the ground which starts shaking after a while, triggering Natsu's motion sickness. As Leo is about to assault him, a mysterious blast happens, taking Leo, Natsu, and Happy to another dimension. Soon after, Natsu and Happy end up being sent to Eclipse Aquarius' dimension, just in time to save Wendy. However, they end up crashing into a ferris wheel with Wendy and Carla. Aquarius persists with their attacks until Natsu attempts to counter them with his fire dragon's roar. This is when the ferris wheel begins crumbling and Happy leaves Natsu to fall on the ground when he goes to grab Carla, all the while Wendy saves Aquarius. As Wendy uses her celestial spirit banishment key to close Aquarius's gate, Natsu ends up being stuck, but immediately manages to get out when Happy tells him to calm down. At the destroyed amusement park, Natsu and company realize that they must evacuate the area and head straight for the Lion's World to confront Eclipse Leo. In their search for Loki, Natsu follows their target scent and leads the group to some ruins. When they come to a dead end, he destroys the obstructing wall when Wendy informs him that a passage lies beyond it. This triggers a small and apparently harmless quake. The group travels down the opened path after the quake subsides. Natsu still leading them as he sniffs out Loki's scent. They soon face Ophiuchus, who begins to torture them with medical instruments after informing them about her constellation. Eclipse Ophiuchus summons an animate operating table to strap Carla and Wendy, with Natsu dodging the attack but falling onto an unstable floor. Happy saves Natsu, who uses his fire dragon's iron fist to free Carla and Wendy. After a short while, Eclipse Leo comes up to Ophiuchus to tell her that Liberium ceremony is ready. With Ophiuchus leaving, Leo still desires to achieve absolute freedom even though most of the Zodiac gates are already closed. As the room suddenly changes, Ophiuchus shows up in her true serpentine form, and additionally reveals that the whole astral spiritus is in fact her body. She states that everything is going as planned as Leo starts performing Liberium. As the defeated spirits' constellations appear in the sky, Leo reveals that sending the spirits back to their world was a part of his plan all along, which caused Natsu to rush at the Eclipse spirit to stop the right. He tells Wendy and the Exceed to destroy the globe before engaging with Leo in their final battle. Unexpectedly, Natsu's attacks are ineffective against Leo's Dark Regulus, who then starts absorbing the former's flames. After they exchange blows, Leo gains the upper hand over Natsu for most of the battle. As Wendy fails to get a scratch on the globe, Happy states that Loki must be stopped for Liberium to stop. While Natsu falls down, almost completely drained of his magic power, Leo continues to boast about their perfect freedom, just to be scolded by Natsu, who rises once again. Leo, irritated, charges at the injured Dragon Slayer to finish him off, just for his attack to be blocked, surprisingly, by Natsu himself. He then starts eating Leo's dark flames, obtaining the Black Fire Dragon Mode, and strikes Leo with his exploding flame blade of darkness, ending him. Even after the lion's defeat, Liberium continues, much to everyone's confusion. Finally, Ophiuchus starts chanting a mysterious prayer. As a result of absorbing Leo's dark flames, Natsu begins to fall, seriously fevered. As she takes advantage of his misfortune, Ophiuchus attempts to strike Natsu, just to be saved by the arrival of Hisui and Arcadios, with the former exposing that Liberium's true goal isn't freedom, and that it was planned by the Celestial Spirit King all along. As Ophiuchus summons her crystal dimension and clashes with Arcadios, Natsu pummels a glowing part of her stomach, mistaking it as her weakness. This causes the 12 crystals to collide, interrupting the ongoing battles between Lucy, Yukino, Virgo, and Libra. Living up to his caliber, Natsu unleashes all of the dark flames in his body towards the crystals, somehow merging the 12 dimensions into one, giving a chance to the two celestial spirit mages to defeat their former spirits with Uranometria. Natsu then tries to taunt Ophiuchus with the defeat of all her comrades, which she replies that it was all part of the Eclipse Celestial Spirit King's plan to empower himself through Liberian Virus, the true form of Liberium, and then thanks the mages for their help who are now left in shock. Natsu, enraged, yells out, stating that he will defeat both her and the Spirit King. Happy takes Natsu towards Ophiuchus and engages with her in battle, causing her to stand her ground. She then uses her signature weapon, the Ocarina, a magic item allowing her to control whatever she sees, and starts brutalizing the Dragon Slayer and the Exceed as well. As the battle continues, Hisui, as her last resolve, combines her power with Lucy's and Yukino's and casts a long-forgotten spell, Gottfried, and strikes the Celestial Globe. Meanwhile, as Happy is able to knock the Ocarina, Natsu, having successfully mastered it, activates his Blackfire Dragon Mode once more and charges with his Darkness Phoenix Blade, defeating her. With the demise of the globe, the constellations fade from the 
sky. As the guild reunites, the ground starts to quake violently as Horologium appears, stating that Liberium was in fact completed and the Eclipse Celestial Spirit King is now destroying the entire Celestial Spirit world. Natsu, along with the rest of the mages, expresses his resolution in saving the spirits and decides to travel to the Celestial Word despite knowing about the severe time difference. Upon their arrival, they're confronted by a colossal beast absorbing the floating planets, which Lucy and Hisui recognize as the Celestial Spirit King. After he absorbs the orbs that were housing the Zodiac Celestial Spirits, Urza signals Natsu and the other mages to attack. The fairy tale mages are proven no match for the beast, with him capturing more than half of the group, turning them into constellations, leaving only Team Natsu and Gajil to face them. The Eclipsed King continues to heavily outpower the mages, with all of their attacks turning ineffective. As Natsu picks up Loki's scent from inside the beast, he and Happy, with the use of the latter's max speed, spurt out towards the monster, venturing inside him. As the two struggle with what can only be described as the beast's immune system in unknown space, Happy notices a shimmering light in the distance and heads toward it. When they reach it, they're shocked to find the real Celestial Spirit King chained to a gigantic purple sphere with 13 chains representing the Zodiac Spirits. After he fails to destroy the chains, he starts feasting on the core's power, much to Happy's horror. Meanwhile, Urza and the others manage to destroy the beast's energy-generating bolts. Finally, Natsu casts Planetary Flames, Exploding Flame Blade, obliterating the core, causing the Eclipsed King's body to explode. Shortly after, Urza pulls Natsu and Happy, along with the Celestial Spirit King, now back to normal, out of the rubble. With the King's return, the entire world, in addition to the Transformed Mages and the Zodiac Celestial Spirits, are back to normal. As everyone gets together, the Celestial King addresses past events as if they were a bad dream to him, having nearly forgotten about what happened, but thanks the mages nonetheless. Natsu listens as Hisui faces the king, apologizing to him, blaming herself for what she had done, in which he assures her that she did everything she could to save the world. Ultimately, the mages return to Earthland, with Lucy regaining her keys and the abnormal natural phenomenon stopping. Sometime after they return, little Asuka is left to Natsu to babysit by her parents. They decide to have a shooting contest in which Natsu loses, and as a result, he has to obey Asuka for the rest of the day without question. Oddly enough, Asuka decides to go on jobs so that she can buy a certain item. After completing some safe jobs, Asuka and Natsu go to a pawn shop where she goes to buy a snow globe lacrima. She asks if Natsu and Lucy can kiss, causing Natsu to attempt to do so without question, but ends up kissing Happy instead, as Lucy was embarrassed to do such a thing. Unfortunately, a group of Sky Bandits steal the globe from Asuka's hands, attempting to sell it for a high price. As the little girl's toy bullets turn ineffective, Natsu pulls down her hat, asking her to shoot blindly so he can coat her toy bullets in his flames without her knowledge. Therefore, Asuka's shots manage to destroy all their gliders, causing Natsu to praise her for her good aim. After retrieving the lacrima, they return to the guild where Wendy, Carla, Urza, and Panther Lily serve Asuka the strawberry cake she had asked for earlier. As her parents return, Asuka shows them the globe, which turns out to be the first job reward Alzac and Biska had together. When they're asked why it was in a pawn shop, they say it's a long story. Several days later, on the 413th anniversary of Grey and Juvia's meeting, Juvia enters the guild to ask about a suitable gift for Grey. Natsu replies that food would be better, causing her to try and bake a cake. After her failure, she ends up knitting a scarf for Grey. She returns once again to the guild to search for him, just to be informed that he might be in his house by Natsu. After a while, Natsu, Lucy, and Happy set off for Mount Hakobe once again to bring back the abnormal Hakobe Ice, a unique type of ice with magical characteristics. Soon they get lost in a blizzard and take shelter in a cave, before getting trapped. Three days pass, with the three mages still in the cave, no hope of survival. As a result of his delusions, Natsu punches the wall, causing an opening to appear, in which he states he can feel the outside air coming through. As they venture through, they come up to a giant wall of ice that even Natsu's iron fist and crushing fang can't scratch. As Lucy recognizes it as their desired item, she cuts a piece of it with her ice-cutting pen. Suddenly, a giant octopus-like monster appears behind them and chases the three out of the cave. Natsu, exhausted, can't lay a finger on the beast, resulting in Lucy giving him the Hakobe ice. With his energy regained, Natsu effortlessly defeats the octopus, sending him down a cliff. After that, the three realize that they had lost the ice and have to start all over. Days later, having returned, Natsu loses Lucy and Happy ask Mira Jane to teach them the transformation magic, in which she agrees. At the park, she explains theories of transforming as well as showing the levels of transformation. Natsu failed the first try, but manages to transform into Lucy on the second. Suddenly, they hear screaming and noise from the city. Upon their arrival, they come face to face with two big monsters, Mr. Purple and the Cigar, who were revealed to be Makao and Wakabe, who were eavesdropping on Mira 
its lesson, but they let their stress and tension take on themselves, resulting in these transformations. Natsu decides to stop them with his new abilities, but ends up changing into an instruction paper instead. They then watch as Urza, disguised as Fairy Woman, appear and challenge the two. Eventually, after defeating the two, Fairy Woman questions if everyone is fine, just to be met with shocked faces. Happy then screams that Urza has turned real, much to her surprise. A few days later, Natsu is shown sitting in the guild with Happy reading the newspaper, stating the Fairy Woman has saved the town again. On a job, Natsu and Lucy hunt down a lizard man to get his scales. After it's done, a sudden earthquake happens before an egg suddenly falls from the sky onto Natsu's head. Back at the house, the egg hatches into an odd creature who is then named Kemo Kemo. Back at the guild, Makarov refuses to keep him as they don't know what it is, causing the aforementioned creature to breathe fire at him, much to Natsu's joy who insists that he will keep it. A messenger from the council comes to inform them that the six guilds who participate are to enter an exchange program, with Team Natsu, including Wendy and Carla, representing Fairy Tail. Natsu and the others set off to Blue Pegasus, but they leave after Kemo Kemo attacks a customer who insulted it. At Lamia scale, Natsu tries to ask Uba Babasama about his new pet, but in vain. They then leave for Mermaid Heel after Grey and Lion destroyed some ancient lithographs, where Natsu and Grey are dressed as girls because of Mermaid Heel being a female exclusive guild. At Quattro Cerberus, Bacchus starts a fight with Natsu, but the two are then engulfed by Kemo Kemo's flames. On their way to Sabretooth, Natsu states that he might be a new species that no one's ever heard of. Suddenly, Sting appears and drags Natsu to the guild. He shows them a mysterious island that appeared in the ocean a few days ago. Lahar steps in alongside Wendy and Carla, stating that the council ordered Fairy Tail and Sabretooth to join forces and explore the dangerous island. After arriving on the island, the mages split into two groups, with Natsu, Happy, Lucy, and Kemo Kemo heading towards the ruins. Suddenly, a giant sea serpent appears and starts chasing the four into the ruins where they get trapped inside. They then reach a room with ancient ruins, in which Lucy attempts to decipher. As the second group battle the serpent, people around the island are infected with what seems to be a virus. They then notice the appearance of a mysterious gas around the area, with Lucy still translating the symbols and Natsu protecting her from debris. As the ruins shake because of the battle outside, they find themselves protected by a giant Kemo Kemo. The mysterious creature is then revealed to be the god of plants, with the green gas being an antidote for the virus, created by Kemo Kemo himself. As the humongous god and Natsu defeat the serpent, he tells the dragon slayer that he is staying with the island, slowly merging with the forest around him, much to Natsu's dismay. After confirming that he was part of the family, Kemo Kemo disappears between the nature, leaving Natsu on the ground with his seed. Later, as they're leaving the island, Natsu states that he wasn't able to protect the member of his family, in which Urza corrects that it was Kemo Kemo's duty to stay with the island. Back in Magnolia Town, as Natsu and Happy leave their house for a job, it's seen that Kemo Kemo's seed has been planted, slowly growing. Back at the guild, Natsu and Happy are complaining about not having enough money for food, and Lucy tells them that they should look for a job. Oddly enough, the only remaining job is asking for Laxus himself. As the Lightning Dragon Slayer and the Thunder God tribe attempt to leave, Makarov tells him not to get consumed by it. Sometime later, Magnolia Town gets infected by Ichia's handsome perfume, turning everyone's faces into Ichia's. Lucy, dressed in a bunny suit, manages to escape and runs into Natsu and Happy. After being found by the Ichia's, they flee to the sewers just to be met by Gajil and Panther Lily. By hiding in Lucy's outfit, they're able to hide their scent from the infected duo. Unfortunately, Lucy's outfit is torn apart due to the extreme stress on it. Now that Gajil and Panther Lily are back, the three find themselves surrounded by the Ichias. Fortunately, Natsu manages to save them and escape the situation before encountering Wendy and Carla in midair, telling him that Romeo asked them to find him. Knowing what he meant, Natsu head for the guild building, evading all the Ichias and ultimately manages to find the deodorant lacrima, a special lacrima spray that deodorizes body odors and uses it to cure the infected. Later that night, as the mages are discussing the perfume, Urza thanks Natsu, stating that what matters is the heart. As Natsu and Lucy leave, an infected Ichia happy follows closely behind. Sun Village Arc. Sometime after returning, Natsu is given a joint request with Grey, forcing the two to work together to eliminate a monster. The two are successful and take care of the massive beast, but find dissatisfaction with each other and begin fighting over three days, taking breaks to sleep and eat. As Natsu calls Grey a pervert and criticizes him for being indecisive, the two are approached by Urza, who tells them to cut it out. Not knowing it's her, Natsu and Grey punch her in the face, but soon realize their mistake as they see her clearly and ask why she's there as she gives them an angry stare. Returning to the guild, Natsu states that he will never work with Grey again and he's made fun of by his fellow guildmates. As he talks, he's called out to by Makarov, who tells him that it's another request for him in Grey. Natsu states that he will not work with him again, but is told that he has to for a quest which he must not fail, as it is from one of the four gods, Ishgar, surprising him and rendering him in Grey speechless. The strongest team, accompanied by Wendy and Carla, head to war at Seeken's location after receiving a mission from said character. Along the way, Natsu begins to argue with Grey as he believes that it was he who had stole his meat, but Grey states otherwise and tells him to do something about his eye-blinding hair color. The two continue to argue as Urza and Lucy ask them to stop, which proves to be futile as
as the mages continuously begin to throw insults at each other. Once they arrive at their destination, Natsu and the others are told to keep silent to the presence of plants, as the plants like the silence where they enter the house of their client. However, the man, revealing himself to be Warred Seeken, reveals to them that it was a joke, that in fact, plants do like the human voice. Unamused, Natsu ponders the man's sarcasm. After introducing themselves, Natsu and Grey listen to Warred as he begins to explain the mission to them. A now frozen village that used to worship an ever-burning flame needs their help. He further emphasizes his point by telling the mages that people are frozen inside the ice. Natsu and Grey team up and get ready for this mission. To help them get to the village, Warred summons a plant that takes him to the location. Natsu and his comrades travel aboard the plant, enjoying the ride. The group soon arrives at the town Warred Seeken spoke of, and looking around, wonder where the frozen occupants could possibly be. Glancing upwards, Natsu screams when he realizes that they are under the townsfolk, and they are none other than giants. After a short panic session, Natsu decides that the group still needs to help, and tries to use his magic to melt the ice encasing the giants, but to no avail. Suddenly, the group is approached by a trio of treasure hunters who reveal that they have come to steal the flame whilst the giants can't guard it. When the group points out that the flame is frozen too, the men show them a vial of liquidized moon drip that they intend to use to get the flame. Realizing that they could steal the bottle and use it themselves, Natsu and his friends pursue the treasure hunters to take the bottle from them. During Natsu and the gang's pursuit, the treasure hunters decide to stop running and fight back, stating that treasure hunting is dangerous. Natsu counters that their job is dangerous as well and gets into position, just as one of the hunters attacks with a giant hammer shaped like a clenched fist, and Natsu barely dodges. Attempting to counter with his fire dragon's iron fist, Natsu finds his technique blocked by the now open hand on the staff and is then punched in the face, sending him flying. Returning shortly afterwards, Natsu finds himself forced to admit that their opponents are actually good fighters. Further praising the hunters for being so good without magic, Hiroshi states that their guild won the secret treasure games, much to Natsu's amusement. Revealing that Grey has managed to snatch the moon drip bottle, they engage in a fight once more, throwing the bottle to each other. As Happy lets the bottle fall and it breaks, Natsu, along with everyone else, watches in shock. It turns out that not much ice was melted. Happy asks for punishment, however, Natsu states that he can hear a familiar voice from the melted ice, running to an unknown direction afterwards. Reaching the giant's location, he encounters Doriate, a member of the Succubus Eye who uses his magic to turn him back to his child appearance, stating that this way it will be easier to dispose of the Dragon Slayer. Natsu is shocked to see that he's been transformed into a child, and immediately understands that his opponent is to blame. He then proceeds to dispose of Natsu, who clumsily dodges attacks, finding out that he cannot move properly right now. He then tries to fight back using his fire dragon's roar, but discovers that it is not just his size that it's changed, but his magic power has also drastically decreased. After being attacked, Natsu also finds out that a single punch can do far more damage to him since his defensive abilities have also dropped down. Seeing that he cannot fight back in this state, Natsu tricks his opponent into looking somewhere else and makes his escape while laughing and remembering that he used to fool guildards with this trick all the time. After a while, Natsu still runs through the forest, trying to track down the voice that he heard inside his head, also wondering how long it will take until his body returns to normal. Not long after, the effects of the magic wear off and Natsu is returned to his ordinary state, causing him to slip and fall on the ice while running. However, Doriate, now in his demon form, affects an entire village with his law of retrogression, and everyone, including Natsu, have their appearances changed to that of a child. Later, with Doriate's defeat at the hands of Grey, the magic wears off and everyone regains their original form. Annoyed, Natsu keeps walking while complaining about the sudden change of his appearance. He then meets up with Lucy, Wendy, and Flair, shocked to see the latter. After learning about Flair's relation to the village, Natsu sympathizes with her, stating that they'll change everything back to normal as it's fairy tale's reputation that's at stake. Natsu then notes that he's been hearing voices from the mountain in front of them. Flair reveals that the mountain is in fact the Eternal Flame, the village's guardian. Suddenly, they see Grey, Happy, and Carla running towards them, being chased by the one-eyed bird creature. Natsu tells Grey to knock it out, with the latter going to attempt to melt the ice instead, so Natsu heads to deal with the bird. He attacks it with his fire dragon slayer magic, but the bird counterattacks. A worried Lucy calls out Natsu's name, but the dragon slayer claims he's fine and tells him to restore the Eternal Flame in order to save the village. After Grey attempts to unfreeze the Eternal Flame and it disappears, everyone despairs until Wendy points out the small flame on the altar. Knowing that the solution to this is Natsu, Lucy calls out to him. Giving her a positive answer, Natsu heads to the flame. However, the Cyclops monster interferes and assaults him. Not giving him time to retaliate, it fires a beam out of its single eye, with Natsu taking the full force of the attack. 
Before the beam hits the frozen giants, Natsu stops the attack with his fire dragon's roar. He then charges forward and takes the creature down with a barrage of attacks. As it falls on the altar, Natsu finishes it with Crimson Lotus Exploding Flame Blade. Seeing that the flame is alright, Natsu realizes that the voice he heard was of Atlas Flame, and they find themselves before the fire dragon, with the latter happy to see the son of Igneal 400 years later. Natsu is also glad to see Atlas Flame alive. However, the dragon states that it's not the case, as Wendy confirms that Atlas Flame has been summoned through her Milky Way. The group soon learns that something is not right with the dragon's memories, and after effect of being frozen for so long. Atlas Flame reveals that the cause of the freeze was an ice devil slayer who mistook the dragon for a demon. Flayer then begs the dragon to help the village, which causes him to clear his memory somewhat, and Natsu and the others face an immense heat coming from Atlas Flame. The dragon then tells Natsu about the end, the most vile magic from the Book of Zerif, something that Igneal was unable to destroy 400 years ago. At that moment, Natsu and the others find the village to be restored. However, Atlas Flame is gone. Natsu wonders about this new information, having not heard of end before. With the giants freed, Natsu, alongside Happy, sits atop one of their heads and laps happily along Alongside them. While the others discuss the issue of the village being frozen, the Dark Guild Tartaros and the Ice Devil Slayer, Natsu remains unconcerned as he tells them that they completed their job regardless. Soon, Flair speaks to the giants who raised her and is tearfully welcomed back into the village, a scene upon which Natsu smiles before following up with a celebration for everyone which goes on throughout the night. The mages return to Warred's house, with Natsu happily claiming that the mission was extremely easy. Warred then informs them that the time to receive the reward has arrived leading Natsu and Grey to stare at the reward furiously, which was a potato from a neighboring town. After expressing their displeasure, the two head to the hot spring nearby. At the hot spring, Natsu and Grey relax, whilst the girls, unbeknownst to them, ponder what the boys are doing. Natsu reveals their location when he calls out to Lucy, prompting the celestial mage to grab a bucket and throw it at his face while covering her body. At the same time, Warred appears. Natsu then crosses his arms as Urza moves towards him, leaning in to scrub his back as she reminds him of when they were kids. Meanwhile, Lucy introduces Warred to reveal his fairy tale guildmark when she states that he has nothing to do with what is happening, shocking everybody present. Natsu, getting his back washed by Urza, listens to his story about Mavis and the words that created fairy tale. When he's finished speaking, Urza tells Natsu to scrub her back, which he does. Understanding that Warred has been alive for a long time, he questions if he knows anything about End, to which he responds negatively. However, he does inform them of the very little information known about Tartaros, even revealing that it is possible that they're in possession of the Book of Zerif. Visibly angry, Natsu loses his calm not knowing anything about Tartaros or Igneal's location, despite the small amount Warred noted, swinging punches at random. Looking down, he notices that he accidentally struck Urza multiple times, receiving a strong punch in return. Tartaros Arc. Back at the guild, Natsu continues researching about End, and with Levi's help, they learn that it's on a completely different scale compared to Deliora and Lullaby, implying that it might be the strongest of Zerif's demons. The group then speculates whether Tartaros has the book containing End, with Natsu later stating that they just need to defeat Tartaros, much to Lucy's disapproval. However, Natsu argues that this is a clue of the whereabouts of Igneal and other dragons. At that moment, Jet barges into the guild hall, and Natsu is surprised to hear that he brings bad news. Natsu then waits for the announcement of Loxus, Yajima, and the Thunder God tribe's status after said mages confronted Tartaros and were left nearly on the verge of death. Vividly angered, he turns to Makarov and claims that this means war. Exclaiming that Tartaros's action is an act of war, Natsu begs to be allowed to punish them, pinned to the floor by several guildmates as they try to calm him. Makarov reminds him that he fully agrees, but they lack intel. However, Natsu insists that they go to war, promising to attain information on their whereabouts from a dark guild by using force. Suddenly, Loki joins them, revealing that he knows the location of several former Magic Council members. Natsu then listens to Makarov as the master claims that Laxus and the others' efforts will not be in vain, creating groups and sending them out to protect the former council members shortly afterwards. Natsu, Lucy, Wendy, Happy, and Carla arrive at Michello's house, explaining the current situation, who refuses their protection at first. As Michello's granddaughter enters the conversation, Natsu senses something, jumping towards Lucy and Wendy as he tells everyone to get down. Suddenly, Michello's house is blown to smithereens by an explosion, leading Natsu to feast on the remaining flames. From behind the smoke, a mage speaks to Natsu and the others, who ask asks for Natsu's name. Natsu, glaring at the Dark Mage from Tartaros, readies for battle. After Jackal unleashes a spell that tremors the vicinity, Natsu swiftly jumps towards the Dark Mage, and he is met by another explosion. Natsu counteracts against Jackal's assault by consuming his heat-based spell and pummels the Tartarus Mage in the face. Immediately after, Natsu thrusts himself forward to collide into Jackal, which Jackal barely evades, and after that, Natsu crashes through the floorboards and furiously knees Jackal's jaw. As Natsu carries on with his all-out assault, Jackal attempts to tell Natsu something, but is only met with a ferocious beatdown. After seemingly defeating Jackal, Natsu recalls 
having to interrogate the Tartarus member over the location of their headquarters. After realizing what the Dark Guild is possibly after, Michelo attempts to flee, but Natsu requests that he stay and share his knowledge over the situation. After suffering from Natsu's beatdown, Jackal regains consciousness, stands up, and enlightens Natsu about his curse, which changes things that he touches into bombs. As Natsu realizes the combustion that's about to occur throughout his limbs, he desperately tells his peers to escape, and subsequently detonates, leaving him in a horribly injured state. Natsu lies on the ground as Jackal rapidly chases after the running Michelo, and whilst Lucy and Wendy attempt to ambush the demon. Consecutively, he rises to his feet once again to confront the demon, entering the battle by striking Jackal in his jaw with his elbow, causing the latter to release two hostages inside bombs, Michelo and a woman. He then punches Michelo in the head, knocking him out due to the former counselor's constant egocentrism irritating him. Jackal then notes that Natsu touched him again, leading the fairy tale mage to reveal that he has created a trick to his curse, absorbing the explosion as the curse takes its course, which leaves Jackal open mouthed as Natsu challenges him once again. While delivering a beatdown to Jackal, Natsu winds up touching him again and exploding, much to Jackal's delight, until Natsu reveals his survival. Suddenly, Jackal turns into a large demon and attacks Natsu, creating large explosions as he attempts to destroy the town. As he talks about humans being unable to compare to demons and wanting to kill all humans, Natsu tells the beast that they are different in what they're fighting for, as he utilizes his lightning fire dragon's firing hammer to send Jackal flying, destroying a large part of the town as well as his friend's note before collapsing himself. Beaten, Jackal turns himself into a bomb in an attempt to blow up everyone and take the town and everyone in it with him. Unable to stop him, Natsu can only watch as Happy carries the demon into the sky, whereupon he explodes as everyone watches from below. Though worried, Natsu's fears are quelled as Happy emerges from the aftermath, burned but still alive. Finally able to connect to their newly attained Lacrima, Natsu watches from the ground as Lucy informs Makarov that Michelo is alive, while commenting on his victory against Jackal. He then listens to Michelo mentioning a weapon that the Magic Council is in possession of, questioning their motives for having said object. Seconds later, Natsu allows Michelo to finish his revelation, face a magic pulse bomb that can nullify all magic across the continent. Grabbing the Elder by the neck, Natsu questions its whereabouts. However, Michelo admits he does not know, but assures them that the former chairman should. Suddenly, Natsu has a revelation and asks for the ex-chairman's house, quickly taking off with Happy as he finds out. As they fly, Natsu explains that somehow Tartaros knew information that even the counselors were not aware of. Of, thus causing him to suspect that someone leaked the information. Reasoning that that someone is a person who is high up in the chain of command, Natsu urges Happy to fly faster to their destination, as he believes Urza and Mira Jane are in danger. They eventually reach the location of the ex-chairman's house, and after going through what was a battlefield, Natsu and Happy enter the house to find it empty. However, Natsu picks up the smell of Urza and Mira Jane after realizing that the former chairman is most likely allied with Tartaros, and used a sleeping drug to take Urza and Mira Jane. He destroys the entire house in a fit of anger and swears to find the two, telling Happy not to underestimate a dragon's nose. At Tartaros HQ, just as Crawford and Franmouth discuss the fate of Urza's team, Natsu crashes through a window, knocking Crawford out. While Franmouth watches in shock as Natsu states that he's found the culprit, the rest of the demons notice the Dragon Slayer's arrival. Natsu shouts Urza and Mira Jane's names, whilst Franmouth is shocked to see intruders invading their headquarters. He then turns to face the demon, asking him once again to reveal their location, but he denies, leading Natsu to approach him and punch him into a nearby structure. The two quickly engage in a fight, with Franmouth freeing himself of his armor and extending his arm to attack Natsu. Natsu seemingly dodges, however the demon reveals that his curse allows him to suck the power of his opponents. In the nick of time, Happy intervenes by biting Franmouth's arm, allowing Natsu just enough time to get through the demon once again and attack him with his fire dragon's grip strike, causing little damage. Just then, a man bringing a chilly wind with him enters, telling Franmouth to take Crawford and leave the fire dragon for him to deal with. After the two leave, Natsu ponders if Silver is the one who froze Sun Village quickly being informed by the man that he's thankful the village is back to normal as freezing it was a mistake of his. Before the man can continue speaking, Natsu stares at him in shock, realizing that he smells like someone he knows. As Natsu states Gray's name, Silver is quick to freeze Natsu where he stands. Sometime later, Natsu is seen being thrown into a jail naked. He begs the Tartaro soldiers to return his scarf, but he ends up being ignored. At that moment, he notices Lisana, also in her birthday suit, being in the prison with him. The two panic for a while about not having clothes, but when Lisana hears of Mira Jane and Urza being captured as well, she despairs, realizing the power of their enemies. However, Natsu states that the enemies this time aren't different, promising to defeat them. He notes that before that, they have to get out of the jail. Lisana smiles before kicking Natsu in his face for looking at her naked body. Later, Natsu has Lisana attempt to get his cuffs off with her feet. They eventually give up, with Lisana noting that a regular human cannot break the cuffs. As Lisana panics when Natsu looks at her, a piece of clothing is thrown into the jail. Natsu and Lisana watch as Silver passes 
by who claims that he cannot let them escape, but also cannot let Lisana bear the embarrassment. Natsu angrily questions Silver's identity, but ends up being ignored as Silver walks away. While Lisana is seemingly worried, Natsu exclaims that Silver smells just like Grey. A while later, as unbeknownst to them, the seal on face is removed, Natsu and Lisana wonder what's the cause of the tremor they feel in their jail. As Lisana expresses her worries about Mira Jane and Elfman, Natsu, down on the ground, asks her whether she's okay. Tossed around by the ruptures, Natsu is told by Lisana to take a look at their jail cell's bars. Taking a look, he notices a sword which Lisana theorizes they can use to cut their chains. Later, Natsu and Lisana appear at Urza's location, revealing that they managed to break free. They capture Kyoka, who intended to take Urza as a hostage. Surprised, Kyoka questions their means of escape, and Natsu notes that the sword they took is really powerful, revealing that it is the Heat Blade. Along with a rescued Urza, they tie Kyoka up with the shackles that block magic. A confused Natsu watches as Urza, with an evil expression, states that she will get revenge for everything Kyoka has done to her. Afterwards, Natsu asks about Elfman and Mira Jane, revealing to Urza that Elfman may have also been captured. With Urza's blade pressed to Kyoka's neck, the demon reveals Mira Jane's location, although she claims that she doesn't know Elfman. Lisana decides to head to Mira Jane, and Natsu follows her, leaving Urza to deal with Kyoka. However, on their way, they're discovered by the soldiers of Tartaros who attempt to capture them once again. Natsu decides to intercept them, while Lisana continues heading towards Mira Jane and effortlessly defeats the soldiers with the use of his magic. At that moment, everything darkens, and the soldiers are stopped in midair. Suddenly, Natsu witnesses Zeref walking towards him. He watches with shock as the Dark Mage praises him for coming this far and claims this place to be his bookshelf. Surprised, Natsu utters the Dark Mage's name, with the latter smiling at the former. He listens to Zeref's brief explanation about the origins of the guild, learning that Zeref himself did not create Tartaros, but it was their master, End, and the demons that Zeref had created. Hearing End's name, Natsu notes that it is the demon that Igniel wanted to kill. However, Zeref states that the Fire Dragon King could not do so. Natsu readies himself, grabbing the Heat Blade while exclaiming that he will be the one to defeat End, as to inherit his father's will. However, the blade is unable to reach Zeref and breaks in two. Zeref continues smiling, telling Natsu that he can do it. However, he states that the End is the strongest demon he's ever created and warns Natsu of the choice that the Dragon Slayer will have to make, whether to let the demon live or to kill it. Even though Natsu demands an explanation, Zeref takes his leave, hoping to meet the Dragon Slayer again, leaving Natsu to wonder about what just happened. Later, Natsu appears to assist Wendy in her escape in order for her to arrive at the face's location. As Friend Moth uses Aerie's ability to reach Wendy, Natsu arrives to burn it, noting that he and the demon meet again. Both Happy and Lucy are delighted to see him, with the latter smiling that Natsu knows when to appear. The Dragon Slayer then wonders where Wendy rushed off to, and Lucy reveals that the face is about to be activated. The two decide to leave the weapon to Wendy while they go and save Mira Jane. However, their discussion is interrupted by Friend Moth, who shows off his ability, revealing that he has absorbed both Ares and Taurus. After short banter about whether Wendy, Carla, or even Frenmouth are rats, Natsu sets his fist to flame, saying that he'll beat those souls out of Frenmouth. However, Frenmouth causes the head of teary-eyed Ares to appear in place of his, stopping Natsu's attack. The demon knocks Natsu down, laughing that he should absorb his soul as well. However, Natsu dodges, and as he's about to strike, Frenmouth uses Taurus as a means of distraction. Natsu shows no qualms about beating this spirit and knocks Frenmouth away. An enraged Frenmouth gets up and states that he will now show his most powerful soul, and Natsu watches in shock as an ominous aura surrounds the demon, revealing someone familiar. Seeing Frenmoth morph his body into the form of Hades, Natsu comments that the demon looks more weird than scary. Told not to underestimate him as he brags about taking Hades' powers at his own, Natsu reminds Frenmoth that it was Fairy Tail who defeated Hades and leaps forward to attack. However, Frenmoth is barely hurt, and after the two exchange blows, Frenmoth links his arms to Natsu and begins to absorb his soul. Realizing what's happening, Natsu breaks free and activates Lightning Fire Dragon Mode and hits Frenmoth with a large attack. However, Frenmoth takes no damage, revealing that he's continued to absorb Natsu's soul through his fire and continues the battle. Told their magic has no chance against demon's curses, Natsu stays the demon, and as Face nears its activation, Cube begins shaking violently, earning Natsu's notice, causing him to curse as he hears that it's going to be activated soon. As soon as the time is up, Frenmoth laughs, overjoyed with Face's activation. However, Natsu sets his fist to flame no problem, and the group realizes that Wendy and Carla managed to stop the weapon. Natsu tells Frenmoth to give Mira Jane back, however the angered demon charges the Demon Slayer, yelling that their actions are worth 100,000 souls, intending to steal theirs. Even though Natsu initially manages to dodge Frenmoth's attacks, he's soon hit by Hades' formula. Lying on the ground heavily injured, Natsu and the others are caught by Frenmoth's extending arms, having their souls sucked out of them. 
However, Natsu struggles against the effects of the curse, telling Lucy and Happy to do the same. Although Franmoth states that it's futile, Natsu exclaims that he will keep his soul until he can meet Igneal. At the last moment, Lucy wishes for her spirits to be free and tries to close the gates of the absorbed Taurus and Ares. This forces Franmoth to let go of their souls as he would be sent to the spirit world along with them. Realizing her chance, Lucy outwits him, making him think that Natsu is also a spirit. Natsu, now free of Franmoth's hold, attacks the demon. When Franmoth states that magic does not work against him, Natsu lifts a huge rock, an object without any soul, and repeatedly hits the demon with it, successfully defeating him. The group then watches as the captured souls flow out of the demon, but at that moment, the soul of Hades speaks to them, telling them that the face is not Tartaros' real goal and having them relay a message to Makarov to let out the light. After the soul of Hades disappears, the group ponders about these words. Eventually, Happy decides to head to Makarov, while Natsu states that there are still some demons that require beating. Thinking that Mira Jane is somewhere on this floor, Natsu is suddenly contacted by Warit, learning that Mira Jane has been rescued. Natsu then listens to Mard Gear, who, entering their telepathy, tells the mages that they have no tomorrow and activates Allegria. Cube begins transforming and Natsu is forced to part with Lucy as they're both being drawn in opposite directions. Although Natsu struggles, he is eventually trapped by the effects of Mard Gear's curse. Natsu is then saved from the effects of Allegria thanks to the celestial spirit King Galaxia's blade. He arrives to Lucy's location just in time to eat Tempester's fire-based attack. Natsu realizes that it was Lucy who saved them and then commends his opponents for their power. Together with Greg, Jill, and Juvia, they stand before Silver, Tempester, Keys, and Torafuzar. The attention briefly shifts to Silver after Grey questions his identity, with Natsu noting that Silver was the culprit behind Sun Village's events. However, Silver charges past Natsu and along with Grey disappears from the battle field. Tempester wastes no time and Natsu and the others are soon caught in his curse, with only Gajil being able to counterattack. Things become complicated as Gajil and Juvia are unable to hit their opponents after Natsu's attack misses Keys. He's then struck by lightning from Tempester's curse. Paying no attention to the damage done to them, Natsu, Gajil, and Juvia stand up and, encouraged by the Fire Dragon Slayer, rush towards the demons who are ready to take them on. Natsu is then briefly seen battling Keys, angered that his attacks don't connect. The fight continues, with Natsu and Gajil attempting to join forces in order to bring Torafuzar and Tempester. Tempester down. However, the latter counterattacks and the Dragon Slayers fall down instead. Seeing this, Lucy is eager to help. However, Natsu tells her to rest, claiming that they will be fine. He and Gajil then notice a familiar smell, recognizing the arrival of the twin dragons of Sabretooth, subsequently clashing with Tempester yet again. The battle continues and Natsu expresses his worries when Lucy is taken a hold by Key's skeleton, as well as his subsequent shock as Juvia seemingly falls to the demon. However, he soon realizes that Juvia has instead turned into water and smiles as she defeats her enemy. Natsu then focuses on his enemies again, stating that they need to deal with them fast. As a response to the demons unleashing their ethereal Serious forms, Natsu and Gajil activate Lightning Fire Dragon Mode and Iron Shadow Dragon Mode, respectively. Surprised to see Gajil's new ability, Natsu argues with him over who is stronger, deciding that the one who defeats their enemy first will get an ode written by the second as they charge at their enemies. The demons are pushed back after the barrage of attacks coming from the Dragon Slayers, however, continuing their argument, Natsu and Gajil punch each other, surprising everyone else. The two continue bickering, discussing the strength of their punches, and once again attempting to claim the fastest win. Tarafazar joins the flame, in inviting the mages into the deep sea of Hades, and unleashes Tenchi Kaimei, filling the location with black water. Natsu realizes he cannot use flames in this water and soon falls unconscious, affected by the liquid's poison. Later, as Levi arrives, providing the Dragon Slayer with air, and Gajil defeats Tarafazar, Natsu falls to the ground, still not aware of himself after the demon's black water disappears. Finally, Natsu wakes up while Juvia and the others discuss Grey's whereabouts. Lucy turns to Natsu, asking if there's something wrong. Ignoring the subsequent tease, Natsu questions if Gajil can hear the same thing as he does. Visibly frightened, Natsu then correctly pinpoints his cause, Acnologia nearing their location. However, on his knees, Natsu begins acting strange, with Lucy realizing that he's burning up as she tries to touch him. Suddenly, Natsu hears a voice stating that it's time. Realizing that it's Igneal, Natsu wonders where it's coming from, but Igneal just tells him that the Fire Dragon Slayer can surely defeat End. The Fire Dragon himself states that he will deal with Acnologia instead. Natsu recalls his times with Igneal just as the dragon leaves his body in a ray of light, revealing that he's been inside him this whole time. Igneal apologizes to Natsu for everything and attacks Acnologia, telling Natsu to live just as the boy sheds tears, having finally been reunited with his dad. Natsu, still in tears over finally finding Igneal, watches his father fight against Acnologia. 
When Gajil asks Natsu how Igneel was inside him the whole time, Natsu replies that he has no idea, and then angrily propels himself upward using flames. He then hangs on to the giant dragon demanding answers, but Igneel interrupts him by firing a massive fire blast. Natsu congratulates Igneel for that feat, but when Acnologia comes out unscathed, Igneel realizes he has to fight for real and orders Natsu to leave, giving him a guild job, steal the Book of End from Mard Gear without damaging it. When Natsu asks for a reward for this job, Igneel tells him that his reward would be an answer to all his questions. With that, Natsu accepts the job and rushes toward Mardgear, but not before reminding Igneel of the promise they made with each other. A determined Natsu reaches Mardgear in no time, introducing himself as Igneel's son, much to the demon's surprise. While Natsu continues delivering a barrage of attacks, claiming that he will defeat Mardgear in order to stop face and to take the Tome of End. Mardgear launches his Thorn Curse, but ends up being surprised yet again as Natsu effortlessly evades the attack and strikes him with Fire Dragon's Iron Fist. Seeing this, Mardgear decides to communicate with Kyoka in order to speed up the activation of Face, and Natsu, not knowing what's going on, watches as Mardgear's expression changes. Afterwards, Natsu charges at Mardgear one more time just to face an explosion from the Demon's Curse. He dodges and continues the attack, which Mardgear then blocks and crushes the ground near Natsu, causing the Dragon Slayer to fall. The next attack of Thor and Curse is broken by Sting and Rogue, who arrive just in time to save Natsu. The Fire Dragon Slayer is happy to see them, however he refuses their offer to defeat Mardgear together, as he wants to complete the job given to him by Igneel on his own. Sting then proposes a competition. Whoever defeats Mardgear first is the winner, knowing that Natsu will not complain anymore if they join the battle this way. After multiple hits from each side, Mardgear is pushed back by Sting's kick and crashes into a wall. He gets up in no time, commenting on the situation, having not felt anger like this for quite a long time. Natsu grins as he welcomes the demon into what it's like to be human. Natsu then watches as Mardgear lets go of the Book of End and sits down on his throne, claiming that this emotion, as well as his opponents, shall disappear. Afterwards, the Dragon Slayers are caught in his Thorn Curse, unable to escape while taking damage. Finally managing to evade the thorns, Natsu launches himself against Mardgear just to be blown away. Not wasting a moment, Natsu responds with a combo of Fire Dragon's Sword Horn and Fire Dragon's Horn, asking Sting and Rogue to follow up afterwards. However, not even the twin dragon Dragon's combined attacks, as well as Natsu's lightning fire dragon's firing hammer seem to have any effect, and the three dragon slayers watch in shock as the underworld king, sitting on his throne yet again, states with a smirk on his face that he's not even trying yet. Natsu and the twin dragons then listen to Mardgear's explanation about Zeref's demons. The fire dragon's face shows nothing but surprise as he learns that the demons were born so that they could kill their creator, Zeref, and by using face to wipe the magic, the strongest demon end can be revived. Afterwards, Mardgear then proceeds to summon a prison flower. However, before he can use it, he's frozen by Grey, who arrives in order to defeat the Underworld King, as well as to return Natsu his scarf, much to the Fire Dragon Slayer's shock. The latter's surprise only grows as they realize that Mardgear's arm is now frozen without anyone knowing how it happened. Natsu then watches as Grey overwhelms Mardgear with his Ice Devil Slayer magic. However, Grey's final attack is interrupted by a newcomer that Natsu recognizes to be Jamma a former Sabretooth Master, now a demon with power rivaling that of the Nine Demon Gates. The Fire Dragon Slayer encourages the Twin Dragons, claiming that there is nothing to be afraid of as he clashes with Giemma. However, he's blown away and Giemma targets Sting and Rogue, while Natsu and Grey are to deal with Mardgear. The latter then releases his Aetherius form, having all of his wounds healed, and Natsu and Grey ready themselves for battle, prepared to defeat their opponent in the name of Fairy Tail. As they charge at Mardgear, the demon spreads his wings and creates a mass of black thorns forcing Natsu and Grey to use their powers to burn and freeze them respectively. However, Mardgear appears right next to them and grabs their heads, crashing them into the rubble and dragging them through it. Natsu and Grey soon manage to retaliate and simultaneously attack, bringing Mardgear onto the ground. However, Mardgear is seemingly unfazed, and Natsu ends up being pushed back by the demon's counterattack. He and Grey combine their magic, but to no avail, as Mardgear dodges with ease and replies with Dia Yggdrasil, something that Natsu and Grey have to destroy before they can proceed. Natsu then approaches Mardgear from behind thanks to Grey's ice magic Gugnir, and his attack seems to have no effect yet again, and the Fire Dragon Slayer wonders if this demon is immortal. The two then listen to Mardgear's explanation about the creation of curses. In spite of Natsu's protests, the demon states that magic has no future. He then activates a curse named Memento Mori devised to kill Zeref. Natsu and Grey seemingly disappear just as Mardgear explains that those hit by this curse do not die, they vanish with no future left for them. 
However, as soon as the dust clears away, it's revealed that Grey defended the two against the curse, with half of his body becoming demon-like. A shocked Natsu then watches as Grey falls down, claiming that he believes in his friend. Both the Dragon Slayer and the Demon then charge against each other. However, as Mard Gear soon finds out, Natsu overpowers him in his Dragon Force mode, finishing it with Crimson Lotus Phoenix Blade. Much to the Dragon Slayer's surprise, Mard Gear is not defeated yet in spite of Natsu's magic becoming zero, and thus Natsu calls out to Grey, with the latter firing an arrow of ice to deal a finishing blow to the demon. After Grey notes that it's not over until end is gone, Natsu remembers that he's supposed to deliver the demon's book to Igneal. However, Grey insists that the strongest demon of Xeref needs to be destroyed, in spite of Natsu's protests. That is when the face begins begins its activation sequence and Natsu yells out in frustration, sensing the disappearance of magic. At that moment, Natsu witnesses Igneal and Acnologia dropping down, with the former having seemingly overpowered the latter. Natsu then smiles upon realization that more dragons have appeared to deal with face. As Igneal proceeds to explain that the dragons were sealed in their dragon slayers until now, Natsu expresses his confusion over this news. However, that is when the battle between Igneal and Acnologia resumes, and a worried Natsu watches as the two ascend into the sky once more. Afterwards, he faces Grey one more time, wanting to take the Book of End, just as Igneal requested but they're interrupted by the arrival of Zeref, who, much to their surprise, takes the book as he states that it's something very important to him. Zeref then applauds Mod Gear for the near resurrection of End, and goes on to complain of how Acnologia has interfered with his plans, stating that he wanted to finish his long-awaited battle with Natsu. He says that he'll give him despair before turning and once again disappearing. Natsu watches as Igneal is pummeled to the ground, and Acnologia overpowers him. Natsu rushes to Igneal's aid. The Fire Dragon refuses his help, saying that he did not expect the Dragon King to be so powerful powerful, and provides the two reasons why he had hidden himself in Natsu's body all these years. To slow the Dragon Slayer's dragon transformation by producing antibodies, something that now has almost no chance of happening, and to destroy Acnologia. Natsu doesn't care how strong this dragon is, telling Igneal if they join forces then they'll be invincible. Natsu then sees Igneal claim Acnologia's arm, but at a great risk on his body, falling from the sky. Igneal thanks Natsu for giving him the happiest days of his life, and giving him the power to love another, before being over overwhelmed by the power of Acnologia's dragon breath. As the dust clears, Natsu is seen on his knees, in tears, weeping over Igneal's broken promise that the dragon wouldn't leave him. He cries further as he mentions the things that he had always wanted to tell his foster parent. As Igneal's corpse begins to vanish, Natsu hears the dragon's voice, telling him to remember what to do when one is sad. He further encourages Natsu to show him that he's grown up, with Natsu vowing to defeat Acnologia afterwards. A week later, Natsu and Happy are back in the house, checking the amount of money they own. Although they think that there should be much more, they brush it off and focus on the problem at hand, the letter that Natsu's holding. Later, Natsu and Happy prepare to leave the town, with the former promising to become stronger so he can protect everyone. Sometime during their travels, Natsu and Happy happen upon Gildarts. After a day of having fun, Natsu lets Gildarts know of what happened, and later the two engage in a friendly match. However, after Natsu shows off his power, he's caught by a monster. Gildarts defeats it, destroying a whole mountain in the process. Seeing his monstrous strength, Natsu refuses to continue the match, and eventually the two two head different ways. It's not long before Natsu and Gildarts find out they have the wrong bags, with the latter rushing after the former to retrieve it, resulting in another quarrel. Avatar Arc Natsu does not appear until the year X792, when during the last day of the Grand Magic Games, he enters the stadium to stand against the number one guild in Fiore. Skarmiglione. Natsu sets the entire stadium aflame, and when asked about his identity, he introduces himself as a challenger before attacking the mages in front of him. Effortlessly, he defeats everyone with a single attack, almost destroying the entire stadium in the process. He then notices Lucy watching from the stands, greeting her with a big smile on his face. Afterwards, Natsu and Happy are seen leaving the Mercurius Castle, having been pardoned by the king for their actions. Outside, they meet up with Lucy, who reveals that Fairy Tail has disbanded, after Natsu asks where the rest of the guild is. Outraged, Natsu questions Makarov's whereabouts, as well as whether everyone was fine with his decision, going so far as to suggest Laxus taking over the guildmaster position. However, Lucy asks if Natsu has any right to say that, seeing that he didn't care for the guild for an entire year either, leaving him baffled in spite of her subsequent apology. Later, Natsu and Happy arrive to Lucy's apartment, thankful that they're allowed to stay. After getting a haircut and taking a bath, Natsu talks to Lucy about what happened, much to the latter's amusement. At night, Natsu and Happy wonder if the guild is really gone, but their worries don't last long as they decide to sneak into Lucy's room to paint on her face. However, after seeing Lucy gathering information about the guild members, Natsu decides to head out to put up a message about Fairy Tail's revival with his flames on the Mercurius Castle, as it's made apparent that the next morning when soldiers appear at Lucy's place. In a similar fashion to how they first met, Lucy eventually 
eventually agrees to go with Natsu, and together with Happy, they flee from the chasing soldiers. Eventually, the group arrives to Tully Village, where Natsu complains about the lack of action, and Lucy refuses to let him destroy the clock tower one more time. He offers to fight with her, and much to everyone's surprise, Lucy agrees, claiming that she trained on her own. However, Natsu suddenly senses something, shooting flames out of his mouth that travel all the way to the town's outskirts, hitting bandits in the midst of stealing a wagon. Later, Natsu and the others reach Margaret Town just to witness the Lamia Scales Thanksgiving Day, much to Natsu's horror as he watches Wendy singing and dancing. That is when they're approached by a girl with cat ears and a tail, someone who is seemingly expecting their arrival. After the parade is over, Lion brings Natsu and the others to Wendy, who's happy to see them again. After Natsu's initial attempt to take Wendy by force, the group sits down and they talk about Fairy Tales revival, as well as the council being reconstructed by the Ten Wizard Saints, something that Natsu seems to like. Natsu is angered when Wendy refuses to return until Carla appears and the attention shifts to her human form. After returning to the inn, the group is taken aback because of Wendy's decision. However, Natsu uses the moment to tickle Lucy. Later, Natsu and the others go outside to find the source of the commotion just to learn that the town is being attacked by monsters summoned by a rival guild. Natsu offers his help. However, when he attends to attack from air, it is Sheria that takes Happy, and together with Wendy and Carla, they fly in order to save Lamia Scale in the town. A short while later, Natsu is still upset that Happy's been taken from him. Not wanting to let it go, Natsu rushes after Wendy and Sheria, making his way through the monsters approaching the town, shocking everyone with his strength. Unbeknownst to him, he arrives just in time to save Sheria from Blue Note's gravity magic, seemingly immune to this ability. Even though Natsu attempts to scold Sheria for taking Happy, after being told that it is not the time for this, he switches his attention to Blue Note, someone he does not recognize. Even though Blue Note remembers Natsu as someone weak, he feels something else this time, and so he charges at the dragon Slayer and attempt to crush him with his gravity magic. Natsu effortlessly negates it, using his flames to raise the ground below him, and giving no chance to his opponent, he blasts the former Grimoire Mage with his roar attack, ending the battle in one hit, much to everyone's shock. Natsu makes a second attempt to scold Sheria, but Happy points out that there are still some enemies left, albeit those surrender right away. Later, Lamia Scale thanks Natsu and others for their part in saving the town, and together with Wendy, they leave for Amifurashi Village, a place where another fairy tale mage is to be found. As Natsu and the others get closer to the town, they notice that the rain is falling only inside of the town. After Natsu and Happy finish playing around with this phenomenon, they enter the town thinking it's abandoned. However, Natsu picks up Jubia's smell, so they advance. Eventually, she is found, and after the group's arrival is mistaken for Grey's return, Jubia loses consciousness, much to Natsu's worry. Inside her house, Natsu notices Grey's smell as well, and after Jubia wakes up, he learns that the two were living together, until one day he left and had yet to return for a year and a half. Natsu belittles him for that, however, Lucy reminds him of his own actions during the year. Afterwards, Natsu promises that he will get Grey back, along with everyone else, so they can reform the guild. Then, with a stern gaze, Natsu states that he is going to the nearby Sabretooth. Riding an animal to reach their destination, Natsu, Lucy, and Happy arrive to Sabretooth's town, noticing their guild building from afar. Lucy questions whether any information about Grey can really be found here, and even though Natsu tries to explain himself, Lucy doesn't understand his words, so he just promises to bring Grey back. Finally, at Sabretooth, Natsu is greeted by the guild. However, when Lecter notes that Rogue, Frosh, and Minerva have just left for a job, he rushes after them. After catching up with the trio, Natsu quickly grabs Rogue to have a private conversation. Finding that his job is to destroy Avatar, Natsu insists to perform this job himself in spite of Rogue's protests. He also warns the Sabretooth Mage not to leave the town along with Frosh. Recalling future Rogue's words about Grey being Frosh's killer, Natsu thinks to himself that Grey is an essential part of Fairy Tale, just as he, Lucy, and Happy had to destroy the Guild of Cultists. Some time later, Natsu's group is seen taking a break in the middle of a forest. After Natsu learns that Avatar is a group of mages worshipping Xerath, he eventually reveals that Grey is supposed to be their enemy, commenting on the black marks that have appeared over his body. Seeing that Lucy is getting worried, he reassures her that Grey is still one of them. Not long after, the group reaches their destination, with Natsu smirking that all they have to do now is make a direct attack. However, before he and Happy can rush into the building, they're stopped by Lucy, who insists that they follow a plan of infiltration, summoning Virgo and donning her version of Star Dress so that they may enter the building by tunneling underground. Inside the church, Natsu yells out for Grey, busting their cover and subsequently facing three members of Avatar, defeating them with no effort. That is when Grey appears, claiming that the Avatar mages cannot defeat Natsu and the Fire Dragon Slayer smirks, greeting his former friend. After punching each other, Grey asks Natsu about the reason for their arrival to such a place, which Natsu counters with the same question, wondering what Grey is doing at Avatar's HQ. 
They continue to battle, exchanging punches and kicks just as Grey replies that he does what he wants. Natsu notes that Juvia has been waiting for him, even himself wanting to revive Fairy Tail. Grey laughs it off, stating that Fairy Tail is no more, and when Natsu argues that it still exists in their hearts, Grey asks him to leave it at that, claiming that there is nothing of the guild inside him anymore. After Lucy comes forward, slapping Grey for his words, Natsu is worried to see her suddenly fall down in pain. Before he can learn the cause from Mary, Gomon uses his chains to capture both him and Virgo, with Jerome further disallowing him to act as he uses his sword to threaten Lucy. Natsu yells at Grey to come to his senses, claiming that the Ice Mage has been possessed by demons. However, Grey states that his current form is his true self, revealing that there is no fairy tale guild mark on his body anymore, further angering Natsu. Later, Natsu, Lucy, and Happy sit in Avatar's prison cells and discuss Grey's recent activities, when Gomon suddenly appears in front of their cell. He plans to torture Lucy for information regarding who sent her and her comrades to Avatar, but after being angered by Natsu, decides to skip the torture and grabs an axe to cut Lucy in half, much to Natsu's anger. However, Gomon is suddenly frozen solid thanks to Grey, who appears to assist the trio. Natsu is surprised to see all of this, and his surprise only grows when Grey hands him a communication lacrima, from which he hears the voice of Urza. Afterwards, while they're on the move, Grey and Urza explain everything about Grey's infiltration mission, as well as his markings. After learning the true purpose of his actions, Natsu points out that Grey didn't even let Juvia know about this, and Urza explains that it was for the sake of the plan, as well as Juvia's. The Dragon Slayer then questions why the two didn't just crush Avatar on their own, own, possessing the necessary power, and Grey tells him about the size of Avatar, with all the cells of the organization getting together only for the purification plan. With a smirk on his face, Natsu states that it's time to destroy the cultists, overjoyed that after a year they get to be fired up yet again. Now at Malba City, Natsu, Grey, Lucy, and Happy stand in the way of the attacking cultists. Natsu comments on Grey's improved abilities, with the Ice Mage replying that he can show them off later. With Urza attacking from the rear, Natsu, with his fist set aflame, states that he's now warmed up, ready to crush Avatar as a part of what was once the strongest team of Fairy Tail. Natsu, Grey, and Lucy then charge at their enemies, effortlessly overpowering them with their respective abilities. As the battle progresses, Natsu makes his way through the cultists. Standing in front of a lock, he states that no matter how many opponents they face, losing is not an option as they're all fairy tale mages. A lock doesn't last long against Natsu, as the fire dragon slayer easily deflects the priest's attacks, as well as destroys his barriers, defeating him with his fist. Lying on the ground, a lock laughs, revealing that for this day he has burnt his face as a price for summoning one of the eight. 18 Yakuma gods, and Natsu watches as a gigantic figure is brought near them, crushing anyone in its way, much to Natsu's rage. The Yakuma god then brings down its sword, causing immense destruction. Afterwards, Natsu is seen running on that sword in an attempt to reach its body. Alok considers his efforts to be futile. Natsu argues with him about friendship, telling him not to look down on bonds among comrades. Claiming that he will get stronger in order to never lose someone before his eyes again, Natsu uses Fire Dragon King's Destruction Fist to deliver a powerful strike, thanks to which the Yakuma God is completely destroyed. Seeing this, the members of Avatar begin to run away. However, their escape is foiled by the arrival of the Magic Council's army. Natsu recognizes Levi and Panther Lily among them, coming to greet his friends. However, he's unable to believe that Gajil is also a member of the council, claiming him to be a lookalike. They argue until Urza arrives, much to Natsu's horror. Natsu notices that Frosh is also there, shocked that Rogue broke his promise. However, after seeing everyone get along with the Egg Seed, he smiles, happy to see everything turn out well. Afterwards, Natsu and the rest arrive to Magnolia, with the Dragon Slayer feeling excited to see the town once more. He notices Lucy's unusual behavior, and when she stops, claiming that she's unable to take another step, Natsu reassures her that even if the building isn't there, it doesn't mean a thing. Lucy's worries are proven to be meaningless as Kana appears, taking them to where everyone else is. As Lucy cries over the guild's return, Natsu takes out the damaged flag of the guild from the ruins of the building, declaring the revival of Fairy Tail. Alvarez Empire Arc As per tradition, Natsu and Happy make themselves at home at Lucy's apartment. Finding them there after finishing her shower, Lucy attempts to kick them in fury. However, this time, Natsu easily blocks her kick and blames her lack of training. Natsu then states that they have a job to do. However, the moment of joy doesn't last long as the towel wrapped around Lucy slips and Natsu gets a full view of her body. Later, as Lucy complains that the job is actually rebuilding their destroyed guild building, Natsu is enthusiastic about it, wanting to finish as quickly as possible. 
He then comments on Lisana's appearance, as well as the training that Elfman has underwent, wanting to test out his newfound strength. The two proceed to punch each other, eventually dragging other members into the fight, making it a full-scale brawl. As Urza puts a stop to the scuffle, and Levy realizes that she's the one who can control everyone, naming her the seventh guildmaster, Natsu witnesses the arrival of Mest, who claims that they are the only ones who can save Makarov. Later, Natsu and some others barge into the restricted place below the guild building, unable to accept that only Urza, the new guildmaster, is allowed to see what's there. Upon witnessing a naked Mavis in a crystal, Natsu is surprised. However, not even Mest has information about its true purpose, only knowing that it's called Lumen Histoire. Natsu then questions Makarov's whereabouts, and Mest shares his memories with everyone, telling them about the mission that Makarov gave him back then, as well as the true reason behind Fairy Tales disbanding, the threat of the Alvarez Empire. Natsu is shocked to hear that Makarov left the continent a year ago and still isn't back, expressing worry that something may have happened to him. The discussion continues until Natsu simply states that they have to go and save him, which the majority agrees on. However, Urza puts a stop to this, and not even Natsu's argument that they've gotten stronger helps. Natsu expresses his disagreement, as Urza states that as Guildmaster, she wishes to focus on rebuilding the guild. However, when she says that as a fairy tale member, she wants to save Makarov, Natsu agrees with the plan of going on an infiltration mission and smiles, thinking that they will definitely save their master. Later, they all head to the Alvarez Empire via boat, something which afflicts Natsu with terrible motion sickness. He attempts to get Wendy to stop the sickness with Troya, but she is too motion sick herself to cast the spell, and so Grey carries both Natsu and Wendy to their rooms to recuperate. On the way to Alvarez, Mest tells them that they need to make a stop at Caracol Island to get supplies. As they approach the coast, they see Alvarez Navy ships, and Natsu and Wendy, who can hear what's going on in the naval vessels, tell everyone that their troops are at Caracol looking for a spy. To avoid suspicion, Natsu and the others change their fairy tale guild marks to Kate Shelter guild marks, and tell the Alvarez nation men that they are just on vacation. They make it past the guards, but once they see a child about to be stabbed by one of the Alvarez Navy men, Natsu, Urza, Lucy, and Grey attack him while Wendy comforts the child. With their cover blown, they take out the rest of the Alvarez soldiers who attack them, settling afterwards to await any more who may come. As Wendy and Carla take the child to safety and Mess teleports away to look for the informant, Natsu and the others sit down with a local vendor and talk with him about his business. However, the man's shop is suddenly blown away in a large explosion. From the rubble, a stranger approaches, introducing himself as a member of the Alvarez Empire's brandish squad, Marin Hollow. Marin cancels out Urza and Lucy's magic and spirits them away in a cloud of smoke. Seeing their comrades disappear, Natsu and Grey ask Marin where he sent them. Marin replies that Lucy and Urza passed the test and thus were sent to his relaxation dimension, but angrily tells Natsu and Grey that they didn't pass the test. At that moment, he drops an injured mest in front of them and says that he didn't pass the test either. Natsu and Grey then angrily try to attack Marin but he gets the best of them using his spatial magic. Before their battle can continue, Brandish Mu of the Spriggan 12 appears, and Natsu is terrified by her immense magic power. Natsu is surprised when she doesn't attack, but instead expresses interest in eating star mango gelato. When she sees the destroyed shack, Marin blames it on Natsu and Grey, much to their annoyance. After Marin argues about returning the fairy tale girls at Prandish's request, she showcases her magic by emerging the entire island from the ocean, further astounding Natsu, and Marin complies. The two then get ready to leave, but Natsu stops them, claiming that they injured Mast and that he won't let such a thing slide. Brandish then disintegrates Marin, killing him, and tells the shocked fairy tale mages that they're now evil. Even. She then states that Makarov is alive and tells him to go home, shrinking the island to only a sliver of land as proof of Alvarez's immense power. Thankfully, a fishing fleet happens to be nearby, and Natsu soon finds himself on one of the ships, with his motion sickness taking effect once more. However, it's not long before Mess teleports everyone to an underwater temple, and Natsu rejoices that there is no vehicle anymore. He continues having fun, exploring the palace until it starts to move, and Natsu returns to his previous state, lying on the ground while the rest of the group meets with the spy, Sorano, who states that they're heading to where Makarov is. Later, Natsu and his friends trek to Visterion, and Natsu witnesses Makarov's return, having been teleported to the group with Mest's help. The mages are overjoyed at seeing him after such a long time. However, the revelry is cut short as Mest mentions that Zeref is in the Alvarez Empire as well, something that shocks Natsu. After learning that Zeref is, in fact, Emperor Spriggan, Natsu watches as Makarov weeps that his actions over the past 10 years were useless, much to everyone's disagreement. 
He walks over to a kneeling Makarov, claiming that they will now go home as he helps him to stand. However, before they can do anything, Ajil Remel, another member of the Spriggan 12, appears in front of them, halting their escape. As per Makarov's orders, the group tries to flee on a magical vehicle just to be followed by a giant golem made of sand, Ajil standing atop it. Natsu and Wendy are once again feeling the effects of motion sickness while Lucy and Grey attempt to defend the group. However, they are eventually trapped in a quicksand pit, with Ajil gloating that no one has escaped this spell before. As he claims that Ishgar has been abandoned by the gods, Natsu creates a huge explosion to evaporate the sand and states that they still have fairies. Revealing his guild symbol, Natsu charges, punching Ajil in the face. Natsu then watches as Ajil unharmed attacks using his sand, with Grey unsuccessfully attempting to freeze them. However, Makarov takes action, trying to protect Natsu and the others in his giant form by using his body to shield them, just as Ajil's sands of death rage towards them. Natsu protests against this, having the desire to continue the fight, but Makarov insists on not letting Ajil harm his children. That is when Loxus's lightning disperses the sand wave, saving them, and an impressed Natsu watches as the lightning mage stands firm on top of the airship Christina, with the rest of his team aboard the ship alongside him. Natsu questions how dragon slayers are able to ride the airship, excited to find out that it's been altered that way, once Mess teleports them to it. Thanks to Laxus's gigantic lightning blast, the group manages to fly away to safety, and Natsu is then present as a teary-eyed Makarov rejoices, having reunited with his family. Later in the guild, everyone celebrates Makarov's return. As Gajil takes notice of Wendy's now developed motion sickness, Natsu tells her not to worry as he's always been like that. The party continues until Makarov brings the attention to him by apologizing for his action, as an entire country is after their guild now. However, Natsu encourages everyone, claiming that they will protect their guild one more time so that they can live on and have fun together once more. He smiles and exclaims that he's fired up as Makarov states that they will take their enemy down. However, just as Makarov begins explaining the nature of Fairy Heart, Mavis appears to take on his role and, much to Natsu's surprise, readies to reveal her past with Zerif. After Mavis finishes, Natsu expresses his shock upon learning the true purpose of Fairy Heart as eternal magic, even more when it's described as something that could power up Ethereon infinitely. The group continues discussing Alvarez's intentions with Acnologia until the topic of Zerif's immortality is brought up to which Natsu excitedly replies that he will be the one to take care of the Dark Mage as his right arm is a secret weapon meant to do that. When questioned about it, Natsu exclaims one more time that it's secret, much to everyone's dissatisfaction. He explains that it's something he created in order to defeat Zerif, however he can only use it once. Natsu then listens to Makarov revealing all the information he has about Alvarez, recognizing Ajil as one that they have fought when the Sand Mage is brought up. However, he expresses his surprise when Makarov describes August as someone being even higher than Zeref with his usage of magic. The fairy tale mages then begin their planning, ready to show the enemy their guild's power. Later in her room, as Lucy writes about Mavis and Fairyheart, Natsu and Happy suddenly appear behind her, commenting on her talent as an aspiring writer in a teasing way. As always, Lucy is not amused to see them in her room without any permission, however the two state that they should go hang out, with these streets being empty as the evacuation has finished. Lucy doesn't like the idea and also states that she isn't excited for the battle at all, and Natsu agrees with the notion, claiming that even though he likes contests of strength, fights to the death are not something he enjoys. He continues, noting that this is the battle they have to win or there will be no future left for them, wanting to do some things once everything is over. Lucy stops him there, pointing out that something like this can be considered a death flag in real life. However, Natsu states that Igniel told him to talk about the future as if it's something that will make him want to live. Afterwards, they decide to play games with a suggestion of strip poker being thrown in as well. Later, while still in the midst of a game, Natsu and the others notice some noise coming from the outside, signaling the arrival of the Alvarez Empire's forces. As part of the Flying Dragon Squad, Natsu, Gajil, and Wendy attack the enemy ships carried by their Exceed. As the three manage to destroy several ships, the enemy responds with an attack of their own, causing the Dragon Slayers to be unable to get close anymore. However, that is when Biska finally charges and fires Jupiter, and even though Ajil manages to scatter the blast, it still takes down several ships and allows Natsu and the others to land at Ajil's position. Much to Ajil's surprise, the Dragon Slayers are immediately affected by their motion sickness, something that Mavis didn't think of. Unable to move, Natsu is grabbed by Ajil, with the Spriggan making fun of him and his previous speech. However, it's then that a part of his ship is cut off and Natsu and the others fall down, as Urza arrives to face Ajil. 
A worried Natsu and the rest of his team then decide to leave it to Urza and head back to the enemy ships that have landed. As they arrive, they immediately begin attacking the enemy troops, with Natsu taking several of them down with his magic. That is when Bakul intercepts, blowing away Natsu's fire as well as Natsu himself. The two then clash, with Happy noting that Natsu shouldn't have any issues with a guy like this. However, Natsu replies that he needs to pace himself as there's no telling how many more opponents he's going to face, which causes Happy to tear up on how Natsu's grown up. Shortly afterwards, the enemies of Natsu and others are seen on the ground. Happy points out that this took longer than expected, and Natsu explains that they were just holding back. Suddenly, Bakul appears behind Natsu and attacks him, claiming that they can't even defeat the Ajil squad, let alone the whole Alvarez Empire. However, Natsu is seemingly unfazed and throws a powerful punch, shooting Bakul all the way through Ajil's main ship in the air. Suddenly, Natsu begins to feel the effects of Ajil's sandstorm affecting the whole town, being surrounded by sand, unable to see anything. However, soon the sands are dispelled and Natsu smiles, having noticed Ajil's defeat at the hands of Biska and Urza. However, he soon realizes that an exhausted Urza is falling down from the destroyed ship and rushes to her side, catching her just in time before she hits the ground. Natsu then begs Urza to let him know if she's okay, relieved when she responds. After Natsu notes that Wendy will soon be there, Urza raises her fist in a victory pose, putting yet another smile on Natsu's face. Afterwards, Natsu informs Freed that all the foes from the west have been dealt with. And when Ichia protects Fairy Tail from a powerful attack, Natsu looks on gleefully. A day after the initial attack, Natsu and Happy speed off directly to face Zeref. As they near Zeref's personal army, Natsu likens the sea of soldiers to the audience of a black carpet and resolves to burn the carpet just like the one he did at his and Happy's house. They descend and Natsu attacks the army, killing just under 1,000 soldiers with his Fire Dragon King's roar after a brief bout of melee, all in an attempt to lure out Zeref, which succeeds. Staring down his foe, Natsu unwraps the bandages on his arm, intent on using his secret weapon to kill Zeref. After Zeref asks the accompanying Invel to force his army to fall back, Natsu asks Happy to do the same, and then finished unraveling the bandages on his arm, revealing a draconian tattoo that radiates extreme heat and magic power. Natsu then strikes Zeref burns away his black magic when he's about to be struck by a killing blow and then repeatedly overwhelms him with his newfound power, despite receiving a fairly substantial gash on his face in the process. When asked what his new power is, Natsu reveals that it's the vestiges of Igniel's magic power left inside his body, and that whenever he uses the magic power, unlike his own, it does not regenerate and will disappear forever eventually. With this, Natsu releases all the magic power in the form of Fire Dragon King mode and attacks Zeref with an extremely powerful punch, hoping to end their battle once and for all. After the dust clears, Natsu realizes he'd failed and that Zeref is still alive. He collapses momentarily, but then rises after Happy expresses concern, stating that he has one more punch left. As he prepares to deliver the final blow, Zeref stops Natsu and praises him for gaining the strength to kill him, just like he's always wanted, and then reveals to Natsu that he is his older brother. A shocked Natsu is then told that 400 years ago, he and their parents were killed by a dragon, and that Zeref revived him as End. He is also told, in regards to his query about Igniel not killing End, that Igniel could have killed Natsu, but elected not to because he loved him like his own son. When Natsu brings up End's status as the creator and master of Tartaros, Zeref reveals that Mard Gear created Tartaros after accidentally stumbling upon End's tome, and used the tome to unite the other Ethereus under one singular cause. However, he does cite Natsu as an accidental assistant in the creation of the Dark Guild. When Natsu defiantly declares that he isn't End, Zeref reveals the tome and damages it, causing pain in Natsu's chest, proving their link. Zeref continues, explaining that he sought advice from his friend Igniel, and that Igniel planned to raise Natsu and teach him dragon slaying magic, and together with four other pacifistic dragons planned on concealing themselves within their slayer children and travel to the future via Eclipse to feed off the rich Aether Nano to recover and defeat Agnologia, courtesy of the celestial spirit mages Anna Hartphilia of the past and Layla Hartphilia of the future. With this, Natsu learns that he, Gajil, Wendy, Sting, and Rogue are all children from 400 years ago, and that July 7th, X777, was the day they arrived in the future. Natsu, however, does not believe this and moves to kill Zeref, despite the warning that if he dies, then so will Natsu as he is his creation. Natsu expresses his lack of care over such a matter and prepares to sacrifice himself, but he's stopped by Happy, who reprimands Natsu for carelessly throwing away his life and forsaking his friends. He's then quickly flown back to the guild, the last remains of Igniel's power disappearing forever and having lost his chance to kill his immortal brother. Happy later lands in a forest some distance away. 
Natsu asks him how his paws are doing as the heat from Fire Dragon King mode burnt him, and he is told that they're fine. Natsu then looks down to where Igniel's tattoo used to be and thinks about everything he learned from Zeref, but his thought process is broken by Happy, who tells him that no matter what, they'll always be friends. He's then given a hug by his ex seed companion and is told that they'll find a way to defeat Zeref that doesn't involve Natsu dying, which Natsu promises to find. However, shortly after, Natsu collapses, leaving a stressed Happy to fly him back to Lucy and Magnolia. Natsu's body is then examined, and it's revealed that he has developed an anti-Ether Nano tumor from years of overexhausting his magic. Because no surgeon in Ishgar can remove the malignant mass, and neither Wendy nor Sharia can mitigate its effects in any way, the present Brandish Mu offers to shrink the tumor to a non-lethal size with her magic, and does so, after which Natsu remains unconscious and recuperates in a nearby bed. Natsu's stay in the infirmary is interrupted by the intrusion of Jacob Lesio, whose magic is used to erase everyone in the guild. Before he too can be erased, Horologium appears and saves him, as well as Lucy and Happy. Natsu awakens shortly thereafter and runs to Lucy's rescue when Jacob throws knives at her, intercepting and melting them. Claiming that if Lucy was cut into pieces, then there'd be much less of her to go around, Natsu threatens to turn Jacob into ash in lieu of hurting his friend. Natsu's then asked if he enjoyed his nap, which he replies he did and adds that he's all charged up. Natsu then immediately engages Jacob in combat, but is overtaken by him. However, when the man becomes invisible and attacks him, as well as Mavis, Natsu becomes confused. When Jacob disappears yet again, Loki is summoned to dispel his camouflage, which works, but then an annoyed Jacob attacks all of them with invisible weapons. When he hits Lucy with an invisible whip, Natsu prepares to attack Jacob, but he is stopped and forced to the ground, where Jacob says he will subject Natsu to torture. The man makes Lucy's star dress invisible, revealing her undergarments as an attempt to rustle Natsu, but Natsu is unaffected affected by Lucy's lack of clothing. When Jacob reveals himself to not want to look at Lucy to be polite, Natsu comes up with the idea of convincing Jacob that Lucy has stripped off the rest of her clothes, thus forcing him to lower his guard, which allows both him and Lucy to kick Jacob in the face. Natsu and Lucy continue to combat Jacob, but he easily dominates the two of them in hand-to-hand -hand combat and states that he's going to start killing their captured friends one by one. Lucy, however, tells Jacob that Brandish was captured by him as well, and after checking his transport, he releases both her and Marin. When Marin exits, Natsu notices that another Marin has appeared, but quickly becomes impressed when he sees that it is Gemini taking his form. Natsu then watches as Lucy uses rules of the area to free their guildmates, and then after Makarov throws Jacob out of the guild, Natsu is grabbed and thrown out as well so that he can use his full power. As he flies over a lake, he evaporates the water with his Fire Dragon King mode and defeats Jacob in one hit with Fire Dragon King's Destruction Fist. After, Natsu visits Brandish, who is back in her cell, and happily thanks her for saving him when he was afflicted with the tumor, after which he listens to her ominous warning regarding the incoming August. Wanting to fight August by himself, Makarov objects as August is the most powerful shield of Spriggan, annoying the Dragon Slayer in the process. Overhearing their conversation, Brandish, having been freed by Natsu, comments that while it is true that August is the strongest man, Irene Belserion is the strongest woman amongst them, known as Scarlet Despair, everyone petrified to hear that. When the guild decides to accept Brandish's offer to attempt to call a truce with August, Natsu, Happy, and Lucy eagerly accompany the former prisoner on their mission. Mess joining the group when Natsu catches him tailing them. Their transportation problem is solved when Brandish turns Happy into a colossus. As Happy carries the group towards August, Natsu and Brandish entertain themselves at Lucy's expense. However, as soon as they approach their objective, the entire group is overawed by August's magic power. Natsu's fear visible through his bravado, though he prepares for the worst when the negotiations go downhill from the very beginning. Things begin to look up when Brandish manages to convince August to listen to their side, but in a bizarre turn of events, the female shield of Spriggan ends up standing August at the behest of Mest, who altered Brandish's memories to obtain this result. Natsu condemning his ally for his treachery. As August unleashes his rage and knocks Brandish unconscious, Natsu jumps in to stop Lucy from approaching Brandish in order to protect her. However, August casts a spell that covers an entire area and the mage is present there in a pillar of explosion. Suddenly, Natsu, Lucy, and Happy find themselves in a forest, not knowing that Irene's Universe 1 has caused them to be transformed and changed the size of the country, which becomes apparent to them as soon as they notice the Cardia Cathedral and Mercurius being placed close to each other. Looking for the cause, Natsu and the others come closer, but only notice more things amiss, such as the guild or the town missing. This is when Natsu senses something approaching, and the group reunites with Juvia and Grey, the latter carrying a wounded Urza. Then, a reappeared Zera contacts all of Fairy Tale through telepathy to let them know of the guild's location, asking them to protect Mavis, and Natsu agrees with the notion immediately following her words. 
Natsu is later seen sleeping on the ground near the guild's new location, with Urza wondering if this is their last dawn as she sees the armies awaiting them. However, Natsu, now awake, states that he'll make sure that they see a new tomorrow, with everyone else getting ready. Even though Natsu and the others are surprised to see the size of the army awaiting them, they decide to face them head on in order to make some progress in recapturing their guild while waiting for everyone else to arrive. Natsu is the first to charge at their enemies, taking out a group of soldiers with a huge explosion, while others also process defeating parts of the army. Soon enough, more members of Fairy Tale come to their aid, with Natsu delighted to see Wendy. However, their way is soon barred by God Serena, and Natsu is eager to use his flaming attack to calm his hunger. Much to his surprise, God Serena's array of attacks overwhelms him and his guildmates until Gildards blocks the spell, with Natsu happy to see the arrival of Fairy Tail's strongest. Natsu then watches as Gildards clashes with God Serena, having to defend himself against the sheer force of their magic. Afterwards, as the battle continues, Natsu yells out words of encouragement, running into more soldiers. As Gildarts defeats God Serena, Natsu puts a big smile on his face, joining everyone for the march towards the guild. Intending to wipe out the soldiers in his way, Natsu tries to attack, but his flames are suddenly frozen. Even though he initially blames Grey, as Lucy and Juvia are suddenly feeling cold, Natsu surrounds the area with his flames. These are also immediately frozen solid, and Natsu's own body as well as Lucy and Juvia turn to ice, unable to defend against the might of Invel's power. That doesn't last for long as Natsu does break free, melting the ice much to Invel's surprise. Brandish, with the use of her magic to become a giant, grabs Natsu, Happy, and Lucy, forcefully taking them all away. Natsu and the others are then dropped by Brandish, who explains to them that she's sparing their lives out of respect for what they did for her. However, she then states that she's going to slaughter all their friends and that the Empire's victory is assured. In response to Brandish's claim that they don't know the might of the Twelve, Natsu claims that she doesn't know Fairy Tail's true might either. Natsu then goes on to challenge Brandish, but an Irene enhanced Nineheart appears in search of Urza, where he proves himself able to resist and overpower Brandish. The Dragon Slayer immediately makes short work of Nineheart, claiming persistence and resolve are the only means they need to retrieve their guild. Following Nineheart's defeat, Natsu warns Brandish that if she gets in their way, he'll fight her too, but she re enlarges his tumor, which causes the Dragon Slayer to writhe in pain before losing consciousness. Natsu then regains consciousness just long enough to witness Lucy get overwhelmed in a fight against Brandish and then passes out yet again. Later, Natsu alongside Lucy is tied to a chair by Di Maria, having managed to capture the two after wounding Brandish. As one of the twelve places her scimitar in a position to decapitate him, it's elsewhere explained how Natsu's tumor isn't anti-ether nano, but rather something far worse. Meanwhile, Natsu continues to be motionless and so Di Maria moves to Lucy, threatening to torture her. She removes Lucy's bikini top and then uses her time-stopping ability to appear back at Natsu, laughing that she will strip the boy as well. Natsu still remains motionless. This continues until Di Maria motions to mutilate Lucy's face, wherein Natsu wakes up and brutalizes Di Maria, completely able to move within her age seal. After defeating her, Natsu goes over to Lucy's body but finds that she is immobile. Thinking that she's dead, the shock causes him to fully awaken as end. The Dragon Slayer then enters the battlefield, burning any Alvarez soldiers that stand in the way of his vehement pursuit of Zeref alive. Just as he pinpoints the Black Wizard's location, he happens upon Grey, who arrives to confront the demonic form of his friend. Natsu demands that Grey move out of the way so he can defeat Zeref, his words coming out broken and his goal single-minded. Natsu violently clashes with Grey, who coldly expresses the desire to kill Natsu out of hatred for Zeref's demons. The two wounded men continue to clash quite evenly, but during the battle therein, Natsu recalls his awakening and angrily shouts that nobody can stop him, which only serves to further fuel Grey's rage. The two are briefly caught in the light of Makarov's final fairy law, but continue their battle wherein neither manages to gain any significant advantage. The back and forth eventually comes to an end, and the two prepare their own killing blows, but their punches are stopped by a tearful Urza, much to their surprise, who asks them what they're doing. Natsu immediately recalls his words to Jellal during the incident at the Tower of Heaven, but after Urza paraphrases Makarov and dissuades them from continuing their fight, Natsu's steady demonic transformation reverses itself, and he and Grey are brought in for a hug on Urza's behalf. At that moment, Juvia, Wendy, and Carla arrive, after which Grey and Juvia collapse. Natsu follows shortly, but falls into Lucy's arms. After greeting Happy, Natsu loses consciousness. Natsu is then carried by Lucy, but the group is attacked by Irene Belserion from whom Natsu is shielded by Lucy. Thanks to Spriggan 12 Larked Dragneel's widespread use of pleasure affecting Irene, but not the rest of those present, Natsu is able to be taken away safely. As those around talk about how they cannot treat the mass inside of Natsu, his body starts emitting smoke. Inside his heart, Natsu is visited by an apparition of Zeref, whom he unsuccessfully tries to attack despite the latter's warning that he cannot be harmed due to where they are. Through Zeref's apparition, Natsu learns about his past before Igneel, where he and Zeref lived with their parents, when he died, and when he was reborn as End. 
Zerif's apparition then turns into one of Sting upon Natsu realizing that he and the other Dragon Slayers were all friends during their childhood 400 years ago. Natsu becomes confused at the fact that Sting appeared in Zerif's place, but he explains that his heart erased Zerif and put him in place. Natsu is told that if he follows him, he'll learn his true identity and what lurks inside of him. Natsu does just that, but finds that Sting has turned into Rogue, much to his annoyance, and learns from the Shadow Dragon Slayer that Igniel's scarf, which was made of his fallen scales, was not handcrafted by the dragon, but rather a woman named Anna. Upon seeing Anna, Natsu confuses her for Lucy. Rogue turns back into Zeref, who remarks upon Anna's kindness, and tells his little brother that the secret to his death is only just further ahead. Meanwhile, in the real world, Natsu's temperature keeps plummeting, and though Lucy prepares to strip to warm his body back up, Natsu begins mumbling about his inborn desire to kill Zeref. Natsu is subsequently disrobed and has the naked Lucy and Happy lie on top of him in a desperate attempt to raise his body temperature. In his mind, his guides change to Wendy and Gajil, who reveal to him that long ago, Anna told him about a woman named Irene who invented Dragon Slayer magic, and that in response to Natsu's growing frustration with not being told the cause of his imminent death, they are simply his guides and don't have the answers. Natsu continues the journey through his subconscious, having lost Wendy and Gajil, and runs into Igniel, who tells him about the Dragon Seed, and how that is what lies in his body, and that it turns all Dragon Slayers into dragons, but reminds him that he created antibodies to stop that. Surprised to see Igniel, Natsu learns that he has another seed inside of him, called the Demon Seed, that is trying to fuse with the Dragon Seed. He asks Igniel if that is the reason why he's going to die, and upon learning that he is, the Dragon Slayer becomes forlorn. Sad that he's going to die before he finishes what he wants to do, Igniel berates him for not listening all the way through. Natsu is told that he will die if the seeds fuse, thus he only has to choose whether he wants to be a dragon or a demon. Natsu decides that he wants to be neither, and that he's a human. Igniel states that this is the correct answer, and that Natsu's doubts about his own humanity causes the seeds to grow, as they both crumble into pieces. Encouraged by his dead parent to walk on, Natsu wakes up, thanking Lucy and Happy for taking care of him. Upon hearing Lucy's concern for his well-being if he defeats Zeref, Natsu reveals that he just had to decide that he was human for his life not to be threatened. He wonders where Urza and Grey are, just after Happy reveals that Grey is in the next room and that Urza is still fighting due to Irene's death, Universe 1 is undone, and Fiore is returned to its true shape. After the light dissipates, the three find themselves to be in Lucy's room, which Natsu finds to be perfect as they can easily head right for Fairy Tale. After getting dressed, the three leave the apartment and run into Brandish and a shrunken Di Maria. Natsu gets close to Di Maria, which causes her to fret and apologizes to her for losing control. After Lucy and Brandish say their goodbyes, the group is told that Grey has disappeared. Before they can think about this, August reveals that he is atop Cardia Cathedral and prepares to eradicate Magnolia, but is stopped by Gildarts. Smiling at the outcome, Natsu calls out for Happy to join him and he runs towards the guild to fight Zeref. Lucy asks him about Grey, but Natsu tells her that he thinks that Grey is heading for Zeref as well. Natsu arrives at the guild just in time to stop Grey from killing himself with Lost Ice Shell. Angry, he asks Grey if he forgot that he stopped him from using it once before. When Grey tells him that he can't stay in the guild anymore because he lost control and tried to kill him, a friend, Natsu says that he did the exact same thing, and then, with tears in his eyes, asks Grey if they are friends. He goes on, telling Grey to keep on living, but his friend worries for his life. Hearing his brother chime in, saying that win or lose he'll die, Natsu stands up and says that he won't die, but that if it is his destiny, he'll burn burn it, which provokes Zeref. The two brothers then exchange blows, with Natsu being overwhelmed and batted around. Upon Zeref remarking that the loss of Igniel's power means he cannot be defeated, Natsu stands up and declares that his own power will suffice. Before they can continue, everyone in the guild hall senses Acnologia's descent upon the battlefield. Natsu is told to die so that humanity can live. Natsu and Zeref continue their battle, with the latter gradually improving and managing to hit Zeref with Fire Dragon's roar. However, Zeref is shown to have shielded himself before the two continue. As they go on, Lucy and the others take their leave as the latter tells Natsu not to lose, and while grabbing Zeref, he affirms that he won't. Zeref then remarks that he's really enjoying himself. Natsu expresses annoyance at this until he's overcome by a sudden sensation. He turns to see Larkade Dragneel, who has made it to the guild and cast a spell upon him. Natsu questions Larkade's identity, and he's surprised to hear him call Zeref father, and struggles to stay awake from the spell as Larkade tells Zeref to kill Natsu. Natsu is then shocked to see Zeref blast a hole through Larkade. 
Natsu watches as Zeref stomps on Larkade's wound, stating that he has no child, and says that Larkade is an Aetherius and was one of his attempts at reviving him. He is disgusted when Zeref kicks away Larkade, calling him a failure, and tells Zeref to stop as the latter tells him to continue their fight. He witnesses Larkade plead to Zeref as the latter shuns him, stating that he has no children or family before he destroys him. Infuriated, Natsu questions Zeref as to how he can do that to his own comrade, to which Zeref states that he was nothing to him, and causes Natsu to punch him, declaring that there was no such thing as a parent who didn't love their own child. Zeref goes on about how he tried his best to obtain happiness and states his curse prevents this as he was not allowed to have such a thing or family. Hearing this, an irritated Natsu grabs and tells Zeref that it wasn't the way to have a family as he must create his own happiness. He further tells Zeref if he will claim he doesn't have a family, any bond they may have shared was gone before acknowledging and referring to Zeref as his older brother. Though slightly speechless, Zeref shrugs this off stating he didn't think that Natsu would feel that way. Natsu states it was emotion as Zeref agreed, calling Natsu end before they prepare to face off again. Natsu then continues his battle with Zeref and manages to punch him back, causing a crazed Zeref to tell him to attack him with everything he's got as the two are meant to destroy each other. Natsu calls his brother out on repeating himself as the latter madly calls him by his demon name, as an angry Natsu tells Zeref his actual name. Natsu soon becomes exhausted which causes Zeref to berate him as he thought Natsu would be able to kill him. He then uses his magic to bind Natsu and decides to reveal his ultimate goal to him. Zeref reveals that he intends to use Mavis's power for something called Neo Eclipse, which would allow him to relive his time as a mortal in order to undo all the chaos he's done in the time he's been around. Zeref states that by using Neo Eclipse, he can defeat Acnologia and Natsu would be human again. Shocked by his brother's ambition, Natsu questions what would happen to the current world, in which Zeref nonchalantly states it might disappear. Enraged by Zeref's callous regard for the world, Natsu tells Zeref that humanity has faced many problems but has lived through them. Bind. Natsu soon learns that Zeref has found the space between time, stating it was filled with powerful time magic and that he sealed it off until he obtained Fairy Heart to use Neo Eclipse. As Natsu struggles to get free, Zeref mocks him by stating he can't stop him just as Mavis arrives and Zeref moves to put his plan into action. However, Natsu enters Dragon Force and burns away the dark magic, telling Mavis not to engage Zeref as he just got fired up. Upon entering Dragon Force, Natsu is told by Zeref that it won't be enough, stating it would be different if he could transform like Acnologia. Natsu states that he's human and is nothing like Acnologia, which is what Igniel wanted, but Zeref disagrees, stating while Natsu isn't a dragon, he's definitely not a human, calling him End. Natsu tries charging at Zeref, but Mavis intercepts, wanting to speak with Zeref, but the latter grabs her by the head and ignores her pleas as he absorbs her magic. Natsu tries to stop this. Natsu charges at Zeref, but the Black Mage uses his magic to force him back, leaving him to watch as Zeref drains Mavis of her magic power. He catches Mavis after she collapses and curses Zeref for his actions, before the latter takes on a new form with the magic he absorbed. Holding an unconscious Mavis, Natsu states that he has no choice but to erase the latter. In response, Natsu attacks Zeref with a Fire Dragon King's Destruction Fist, which seemingly erases Zeref and destroys part of the guild's wall. Collapsing to his knees, Natsu exits Dragon Force and apologizes to Makara for destroying the guild again, but states he has defeated Zeref. However, the wall reforms along with Zeref. The latter states to a shocked Natsu that his new power transcends time and space, and says it can never be depleted. He then impales Natsu through the chest with his bare hand and tells him that Makarov is already dead, as Natsu sheds tears at the news before he collapses to the ground. Zeref then bids the downed Natsu farewell. Natsu remains unconscious as Zeref opens the space between time and the doorways of the guild. When Zeref prepares to step through the door, Natsu awakens by stating the current world has his gratitude and that Makarov always told him that if he stepped through those doors, he'd have to promise to return alive. He then gets back on his feet with his wound healed, ready to face Zeref again. Natsu thanks his friends for everything as he states he understands what was transpiring and berates himself for thinking only of himself and remembering his goal was fighting for the guild. Natsu then punches Zeref as the latter asks how long he'll stand in his way, as Natsu states, until the day everyone can smile again, which Zeref states is what he's trying to create. Natsu rebukes his brother's words, stating that he was thinking only of himself and wants to reject the world. As the two brothers fight, they berate each other for not understanding the other's plight before deciding to end the fight once and for all. Natsu strikes Zeref with Fire Dragon King's Destruction Fist as Zeref strikes back with Dark Blast Inferno. The clash of their powerful magic surges through the guild, with both calling out the other's names, but Natsu's magic magic manages to overpower Zeref's. 
Natsu strikes Zeref with a powerful attack that completely burns his magic and sends him flying, leaving him immobile on the ground. Exhausted, with his right arm severely burnt, Natsu turns to Mavis, asking if she can finish up the rest, which she confirms as Natsu voices his intentions of seeking his friends. The battle now over, Natsu bids his older brother farewell as he leaves him with Mavis. Natsu soon meets with Lucy, Happy, and Grey as they look at him in happiness, with Happy rushing to embrace him. Natsu confirms to his friends his victory over Zerif as they congratulate him on keeping his promise of not losing. Natsu then informs them of his belief that Mavis sacrificed herself to defeat Zerif for good, but tells them not to be gloomy as it was something she may have wanted, as it was to protect them and they should honor her by returning to the guild with smiles on their faces, which they agree on. The four friends soon begin walking back to the guild, with Natsu assuring his friends he'll have Wendy heal his burnt arm. When Grey points out that he sees the guild, Natsu remarks he was just there and it brings back memories. As his friends talk about what they intend to do afterwards, Natsu suddenly disappears. Transported to another realm, Natsu wonders where he is as a voice tells him that he is in his world. Natsu turns to see a mysterious man and stares him down. He recognizes his magic power and deduces his identity as Acnologia. Acnologia tells Natsu he will be the last, as a confused Natsu turns to see the other dragon slayers trapped in crystal pillars. Acnologia tells him he has obtained time magic by devouring it in the ravines of time. Recalling the death of his foster father, Natsu demands that Acnologia be quiet, as he states Natsu will join his fellow slayers soon. Acnologia starts to crystallize Natsu's body. As he attempts to resist, Acnologia taunts from being weakened due to his battle with Zeref. As Natsu is about to be crystallized, he's suddenly freed by Wendy, who tells him she heard the voices of their friends, which allowed her to break free. The other dragon slayers break free as well, supporting Wendy's words. They join Natsu in confronting Acnologia with the intention of slaying him once and for all. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.